Well, everybody, we're looking at uh, some storms developing across the state. It could be a very active afternoon, not just an active one, but I think the, the real threat uh, is going to be the potential for large storms out by themselves and possible tornado producers. Already we're seeing that happen, yep. Todd. The air is very warm. It's very humid, and we now have a tornado warning that's been issued for part of Pulaski County anyway. Yeah, I'll show it to you on our volumetric radar. The tornado warning is in effect for northern Pulaski. This is not for the Little Rock metropolitan area. It is for Maumel, but it's right over Maumel, and it's heading up into southern Faulkner County. We want everybody along Highway 89 from Mayflower to, yes, even Valonia. You need to take your tornado precautions. If there's any comfort in this, it's the fact that this is not confirmed on the ground at this time, but we are showing some circulation over the Maumel area now that has just developed and is getting ready to cross over northern areas of uh, Pulaski County and will go just to the east of Mayflower right along Highway 89 uh, within the next few minutes or so. So we want everybody to get in your tornado safe place immediately as this is a tornado warning, Doppler radar indicated, a dangerous situation. Uh, but right now, all of our sources are telling us that there is nothing on the ground, but it is developing, Barry. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, just the beginning stages of this. But on a day like this, you can't be too careful. Let's go to our five live Doppler radars. I want to show you a couple of storms. That one included... Uh, just to the uh, to the south of Mayflower around Maumelle, and then one straight out in western Pulaski County that looks like a hail producer as well, uh, right behind it. These storms are all out by themselves. They kind of have their own area of atmosphere. Uh, there's plenty of wind energy. It, it, we don't have to tell you that the winds are strong at the surface, but they're very strong up aloft too, and from a slightly different angle. And that's what we call directional shear. And uh, you don't need to know that, but you need to know that any of these storms that develop today are ones that could rotate. Uh, we are here uh, all afternoon long and until the threat is over. We're looking at several storms in the north central part of the state too. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning in effect for northeastern uh, Cleburne County. And that storm is headed up toward Batesville. We, of course, will keep an eye on that one too. But the one in question right now that has some signs of rotation, as Todd told you about, just north of, uh, northeast of Maumelle now, and uh, it's and, moving at 55. Yeah, the, all of these are going to be fast movers, too. That is an indication of just the wind energy. Well, meteorologist, chief meteorologist Ned Permy, uh, Ty Jacobian, Michelle Rupp, we're all here uh, this afternoon. We're going to keep you updated on all of these storms. A tornado watch is in effect, and it's uh, what they call a particularly dangerous situation, too. So it's one of those afternoons that I want you to leave it here. Uh, and if you're in those areas that are affected by these uh, areas of rotation, you need to go to that, that pre planned area in your house. We also want to mention as well, we know a lot of people are going to be wanting to watch Oprah today, uh, and yeah. there's a chance we may be covering that up with uh, live, uh, with information that could be saving lives today. That will air again tonight at 1230. 12, and, yeah, 1235. Again tomorrow at 4 o'clock on Absolutely. Channel 7. Let me show you on the volumetric radar again. Uh, the, the rotation with this thunderstorm on, on volumetric radar is not... Uh, overly impressive and, and when I'm looking at this it's not overly strong when you look at the radar site being very close to where this thunderstorm is located right here uh, we are, we're getting an excellent sample of this thunderstorm right now by our Doppler radar and if there was a tornado and something spinning the chances of us seeing it right now are excellent with radar. And right now, I, Barry, you look at the velocities, does, mm -hmm. that does just not look all that strong. It doesn't look all right that now. impressive, but uh, given the atmosphere, I think we, we need to go ahead and in that area right. just to the north of Maumel, uh, southern Faulkner County, uh, over around Cato, you're going to be uh, next in line there. And again, we're going to watch all of these storms. Um, the warning is going to the north, uh, just stretching out to the northeast there in a fast moving storm too. If we issue a warning for your area, a tornado warning, don't wait around. Don't go look at the window. Just go to a safe spot in your house, that lowest level, that most interior part of your storm. We're also giving you the information in case your power goes out via Facebook, via, uh, via Twitter as well. And you can follow uh, on Facebook, Todd Jacobian. You can follow KATV Channel 7. You can follow KATV Barry Brandt. You can also follow uh, KETV Ned, KETV uh, Barry, or uh, KETV underscore weather on Twitter. Those are numerous ways that we're going to keep you informed. Uh, and that does look like a hail producer there, Todd. Yeah. Uh, and th the possibility of a little rotating uh, part of the thunderstorm. Right. That is hail right there getting ready to cross uh, 89 to the east of Mayflower right now. So some very large hail uh, associated with this thunderstorm. That's what you're looking at in the orange and the yellow. Some very large hail with that uh, as it moves up towards Valonia right now. Now, Valonia, you are under the tornado warning right now. Uh, 
but right now this is a developing one. We have no reports. We have our Channel 7 crews on this right now. We are checking to see if there's anything on the ground, and right now we're being told no. We'd be told if there was, uh, but this is all Doppler radar indicated. And I'll show you another thunderstorm which has the potential to start spinning, but is not. It is severe, and it is over western Pulaski County uh, near the Ferndale vicinity, moving up towards Pinnacle Mountain and on the eastern end of Lake Maumelle. This, too, has very large hail developing with this thunderstorm, but right now, at this point in time, it is not spinning. Mm -hmm. These will. The favored area, let me just show you this, the favored area for thunderstorms to, de uh, to continue to develop and produce rotation is along the 67-167 corridor through central into northeastern Arkansas. So as these thunderstorms shift into that area, we will see um, more tornado warnings issued, and that's where I think we're going to have our, uh, our greatest tornado threat. As the Storm Prediction Center, Barry, has said, they are looking for the possibility uh, for strong uh, supercell thunderstorms yeah. with long track tornadoes with these. Yeah, like yesterday. Yeah, in Oklahoma, right. possibly. Yes. Right, and, and they could be out on the ground for a while, folks. I don't think this threat is going to go into the 9, 10, 11 o'clock hour tonight. I think it's going to be over uh, somewhat before that. We're continuing to watch that storm, though. Let me take you on our five live Doppler radars on a little tour of all the storms that are, that are uh, firing right now. Uh, these are not considered uh, severe down around Malvern, but they are growing rapidly, and the ones in southwestern Saline County moving along I-30 headed up toward Benton right now again all these moving off to the northeast so Benton uh, we're gonna watch that storm for you the one in western Pulaski County looks like a hail producer uh, along I-430 in that area right along 430 along Cantrell Road and it looks like uh, uh, it is a rotating storm the probability of hail not all that high with it so uh, we'll continue again to watch that storm and then the one that we're talking about with uh, the potential for rotation and a tornado warning in southern Faulkner County right now, it could go up across that northernmost part of Pulaski County. I'm going to go on up to just north of Romance and Sidon and White County, and it looks like there's a hail-producing thunderstorm there. And on up to the north, there is a severe thunderstorm warning for the one in northeastern Cleburne County. That storm headed toward Batesville right now. Let me show you on our volumetric radar. I uh, just want to let you know um, I've got Storm Chaser. Bart Comstock right now, he is in Bologna, um, and he is uh, uh, one of our storm chasers, and you can watch these, by the way, at ktv.com on the weather section of our webpage, but um, I noticed he's driving through Bologna. You can see from the tornado damage about one month ago, uh, some of these trees, and you can still see the damage around there, how they're cut off, uh, but um, just want to let everybody know in Bologna that we have a pair of eyes on the ground, uh, and we're watching his live feed to see if there's anything developing still. Uh, I've got a report now from our news department that says that the sheriff's office reported some rotation in the clouds over Maumelle with this thunderstorm. Quarter size hail now being reported in West Little Rock. By yeah, the that's way. that storm out along Highway 10 and 430 there. Right. It'll be crossing the river. Right, and uh, that's that's with a separate storm that does not have a tornado warning on it, but it does have a severe thunderstorm warning uh, for western Pulaski County. But uh, Bart's there, and uh, he's one of our chasers, and we're watching that very carefully, Barry. We're under a moderate risk of severe weather here. Uh, just to the north and northeast of, of Little Rock uh, is the high-risk area, as characterized by the Storm Prediction Center. Um, so it's a very volatile atmosphere. When you get up toward 90 degrees and you're still in springtime and the wind energy above is still as great as it is, uh, then you have that real chance for uh, rotating thunderstorms if indeed they get going and they are rooted in this boundary layer, this surface layer here. Um, I see still maybe just a, a little rotation. Uh, there's some indication there on our five live Doppler radars of that storm now moving into southern Faulkner County near Gentry Corner. Uh, but... Uh, Right now, it says it is a rotating storm, but the probability, probability of hail even with that storm doesn't appear all that great as it moves off to the northeast. Still the Gentry Corner Auto along Highway 107, just north of Gravel Ridge uh, now. Uh, that's the area that uh, if there is any rotation in that storm, that's right. probably where it's going to be. In fact, that is where it's going to be, and it's going to be moving off to the north. Uh, let me just tell you, it doesn't look all that impressive, no. but that doesn't mean that there's not a tornado warning in your area. On a and day like today, take five minutes. Go to your safe spot in your house and and uh, and, and wait it out. It'll be gone before you know it. And as uh, we're looking here at the data coming in, it appears that rotation has passed into Faulkner County now, according to the sheriff's office that they're monitoring, and we have our chasers on it. But there is an appendage, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. There's mm -hmm. a little appendage occurring. 
occurring on that thunderstorm. And very, you know, it looks like if that continues on a northeasterly course, it may stay east of Bologna. Some very good news, but uh, you see some of the uh, the street grid there from Gentry Corner uh, eastward, and it's uh, all those roads there are under the tornado warning. And I'll back out a little. And those purple areas, that's hail. And we're getting uh, reports with another thunderstorm now of hail five miles west of downtown Little Rock uh, with a severe thunderstorm and the villages at Wellington in West Little Rock now one inch size hail. New tornado, okay, no, this is a continuation of the tornado warning for Faulkner, Lone Oak, Pulaski, and now White County. This is a Doppler radar indicated uh, storm. It's located northeast of Marche by about four miles and is now seven miles uh, southeast of Lake Conway. And now it has slowed its forward speed to 45 miles per hour. That is the storm right there. Every radar sweep that goes around, what's, uh, what I see on this is it moves, it looks like a mile or so. I mean, it's moving very, very quickly. So it's moving at the speed of a car moving by your house at 55 miles an hour. Wouldn't take very long to get past. Well, that's the speed of this storm, and that's the speed of all of these storms, really. It'll be in that range of 50, 60, maybe even 65 miles an hour, given the wind speeds up above. And once they grow up into that area that's above the ground, then they can travel at, at that speed. Uh, so we'll continue to watch these storms. Uh, the, uh, the hail producer out in West Little Rock is now uh, crossing the river. Moving up around uh, Crystal Hill Road and and south of Maumel right now, it looks like that there's a pretty good bet that you're going to see some hail with that. Already had that one-inch report uh, out there. Uh, down to the south, again, a storm approaching Benton. It doesn't is not classified as severe, and that's good news. And it is north of Malvern now, but it's just tracking right along I-30. If you've got a trip planned along I-30 anytime soon, going to be pretty heavy downpours of rain, pretty much a ponding of water on the roadways. Uh, that little storm that's on the White County, Cleburne County line, and then the one that's approaching Batesville, now moving into Independence County, that severe thunderstorm with the possibility of hail there. Then up to the north near Center Hill, another storm. Now, these are all out by themselves, and uh, Todd, we never like to see that, really. We like, we, we like to see these storms form into lines, but uh, on, on a day like today, these are going to be storms that are supercell thunderstorms and could very well be out by themselves and, and cause real damage. West of Poplar Bluff, mm -hmm. uh, there's a large thunderstorm and a tornado warning. That's over the Arkansas border up into Missouri. We've got another angle on this thunderstorm. We'll look at it live now, and I'm looking at storm chaser Charles Edwards, another one of our storm chasers. Yeah. And uh, we're looking at the sky. This is just east of Valonia right now. Coming, uh, he's actually coming out of Searcy, and we got a view of the sky there. We're keeping an eye on this thunderstorm as uh, well from two different vantage points with storm chasers, and they're getting on it to let us know uh, what exactly is going on inside of it. But we're now also getting some information that uh, the storms uh, near Rosebud are uh, increasing rapidly. We can show, oh, let me uh, show you on. Yeah, it's a pretty on, strong storm there. Yeah, it's. Uh, Maybe getting a severe thunderstorm warning on that soon, but nothing, uh, nothing uh, severe at this time. But it is uh, very strong. Uh, some hail maybe moving up towards the Pangburn area. But by right, right now, the, the, the one we're really watching is this one that's wound up. It's going to cross the northern, kind of northern hat of Pulaski County uh, up towards Jacksonville and Cabot. The rotation within this thunderstorm uh, still does not seem to have its act together, and let's hope it stays yeah, that way. Yeah, that would be but, great news. Uh, but it is, it's continuing to move off towards the northeast. Here's Valonia. So this storm is going to pass maybe just to the south of Valonia, the, uh, at least the, the part that's rotating. Um, we have an unconfirmed report now of a small funnel at Highway 107 and 89. That is unconfirmed right now, but we're getting that from the National Weather Service, uh, from their chat service that we use, uh, that there's an unconfirmed report of that. But this is going to be moving up um, into White County and uh, right along the 67-167 corridor, and we have at least three or four storm chasers that we will be looking at. Their live video feeds, so if we're, you know, you could look at radar all day long and say, well, it could be producing a tornado, but we have eyes on the ground to give you a better understanding of what's going on and to help get that warning out. So that's something to uh, we'll be keeping an eye on for you over the next several minutes as this moves up the 67-167 corridor, Barry. Yeah, still some indication of, of, of uh, rotation there, and that's why the, the report of the funnel cloud, uh, some lowering of the cloud base, perhaps, but uh, it, does, it certainly doesn't look like a classic tornado signature, but we're watching it, and right now, the most likely area would be up along uh, Highway 107, 
And look at the, the next sweep there. Look how far it travels mm -hmm. every sweep that goes by. It's a fast mover, folks. Uh, there's a little appendage on the storm up around Valonia there on the, on the north yeah. side of the storm. That wouldn't be a traditional area for uh, for funnel development, but there could be, there obviously is some rota rotation around a, a center core there. Doesn't look strong again, but from Valonia to Warsaw up to uh, the northwesternmost part of Pulaski County, you might as well go ahead and get in a safe place now. Uh, inst implement the plan that you have in your house of getting down into the lowest part of the house. If it's below ground, great. A lot of folks, though, in Arkansas don't have basements. So go to that most interior part of your house, away from outdoor walls and windows, and it's going to be by your house pretty quickly. It's not going to inconvenience you too, too long, and it uh, very well uh, could save uh, grave injury if there indeed is anything along with this. But this storm continues to move off to the northeast rapidly. El Paso, you'll be in the line, the Bailey edition, uh, just to the northwest of Cabot. I think this, this will uh, actually track. And again, we're keeping you updated not only on the air here, but also, we're keeping you uh, updated via Twitter, uh, via Facebook, uh, meteorologist Michelle Rupp uh, updating our feeds there, uh, Christina Munoz, uh, Scott Emman, the whole crew here updating this very information that we're passing along to you as soon as it, as it comes into us. Okay, new tornado watch. We'll show that to you. Okay, we're going to go to a new uh, tornado watch here. It's and on a graphics computer. And um, our weather graphics computer, just to show you, it now includes, we had one for central and northeast or now southern Arkansas. Now, is that until 10, I think? Uh, this one. I think that new one is until 10 o'clock. I'm not quite sure, but uh, it is a new tornado watch for everybody. It's so 11 o'clock. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll get all this stuff out of here before then. I think it actually will be out of here before 11. But just to let you know, until 11 o'clock, new tornado watch uh, in effect. And, and, and I want to show you on my radar, Barry, there's another thunderstorm that has developed over Benton and Bryant. Yeah, that's the one we've been watching. Yeah, and it is not producing a tornado, but it does now have a severe thunderstorm warning on it. And it will affect the Little Rock metropolitan area with hail uh, probably in about 30 minutes tops probably within 30 minutes because they're moving rapidly up Interstate 30 and it's going to affect Little Rock with some gusty winds and uh, some large hail. So if you're watching us from the Little Rock area, what I would do right now is get anything outside that you can your car, if you can put it under some sort of cover and, and uh, protect it from any large hail and some gusty winds. Also be ready for power outages. Uh, there will be some gusty winds. I don't think they're going to be widespread in Little Rock, but I think we will have some power outages and just to be prepared for that. Um, Here's what the hail have? product over on our five live Doppler radars, guys, if we could take that. Uh, and I'll show you, approaching Benton there, it does look like uh, about a half an inch in diameter hail with that storm. The core of the storm is actually south of I-30, but it'll be moving for, uh, through the southern parts of, uh, of Benton. New Pulaski, uh, new uh, funnel cloud report. Uh, that was at 3.30 two minutes ago, reported at the intersection of Highway 107 and 87. Highway 87 and 107. Funnel cloud, but no reports of it touching down. I think we're going to uh, continue to see that. Let's go on up with that storm, though. And there is hail within this storm, to be sure. Uh, right now, uh, over a half an inch in diameter hail is what uh, we're indicating right there with that storm. And the possibility also of a funnel cloud along with it. And uh, we'll just zoom into the storm again. The, the one thunderstorm is moving right over the uh, National Weather Service radar there. You can see the kind of the hole uh, to the southwest of Jacksonville. There's a hole in the data. And right around the radar site there, there isn't any data that uh, we, we've, that is turned off because of all the interference in the, in the product as it goes out. Uh, but northern Pulaski County right there on the Faulkner, White, Pulaski County, uh, or uh, Lone Oak, sorry, Lone Oak, Pulaski, Faulkner County, uh, where they all come together. There could be hail there, and there have been a couple of reports of funnels along with that. I think we need to probably stick with this storm. It doesn't look like the classic uh, rotation uh, type of storm, but with the wind energy in the atmosphere, let's just go ahead and, and be safe there, right in the northernmost part of Pulaski County. I'm going to back out to give you a little frame of reference. It is well north of Little Rock now. It is through North Little Rock, around the North Little Rock Airport, and northward, and then on up to Cabot, and on eventually up into White County. That's where those storms are. In Little Rock, we're under a severe thunderstorm warning for the storm that is now just to the uh, in the Benton area, around the southern part of Benton. And that, that that's just what has prompted that. But we don't see any rotation with it. 
and uh, and so we'll just have to keep an eye on it. I'll show you another product that we have, a, a shear product, uh, the, the likelihood of turning winds, the likelihood of a tornado, and uh, our product here in the northwestern corner of of, uh, yeah, in the northern part of Pulaski County, it says possible tornado. It's just on the lower limits of that at yeah. an eight. But uh, that's probably what is prompting those funnel clouds that you see there. Uh, hopefully those never make it down to the ground and actually become tornadoes. But there is obviously rotation somewhere within that. And the shear product there is showing uh, okay. eight as a maximum. Amateur radio operator now reports a funnel cloud. This is four miles north of the Little Rock Air Force Base. That's uh, reports three to four miles to the north of the Air yep. Force Base, and that's exactly where our five live Doppler radars in the Tornado Index has pinpointed some of that rotation. Uh, that, again, still no reports of it touching uh, the ground reports. Okay, I, this is unconfirmed. Can we, uh, this report from the Sheriff's Office? I, okay, we have reports that something may have touched down near Caddo. Uh, yeah, Cato. Okay. That's Cato. Cato up in uh, yeah. Okay, that's an un. I, I don't. That's the only report that I've seen. But again, that goes along with the funnel clouds that we have been seeing. And the shear uh, product now is not nearly as great as it was. It may have pulsed up for a second there mm -hmm. and actually produced a tornado. Uh, it looks like it was not on the ground a long time. It looks like, given what we see right now. Uh, we're not still seeing it on the ground. It doesn't look like one that would be on the ground for a long time. But anywhere within that tornado warning area, we're still we're still warned in that area. I think you need to probably go ahead with the the, the likelihood that this thing might be rotating and it might not make it to the ground, but it could briefly and it could do damage. And so uh, it's going to be going past your house very quickly. Just get in a safe spot there, the, uh, the, where Lone Oak. Faulkner and Pulaski counties all come together and then on up into southwesternmost White County. And we're talking about uh, up uh, around the BB area, another strong storm around Romance, and one uh, near the Air Force Base looks like another round kind of going through there. Strongest certainly, though, is back behind that. I'll go back to the shear product, and Todd, it just it doesn't look like... Uh, Right now, it's as likely. We're getting fours and threes on it. We're getting reports of quarter-sized hail at Greystone and Cabot, by the way, and that's severe hail. Um, the, the, you know, the one of the things here, and I, I can see this very well at the radar, uh, we have a thunderstorm that's severe uh, going across the radar site, so that may be blocking some of what we're looking at the storm to the north. Mm -hmm. Make, yeah, that's exactly right. And, yeah. and so we may not be getting a full uh, idea of what's going on, so that's why we want to, it may look on radar that it's, it's decreasing a little bit, but I don't want to let anybody's guard down because it, I think this thing is actually pretty strong, and when there's a storm going directly over the radar, sometimes they can't see to the full extent that it should up towards the north with this one thunderstorm, but it is moving up towards BB right now. We want BB, everybody in their safe place along the 67, 167 corner. Uh, and this is going to cross over Highway 64, which runs from just south of El Paso and kind of winds down towards BB. Eventually, it's going to cross over that highway. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's still, south of Alonia. Yeah, here's this is where the rotation would be there, right here. Yeah, right there. And it's going to go over high. It's going over Highway 5 right now, and heading up on the northwest side of Cabot, up towards Austin and Ward, up towards the BB area. Uh, again, some very large hail with this, quarter size, maybe even some a slightly bigger size hail. But this is the corridor that's favored. Once it gets into this area of Arkansas from Little Rock of 67-167, where the atmosphere is primed, unfortunately, for these storms to start spinning. And uh, we've already got reports of funnel clouds, and I think that that's only going to increase. Um, we have a continuation. We have no damage reports, by the way. I just want to make sure that's clear. No damage reports being reported by our news department. But we have a continuation now of the tornado warning um, this is for Lone Oak, Pulaski, and White, the storm that we've been tracking for you. The official location of this dangerous thunderstorm is five miles to the northeast of Olmstead, or about five miles north of the Little Rock Air Force Base, and has slowed its forward progress, Barry. It's now at 40 miles per hour, and I think that you're tracking this on our five live Doppler radars, but it has slowed its forward progress uh, to 40 miles per hour. We want everybody in BB, uh, from El Paso to BB, you need to be in a safe place. And uh, hail size is coming back just over a half an inch is the estimate by our radar there. And I'm sure you folks are seeing up to probably an inch in some areas in diameter, uh, that hail, and the possibility of a funnel cloud uh, there as well. Now I'm going to take you into the storm that's now uh, moving, it looks like through Bauxite to the southeast of Benton, uh, just paralleling I-30, but it's mainly south of I-30, and it does have hail along with it too. So I will go back down. Uh, to this area, and this hail has gotten large. All of a sudden, it's large hail. 
an inch in diameter now uh, coming in with this storm. Yeah, There's one inch is being reported by a train spotter there. Yeah, so, the, the, so the, it's confirming then uh, what we're seeing on the radar. One inch in diameter that will be moving uh, from just south of I-30, southern part of Benton to Bauxite, south part of Bryant, and up to Shannon Hills. And there is a severe thunderstorm warning on this, by the way. Uh, then moving into southwest Little Rock. And uh, it looks like the movement would take it primarily just to the south of the Little Rock area. I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and put that into, you know, we can't put that into motion, but it's moving off to the northeast, and it's just paralleling uh, I-30 there. So a couple of storms that are strong. We're going to watch that one for the possibility that it could start rotating. Yeah, I see the little appendage coming down on that. Exactly. So There's uh, some funny stuff going on right now, and, I, and I, you know, we're just going to watch all of them because we have to watch all of them today. But right now, the shear index would not say that a tornado is likely uh, with that storm south of Benton. That's why there's no tornado warning on it now. Uh, elsewhere, uh, we'll head back up to the storm that's uh, still a tornado warning in effect for this storm. And it is, uh, it's moving in to northwesternmost Lone Oak County, right there where White County, Lone Oak County, and Faulkner County all come together along Highway 64, or approaching that corridor there. And right now, it looks like it is uh, producing probably much larger hail, a real core uh, there just south of the White County line. And this will be moving up uh, between Floyd and BB as it moves off to the northeast. I'm going to put a track on that. And that little small hail core right there moving at, uh, was it 45 miles per hour, will uh, hit uh, Essex and Morning Sun. These are very small communities. Uh, in the southwestern part of White County there. So um, it continues to move off to the northeast, and we'll watch it. It could be rotating at some point. Here's our own storm chaser. Uh Funnel dropping closer to the ground near Cabot. Storm chaser that I'm following right now. This is our own Channel 7 storm chaser, um, Michael Hook. He's called the Weather Ninja, and he's on 67-167. Um, and I think he's in the Cabot area, and he's reporting. He's on the phone? Okay, let's go to him on the phone. I think that he has a, a, a lowering there. Go ahead, Michael. Okay, we're getting him right now. We've got his live feed. There's a lowering. He's telling us uh, that there's a lowering, a wall cloud. We're getting reports from train spotters of a funnel cloud right where he is located. We're working to get him on the phone. Uh, we'll stay with these pictures and keep warning people in the Cabot area up towards BB to take your tornado precautions right now. But as you can see, Barry, help me out here. I think, is that five that he's getting off on? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, uh, near Cabot, yes. Or is that 16? Uh, uh, it's one of those. I think he's starting to head a little east. But if, uh, do we have do we have the weather ninja on the phone yet? Mm -hmm. They're uh, they're we working to get him. We have we have a, a tremendously great crew that's working on uh, getting all getting him right now. And uh, I think I see what they're talking about. Uh, okay, we got a him. little Go ahead, appendage Michael. there west of Cabot. Go ahead, Michael. You're on the air. Hey, uh, Todd. We are on Highway 64. We are to the west of BB, and uh, we definitely have a <laughs> to our southwest. Say that one more time. We are on Highway 64 um, to the west of BB, and we have a lowering to our southwest. I see it right now. I, uh, you're pulled over now. We're watching your live stream, and I'm running my cursor over that part that is uh, that is uh, the wall cloud. Uh, you do. There, we're getting several reports that it is re producing a funnel cloud, Michael. Um, do you have any? Do you have any visual of anything extending out of that wall cloud? It's depth. Just a few minutes ago, it definitely looked like it was trying to produce a funnel cloud. Right now, um, it's it's moving right towards us, so we're going to stay with this. Yeah, just and, uh, and see if we can detect one. Okay, uh, so that is a lowering. That is the portion of the thunderstorm that uh, would be rotating that you're looking at live. Uh, no reports of damage, Michael, with this thunderstorm as of right now. But you're probably are you getting hail right now? We are getting a little bit of hail. Uh, you should be able to see this right here. It's getting it's moving directly towards us. All right. Can um, I don't know if do you have. I'm I'm using uh, the live feed from the droid just to let you know. Right. Okay. Um, and you're pointing. As soon as. Uh, say that again. As soon as uh, it gets past this little tree right here, you should have a really good picture of it. I see it, boy. I see that lowering. Do you see uh -huh, that, Barry? Yeah, that is right there. And and uh, we are seeing it west of Cabot. If we can go back, uh, it's in an area called the ba the Bailey Edition. 
And yeah, the hail core is is much bigger than it was, and there is a, cur of a curvature there, right there. Yeah. Let's go back to our five live doppers real quick. I want to We're getting that. large. We're, we're starting okay. to get large Michael, hail now. Stay on the phone. Do not let Michael Hook go. I'm monitoring your live feed. Barry's got stuff on no, five live. Right here. Yeah, there it is, right there. It's uh, it's actually northwest of Cabot, northwest of Cabot. That little that little hook that you see uh, right there, uh, and that's what I'm talking about, right there. And as it moves northeast, it will cross over into White County. That would be the area. So it's paralleling uh, 67 right there, but it is going to be moving up into that southwestern corner of, of White County. And I'm going to back out and just show you a little bit better the hail that's on the north side of this and then that little arm that hangs down uh, back behind it. Uh, the shear product right now not showing. Not on the ground. Not. Uh, not as impressive as just the radar picture is, hey, and I'm going to believe that, I think. Look at this, Barry. All right, let's go back to our, our video there, if we can. Michael, we've got your live feed, and um, what we're seeing right now, and I can hear the hail pounding you, uh, but if you could pan maybe a little bit to your right. Can you pan to your right? There's the lowering. Do you see anything coming to the ground? No, and uh, what do you guys, while well, we're getting a large hail now, what are you guys seeing on... Uh, I'm looking at Gibson Ridge right here, and I'm not seeing much of uh, rotation with this anymore. No, the, the rotation has not been that strong, uh, but there have been several reports. It may be a loft, uh, but I see a little appendage coming down to the left of the main wall cloud there. Is that rotating at all? Uh, it does not look like it at this time. It really does not. Okay. Well, that's good news. Let's keep it that way. Let's keep this aloft. And uh, well, how big is the hail? Um... Right now, it looks like it's uh, probably just a little bit bigger than nickel. Yeah, you're, it's probably going to get a little bit larger than that, uh, but but it's not it's not at one inch indicated on the radar. So there are several areas there that you have that lowering cloud base, uh, and and again, it is north now, almost due north of Cabot, that we see the uh, the hook uh, kind of wrapping around that. Yeah, let's just, that's a great, yeah. let's keep that split screen going. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to zoom on in, and that would be the area. The hail core is up to the north, and then uh, down to the south of that is where you would see any any rotation and a lowering of the cloud base. But the hail, when, if you're in the big hail, that's a good warning. Oh, we're getting some big hail now. Yeah, yeah, it, it looks it. like that is the real hail core. You're right in the, in the middle of it there. Possible right. uh, reports of a tornado near Bauxite as well. That's a public report. But that's a public report, and we don't we don't know that. But uh, Michael, stay right there. We're going to be uh, uh, kind of auditing that storm on down to the southwest, and it does look like okay. it has a lot more. It's a rotating wall cloud. No tornado at this time is what we're being told. Okay, that's Bauxite. down in Saline. Okay, here it is. It's just east of Bauxite around Brooks. Uh, and Shannon Hills, you're getting the hail part of this storm as it moves, and it parallels I-30. It will not be a long I-30, but it'll be about two to three miles south of it as it moves uh, in that area, maybe just to the north of East End. And uh, for right now, there's not a tornado warning on there, but I'm going to say if you're in that area of the eastern part of Saline County, go ahead and take cover in your home right now, even if that is not uh, a tornado that's actually on the ground. But you can see the definite hook there, the definite little hook pattern that would indicate uh, uh, the rotating thunderstorm. And the lower part of it could, uh, could, lo it could lower and it could produce a tornado at any time. So I'm going to say that area south of I-30 from eastern Saline County into Pulaski County, uh, go ahead and, and take cover with that storm. Can we keep that split screen going here? And Michael, can you tell us just the latest of what you're seeing? Uh, uh, right now, I'm not... You know, I'm looking directly underneath what we were looking at, and uh, if it had any rotation with it, it's pretty much gone now. We are definitely getting um, can you pan right? maybe maybe uh, quarter size hail right now. Pan right, can you please? Yeah. Okay, because uh, the way we got the computer set up, I just want to make sure we can uh, need you to pan right, so we can. Uh, there you go. Now, if you keep it, the, if you keep that wall cloud just along the center to the left, we're good. Uh, but yeah, we're looking at a base there, and Barry, that's some very good news that nothing is extending down. But that Boy, is that's the wall great. cloud. Yeah. I want to see that all day. I want to see that from all of these storms. But we can't, we can't absolutely uh, say that nothing will touch down. But it is that area north of Cabot? It's right on the on the Lone Oak and White County line there. Uh, that we're seeing, uh, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit tighter, but you can obviously see the hook there. I mean, it's, it's not a, uh, not any uh, kind of mystery. Uh, the Bailey edition, Barentine Corner, 
Uh, just some other small little communities there as this storm then passes northward. I know we're in very tight on this, but I want to give you a little point of reference. Uh, it'll be going toward McRae and uh, BB um, uh, in just the little, next little bit along the 67 corridor and then on up to Searcy. And we'll see if that tornado warning is reissued, but I think it probably will be probably pretty soon and extended on up into White County. Yeah. And right. again, and, we'll uh, watch the, the storm in Saline County too. What do you have there, Michael? Uh, I think what we're going to do, we're going to stay with this storm uh, just to see if maybe it recycles, and uh, we're going to run it, uh, follow it up 67, 167 a little bit and just stay with it. Okay. Um, just to, can you pan right one more time? Because is that where, is it to the right of that gr a group of trees, the, the wall cloud? No, it's actually. Oh, it's right uh, behind it? Yeah, it's actually okay. two. Yeah, okay. There, you can see right there. All right, everybody. I just want to let you know where I am going to personally monitor his uh, live feed. There it is. I'm personally going to monitor his live feed, and you can watch it, too, at katv.com. There's two places you can watch it, on our interactive radar and on the Arkansas weather blog at katv.com. You'll see these live pictures. Hey, hold on, Todd. We may have some rotation uh, redeveloping. Okay. Get out and look. Well, be careful. Yeah, uh, still, got some hail coming it's down. It's still showing a, a little appendage down to the south of the main rain and hail part, which is the light uh, purple and the dark purples uh, there to the, around BB and just west of you in BB. Uh, but down to the south of that would be the area of concern, and it's headed right toward the BB area. And it really, well, it's been north of 67, but 67 takes a little jog to the uh, to the west there. So it'll be very close. If there would be a tornado, it would be very close to the highway. Yeah. Hey, Todd, we, uh, we've got a little broad rotation with this thing uh, developing. We're going to try to pull the broad camera rotation. out, and uh, I don't know if you can see it. We're, we're definitely we're slightly to the west of the wall cloud. And, okay. uh, oh, you're west of the wall cloud now? Yes. Okay. Uh, we now have a tornado warning uh, that has been issued for Lone Oak, Prairie, and White. I think this is for the same story, uh, storm. Barry. Yes, yes. Uh, and this is located three miles northeast of Greystone or five miles north of Cabot. You're looking at it live. This is why the tornado warning was issued because of what the images that are uh, we're showing from Channel 7 and our storm chaser, Michael Hook, who is in it. And we also have uh, the Doppler radar showing some, some broad rotation with this. And I, we see that lowering there. Still, I mean, we're just going to, you know, we're keeping yeah. our eyes and ears on the ground with Michael and, and still nothing to extending to the ground. Certainly lowering down there, uh, but uh, if, if it doesn't extend on down to the ground, what a great thing that would be. Uh, watch out for a lot of hail along with this. And BB, again, you are in the path. I'm going to go right on down in, and it's very close to Highway 67 there that this storm is, is kind of paralleling and moving off to the northeast at a pretty rapid clip, about 45 miles an hour. And uh, if we put a track on that, the the, the back edge of this moving off to the northeast at 45 miles an hour we we'll put it into bb in about uh, eight or nine minutes mcrae garner uh, some other towns that will be affected by this storm as it moves off to the northeast it certainly looks impressive i know a lot of folks are out there going wow that that looks like that could be a tornado anytime well it could be in an in an environment like this i think you've got to you've got to look for the possibility all the time for that lesser storm but still maybe a hail producer south of cabot yep. and uh, moving into the southwestern part of Little Rock, this is a hail-producing storm. There have been public reports of rotation with this. It doesn't look like any uh, notable radar no rotation right now, though, with this storm it's as we head down into Shannon Hills. Yeah, I say Shannon Hills up towards Mabelville into the Sweet Home area. Uh, there, there is a little inflow notch on that thunderstorm, but the good news with this, I mean, it's bad news for Sweet Home, obviously, but there's there is some rotation with it. There's no, it's just a severe thunderstorm warning, but it's going to miss West Little Rock in the Midtown area, but head up towards downtown and the airport. So the airport is just about to get hit with some hail. And we got we're reports now in Lone Oak County of large hail near uh, Mountain Springs and a low-hanging cloud. So that's with that um, storm that we've been watching. Michael Hook, just give us an update. You're there. Uh, you're watching it. You're our eyes and ears on the ground. What do you see? Yeah, we are now crossing 67, 167, and it is uh, probably about two miles to the west of our location. And uh, still, it's got broad rotation to it, but it's not seeing anything really trying to to, uh, to spin up it with it. Yeah, I don't see strong rotation at all within this thunderstorm. So we can safely say at this point via our, uh, our eyes and ears on the ground that it is just a lowering and just that. Even though there is a tornado warning in place, we want you to take your precautions, but right now, 
from our vantage point, nothing is on the ground. Barry, you got some large hail. Yeah, the hail has really picked up around and to the west and to the north of BB, and uh, it's indicating now 1.1 inches, so a little uh, larger than quarter size hail uh, with the storm. Uh, and to, that would be to the north edge of where you might anticipate there could be a, a, a funnel or some lowering of the cloud base or even a tornado. But it would be in that southern part of uh, White County that the, the best chance of hail. And in fact, it is hailing right there. Essex, Garner, uh, you're going to be getting hail. And it is right on top, the large hail right on top of Highway 67. Yeah. Uh, uh, right now, so and Michael reported about one inch in diameter hail with that storm as yeah. it was coming through. So it, we're approaching Mac Ray right now, yeah. and uh, right in BB, just heavy, heavy hail. Um, so we're watching those hail producers, and I, I do want to look at that storm just to the south of Little Rock. Uh, it looks like the hail is much larger in that too. Now, 1.1 inches now as it comes into Southwest Little Rock from around Shannon Hills. Uh, on up into southwest Little Rock, and it'll be moving up into the Baseline Road area. There is the latest radar sweep right there, really moving out quickly and uh, all the way up to near I-530, which comes right out of Little Rock there, down toward Wrightsville, one-inch hail report uh, with that storm. Uh, also want to uh, keep an eye on that uh, storm as far as if we see any rotation. Boy, it just doesn't look like any good rotation, but maybe broad rotation there south of the, the small burger community. Uh, in, in the south part of, of uh, Pulaski County. And then the storm that's on up to the northeast. Still, we continue to watch it. Around Cabot, you've got a thunderstorm with hail going on. But that's not really the one that we're watching as far as the potential for a tornado. It's the one west of BB. That little notch right there west of BB is what we're looking at as it moves then right along uh, the 67 corridor. I mean, Todd, if there was a tornado on the ground, it would be paralleling the highway, but it, it doesn't look like it is touching down. Uh, we want to make sure that you know that, but we also want to say, if you're in BB, you're on up 67 right along the highway. Just go ahead and get in the safe spot in your house. It's the lowest floor. It's the most interior part away from walls and windows. Now, the other thing is I want to mention, and uh, this sounds almost silly to me, but we're, we're in the business here saving lives. At 4 o'clock now, we have Oprah coming on. It's her last right. show. We want to let you know if that's what you're tuning in for uh, you know we're here our first and foremost our mission is to save lives and that's what we're doing this afternoon you will not miss that last episode it will air tonight at 12 30 and it will air again coming up at four o'clock uh, tomorrow afternoon let's go now i think chief meteorologist ned permi has some more information for us ned thanks guys uh, we are uh want to for those of you all who are joining us probably have a pretty big audience just beginning uh as uh, they are tuning in to watch the final episode of oprah and and as we said we have a violent day of potential thunderstorms just wanted to give you a brief overview if you're just joining us of what is going on we have a very strong frontal boundary that's pushing into the state and these thunderstorms are lining up along that front. But as we zoom out a little bit, we can see why any one of these thunderstorms today, especially over east, northeast, or uh, even in southeastern Arkansas, could show signs of rotation because of this broad area of low pressure. Look at how that is just spinning. If you can see it right around there, look at the big picture. There is a broad spin in the atmosphere, and out ahead of it, winds are kind of from a different direction, more from the southeast and south. So that's causing winds to change with height. And it's along this frontal zone, and even East of it today that we have the most volatile weather, especially from central into northeastern Arkansas is where Barry and Todd were uh, tracking those storms right along the I-67 uh, 67 corridor. But that is where we are going to see the highest risk of thunderstorms over the next several hours as this entire area. And you can see just over the last few hours as it has really continued to increase from almost nothing to just some violent thunderstorms with large hail and potential tornado activity. So that really is what we are looking for uh, in uh, the section. So, but right in this area here that I pointed out, where the highest risk is, that's where we're really going to be watching carefully over the next several hours. Once again, if you're just tuning in, this is a very volatile situation here this afternoon. And we know Oprah is coming on with her final show. It will be shown in its entirety tomorrow at 4 o'clock, same time tomorrow. And it will also be, if you want to DVR or record it, on after Jimmy Kimmel Live 
35 tonight at 1235 to 135 in the morning. So again, just wanted to give you a brief overview. We've got our entire staff uh, going on right now. As we take a look at our five live Doppler radars, we can again show you some of the most volatile storms that we are looking at. And this is the one that Michael Hook has been tracking and is at the present time. This is 67167, which runs from BB up to Garner and Higginson. And the tornado warning is in effect for this area. And uh, this storm was tracked initially near Maumelle, showing signs of rotation with this storm. And we have tracked it and tornado warnings have been issued and on this storm, tracking all the way primarily along 67167. Uh, but Garner and BB right now in the path of that storm, that is White County right there. And uh, that is 67167, uh, north and southbound or northeast and southwestbound. Uh, but Essex, BB, Garner, all in the path of that storm as well as McCray. And it's this little area right here, this little bit of a hook, is where uh, Michael Hook, our storm spotter, has been located along this highway. And he's been watching it carefully. And he has clearly shown us with his webcam that uh, that storm has shown some signs of rotation, rotating aloft, not necessarily to the surface. But the thing that you need to understand is that storm, even though it may be rotating aloft, could spawn and develop a funnel that could touch ground at any time, which does the significant amount of damage that we have all seen in recent weeks. From that storm all the way down into another one, and this is in Pulaski County, not really showing signs of rotation. Uh, this one formed near Shannon Hills earlier, and it is tracking right through the metro area and eastern sections of the downtown area right now. But it's strong, possibly going to contain some hail in this area here as it moves on up uh, just to the east of the Jacksonville area, east of Sherwood, and uh, continues to track on toward the northeast. But as we can zoom out and show you another overview of this entire region and the active warnings that we've got going on, you can see most of the action is from the Little Rock area up to Searcy and then on up to uh, Diaz and continuing on up to northeastern Arkansas. And the only active warnings that we've got going on right now are here more in the metro in Little Rock area in through Pulaski and all the way into uh, White County moving now in the uh, area of Cabot. So again, it's in this area that we're really concerned about, especially in this area that's near BB right now, tracking on up to Garner uh, at about uh, 45 miles an hour. So that's the latest overview that we have for you. And I uh, wanted to touch base with you for just a few minutes about the Oprah show that was scheduled to be on at four o'clock. We're going to continue to watch this activity until, until the threat of tornadoes decreases or until tornado warnings are not in effect. But again, it could be a very volatile afternoon, especially over east and northeastern Arkansas. Our staff will be here to watch it very, very carefully for you and give you the information out on Twitter and Facebook as well. Back to you guys. All right. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ned. Uh, yeah, 1235 tonight. Oprah will be rebroadcast uh, and then 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. I, I know a lot of folks are just tuning in for that, uh, but there is the Oprah replay that will be going on, and you're not going to miss her final show in her 25 years. I know a lot of folks are tuning in for that, and I know not everybody is affected by these storms today, but as long as we have tornado warnings in effect, active tornado warnings in effect, yeah. uh, we're going to have to stay let's with this, folks, and we apologize for that, but that's kind of what we do this time of the year. Let's see. Do we have Michael Hook? still on the phone? Uh, you do, Todd. Are you there, Michael? Yes. Can okay. you hear me? Yeah, we got your live streaming up right now. Can you give us an update on that storm? Uh, that storm, it, it pretty much looks like if uh, it had any uh, circulation left with it, we did not see it as it's traveling to the east. And uh, so we're basically letting it go. We're going to parallel 67, 167, but it looks like it's off to moving off to the east and northeast. And uh, we're going to head back up towards uh, Bald Knob and uh, maybe take a little jog to the east from there. Okay, Michael, stay uh, just stay with us and keep us updated, and we'll keep an eye on your feeds. Bear, we have new tornado warnings. Yeah, it's a tornado warning, and it's up in northeast Arkansas, and uh, there it is right there, uh, Cave City. Um, yeah, let's go full screen on that. I think it's a little bit easier to right. see. Thanks, cool. guys. Uh, Cave City has reported some uh, some damage. Uh, house along Highway 230 damaged inside of Cave City. Power lines are down there, and it does look like a little bit of a notch. They went ahead and it issued, the National Weather Service did, a, uh, a new tornado warning out in advance of that storm. It will move from uh, Independence County and Sharp County into Lawrence County. 
and on up to the northeast toward Walnut Ridge. And so that is the storm that uh, the only other active uh, tornado warning that's in effect right now. I'll put a track on it and the back edge of that storm moving off to the northeast. Uh, these have been running about 50 miles an hour. Nelsonville, Jessup, Driftwood, and then Lynn up in Lawrence County, along with Eaton and Denton, and that's over the next eight or 10 minutes of time. So these are uh, strong storms, and another one up in Randolph County, another tornado warning up there too. Uh, through, um, through Independence County, a strong thunderstorm not rotating right now, and that's between uh, Ball Knob and Batesville, it looks like. And then the storm that still has a tornado warning on it, which is in White County right now. Near McRae is the lowering of the cloud base, or at least the indication of some uh, a funnel and some rotation there. Near Garner, you're getting hail in that area to the north of Garner. I'll go to our hail product. Uh, I'll show you the area. Wow, through South Little Rock along I-530, Todd, this is unbelievable hail right now. This is inch uh, plus, inch and a quarter plus diameter hail as it moves over uh, to the east and southeast paralleling I-440 there around Scott. You're getting, uh, it looks like some hail will be moving into that area too. So along I-530, hey, just wait a second, let this storm pass. It's a big hail producer. And it's going to be no fun to drive in at all, and it could do some considerable damage. And then the hail storm that is up into White County, uh, less than one inch in diameter hail now near Vinity Corner and Conant. Uh, these are small communities east of the Highway 67 corridor. But we're still watching that storm. It's still a big one down south of Kensett, uh, northwest of Griffithville. That's the storm as it uh, moves off to the northeast. And again, paralleling Highway 67, still a tornado warning there. Take this storm seriously, folks. Just keeping an eye on these things here, Barry, and, and um, well, that's not good. I just noticed something here that I don't like to see. Um, first of all, we got reports in Independence County of uh, trees down, power lines, and hail at Pleasant Plains. Uh, but looking here at our, the, the volumetric radar, let me go into reflectivity mode. There's a, a very strong thunderstorm. This is not the one that has been producing the Doppler radar indicated tornado and the wall cloud, our Channel 7 storm chaser scene. It's just south of it, and it's just east of Cabot. Um, but if there was a tornado on this, and there's not a tornado warning right now, it would you would think that it would be just east of Cabot. Again, no tornado warning on this. But I'm seeing some sort of turning with the wind here south of Butlerville heading up towards Hickory Plains. I uh, don't know if that's just something going on with the radar, something kind of strange going on with the radar, but it is kind of just in this notch area near Butlerville. No tornado warning, but it is something to keep an eye on. Uh, but that is a severe thunderstorm warning with a very large hail in the purple area. This is along Highway 38 northeast of Ward and Austin, ex extending to Hickory Plains. There is a severe thunderstorm warning, and uh, that is continuing to move on off towards the east-northeast. So. We're going to keep an eye on that. Here's the other storm that was producing um, the wall cloud and may still be uh, across portions of White County as that moves up towards the northeast uh, and will affect the communities between Bald Knob and Georgetown. You need to take your tornado precautions right now. Cersei, uh, it looks like you're going to be on the north side of this and, and out of the part that is rotating or would be rotating. I think it's going to move up towards Griffithville and go between Searcy and Griffithville where we have large hail right now. But this is where what we would call the hook echo. This is some inflow and in, uh, Mac Ray located here in Garner. That's where it's located just to the east of 67, 167. And it's heading over towards Highway 11 uh, between Griffithville and Higginson. And then it'll eventually move on up towards West Point. Large hail is, is being indicated with the purple. And here's another hail product that we use, uh, the bright reds. That's where it would be falling as it crosses, uh, that is, again, Highway 11. So that's the situation with that particular thunderstorm. Let me go back here towards the south. As Barry is telling you, very, very large hail, which is going to be moving into Scott in Lone Oak County, into Pulaski County, right along the border there, uh, and new, staying north of Keogh, but sweet home. Uh, in southern Pulaski County getting some very large hail. This is skirting the southern fringe of uh, downtown Little Rock and is moving up towards the airport. Uh, this is, again, severe thunderstorm. No tornado warning reported with this. Now, further towards the south, I'm going to take you. Uh, looks like we are in uh, Dallas County here looking at a thunderstorm. Uh, no rotation with this. Let's see if there's a severe, th there is a severe thunderstorm warning with these thunderstorms. So I want everybody in there to, t uh, you know, just play this safe, stay indoors, away from windows. We'll watch this area for any tornadoes. Again, tornado watch is in effect f uh, for the area where these thunderstorms are developing, uh, but nothing right now. You would see those red boxes pop up that there was a tornado warning issue. Just to show you an overview, 
Don't have an exact location where the front is, but I have a feeling it's somewhere coming through Russellville right now. Mm -hmm. uh, through Mountain Home, Russellville back towards Mina probably, maybe east of Mina. Uh, but that's where uh, the front is located. Once that passes your location, the severe threat will end, and I think it will end in Little Rock. Uh, by 7 o'clock the very latest. I think it'll, it'll continue across that 67-167 corridor for quite some time. Let's go back into this thunderstorm here. I'm now getting areas of white showing up, moving up towards the northeast uh, between Hickory Plains and Ward. That is extremely large hail now coming down. If you have pictures, by the way, you can send them to photo at KTV.com. We have pictures that we want to show you. This is in Augusta. In Augusta. Okay, may have had some thunderstorms there. We have them on our graphics computer. Um, Augusta uh, pictures, there it is. We have a tree down there. And this is in Bryant from Diane Dupree. Uh, in Bryant sending us a bus and large hail uh, that she has uh, sent us. Are there any more there? We have me meteorologist Michelle Rupp that is keeping an eye on all these pictures. Again, photo at KTV.com. And uh, we'll go back now to our volumetric radar. I'm gonna just slice this thunderstorm here. This is the one with just some incredibly large hail just to the east of BB. And uh, you can see that some of that's suspended between 20 and 30,000 feet. And we'll be coming down to the ground. I would say the estimate on this probably vary at least one inch in diameter, probably even a little bit longer. Yeah, I've looked at it. It looks like just have. underneath one inch uh, in diameter. Okay. And, yeah. and again, the, we're watching the tornado warning area very carefully. Uh, to the north with that thunderstorm moving up just south of Higginson, up towards West Point between Higginson and Griffithville. This is where we would possibly see a, a rotation, a circulation, a wall cloud, uh, but nothing reported on the ground, and we don't have any word from the National Weather Service or not whether or not they're going to extend that tornado warning, Barry. All right, let's go back to our five live Dopplers. I want to show you the hail that's uh, now around Scott, and it is just, uh, looks like it has just decreased in size somewhat, but still approaching one inch in diameter around Scott and then moving on over into Lone Oak County, uh, on up to the north of there. Uh, it's a little larger as you head up to Butlerville, uh, Hickory Plains, Haley. That uh, looks like it's now getting up, uh, it's an inch and a quarter in diameter. So that is large hail from Lone Oak County into uh, northwestern Prairie County, and it'll, it'll cut across the southern part of White County too. With these storms, uh, there you can see the hail core, that one near Haley, north of Griffithville. That's the one that's still prompting the issuance of that uh, tornado warning. As long as there's tornado warning in effect, uh, folks, we're going to go ahead and stay on the air. I know a number of you are tuning in for Oprah. I know that you're saying, hold it. It's not affecting my area, but it is affecting part of our viewing area. And uh, that's kind of our first priority here. We're apologizing for it. But in the same breath, I'm going to tell you that we're going to rebroadcast the final Oprah show at 12.30 tonight and then again tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So we are going to make that available. It'll be a much quieter day tomorrow, I promise you. And even by 12.30 tonight, the risk of severe weather will approach nothing, I would think, across the state as this rapidly moves on through. But for right now, it's in an environment that's very warm, and uh, so th that's what we're going to stick with for a while to come. Uh, if these storms begin to lessen in intensity, we are going to go back and we will join Oprah uh, as that, uh, if, if that indeed happens. But for right now, a tornado warning is in effect for White County until 4.30, so we're going to stick around with that. Plus, another tornado warning, uh, Todd, is up into uh, Independence and Jackson County. That's until 5 o'clock tonight. Yep. Yeah, and we have reports, too, of funnel clouds three miles to the southwest of Oil Trough. This is where a Doppler radar indicated tornado and reports of funnel clouds located three miles south of Oil Trough. This is where the large hail is located. And uh, according to the velocity signatures here, this would be where the circulation is located. And on this path, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go close to Newport, probably just to the west and north up towards Diaz and up towards uh, Tuckerman. Those are the locations there in uh, Independence in Jackson County, I need you to take your tornado precautions right now. The storm is also capable of producing golf ball size hail within this thunderstorm. Looking at some of the other, this is where the, uh, the rotation right now is passing over Highway 14 and will be crossing over 69 east of Newark, heading towards the Newport Tuckerman area right along Highway 67, and it's moving towards the northeast at 50 miles per hour. Barry, yeah, do, you uh, have, do you have that? Yeah, we'll go ahead and take our uh, our radar here. And, uh, yeah, there is that storm southeast of Batesville. That's the one that they've issued the uh, tornado warning for, oil trough. 
Uh, Newark is uh, just to the north of this. So, Newark, you are just okay. to the north. Tornado on the ground now, according to the National Weather Service near, oil, near trough. oil trough. And that is the notch that you see right there, folks. That is the notch. It's unmistakable uh, where it would be if there's a tornado. And now we're getting confirmation that that one is on the ground as it moves off to the northeast. And uh, what's the speed on these uh, storms? 40 miles per hour? Uh, that one is moving 50 at 50. Miles, yeah, 50 miles per hour. And so it will continue off to the northeast. Let me show you uh, who will be in the path of this. At 50 miles per hour, it would be uh, around Elmo, Knuckles. These are very small communities. Jackson Port at 418, uh, Remy at 419, and it will move on up then into Jackson County. And it looks like that it will go, uh, this storm will go, it should go just to the north of Newport. But Newport and areas around there, Tuckerman, go ahead and, and uh, take cover with this storm anyway as it leaves, as it leaves southeastern Independence County and moves into Jackson County. And, and that's the area. So around oil trough, that's, that's the storm that you're going to have to watch. Tornado on the ground, trees and power lines down around on Highway 14 around oil trough. Trees and power lines are down with this storm. Uh, as it continues to move off to the northeast. So as we feared, some of these are going to touch down today. We just didn't uh, know exactly which ones, but this one certainly looks like that it has the potential for that. I'll go to another product that we have, which is our shear uh, index. And uh, it's, not showing, uh, it's not showing a ton with this, but given that we've already had reports yeah, it's showing four on a scale, uh, on the scale there. That means, uh, this says it's unlikely. It's a long way from the radar site, though, there. Yeah, but so, uh, it, 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 I would say this is the one that is of most concern right now. Yeah, it is on the ground, according to the National Weather Service, and moving, I want everybody along 67 from uh, Newport to Diaz to Campbell Station to up towards uh, Tuckerman. You need to get in your tornado safe place right now, put as many walls between you and the outside, and uh, turn up the television set so you can hear what's going on. Take a pillow with you, put that over your head, but uh, you got time. Uh, this is moving rapidly. There's not much time, but we want you to get into your safe place. As many walls between you and the outside and stay away from windows. Whatever you do, whatever you do, do not go out and try to see this thing. Uh, there's a possibility this thing could be wrapped up in some rain. There's a lot of moisture out there, and I, I would, you know, we don't want you to go out there and try to see this thing. Um, but uh, we're, we've got eyes and ears on the ground trying to find uh, these tornadoes for you, uh, professional storm chasers that know what they're doing. But we're indicating the circulation is moving over oil trough. This is where it is. Moving up towards Jackson Port. Jackson Port yeah, needs Jackson to get in there. Yeah, Jackson Port would be next. Yeah, Jackson Port along Highway 69. Newark, I, uh, I know there are several people up there in Newark. Uh, yeah, Independence County Sheriff's Office also reporting one on the ground three miles southeast of Oil Trough. So there's several reports of this now. And, uh, and, and Jackson Port up towards Campbell Station, you need to get in that safe place right now. Back into White County, the tornado warning uh, area has not been continued yet. We're going to keep an eye on that, but it's not been continued. It's been reissued as a severe thunderstorm warning for much of White County over into Woodruff County now on our five live Dopplers, but that is the area to the east of Searcy that uh, if there is a funnel cloud, that's where it would be. And it's over around Andrews and Nimmo, south of Bald Knob. It looks like it will track south of there. And uh, that small community of Andrews would be in line for it. And then Augusta, you're gonna see hail and then that back edge of the storm. But right now the rotation does not look impressive with that uh, at all. And um, so be warned that it is a possible tornado producer. But for right now, the rotation does not look all that great, and hail is a big threat. Down in South White County, you can see uh, the hail core within that storm, too, as it continues to move off to the northeast toward Griffithville, Jasmine, and eventually over toward uh, Georgetown along the White River. We now have a report from two miles northwest of oil trough. Uh, that were, Again, a train spotter sees the tornado, and we do have trees and power lines down on Highway 14 between South Side and oil trough. This coming to us from train spotters via the National Weather Service. So we have, ex uh, we have an extremely high degree of confidence uh, that there is a tornado on the ground here and doing damage through oil trough, moving up towards Jackson Port and eventually into Tuckerman and Jackson County, and eventually that will be heading up into the Jonesboro area. So Jonesboro, if anybody's watching us from up there, we want to in cash in the western portion of the county, not under a tornado warning right now, but this is getting awfully close. Um, and again, we're just looking at some of the latest stuff here that's coming in. So that's that's the one that we have extreme concern the, uh, in the Channel 7 viewing area. 
Yeah, this is where the rotation is. It's crossing into Jackson County, uh, very close to Diaz, moving up towards Jackson Port right now and Campbell Station. I think that the what you see in the blue West of Newport, yeah. yeah, west of Newport. What you see in the blue is a special algorithm with our radar, which pinpoints for us where that rotation is uh, located, and it's along Highway 69 right now. So Tuckerman to Campbell Station, it's so on 67. I want you to take your tornado precautions right now. Joining alongside of me right now is Chief Meteorologist Ned Permy, who is also going to be tracking these thunderstorms with me. Uh, Ned, so far, you know, you, you look at the Doppler radar, and we have individual uh, individual supercells developing. But and that's the, good the news. that's the one thing that yeah. we don't like to see right there. We've talked about this before. State Police, Todd, report a tornado on the ground just west of Newport right now, uh, and that is the uh, the the area that we have been watching. Uh, that is just just to the west of the Newport area in uh, Jackson County. Uh, the tornado reported on the ground, so everyone in that vicinity, uh, Diaz, uh, Tuckerman, also uh, oil trough, need to move to a safe place right away with that storm. Again, a tornado just west of Newport, uh, and uh, that is in Jackson County, uh, and the warning is in effect for that area, and you can see I'll uh, take off the uh, uh, radar uh, and show you the warnings that are in effect and that is for uh, southeastern Independence County all the way through northern all of northern Jackson County and we have a confirmation ta uh, Todd right now from the state police tornado just west yeah. of Newport yeah and I've got a storm chaser on it right now uh, this is Brett Adair one of our Channel 7 storm chasers and this is um, there it is right there he is punching through the worst part of the thunderstorm right now uh, and so if there's a tornado, we're going to know about it here. Uh, good news, there, um, tornado warning for White County, by the way, has been canceled. We're uh, also from the National Weather Service. They're seeing some rotation with the thunderstorm over Lone Oak. That's good. That White, White County storm is being canceled about yeah. 10 minutes early. And so state police good. now, this is brand new information. State police report a large and wide tornado on the ground moving towards Jackson Port. So that's coming from state police via the National Weather Service. They're saying that there's a very large tornado heading towards Jackson Port. We can't urge you enough uh, to go ahead and, and uh, take your tornado precautions. I think we can go ahead and declare a tornado emergency for, uh, for Jackson Port. You need to get into the interior portion of your home or your business, put as many walls between you and the outside. Yeah. I'm getting uh, on our five live Doppler radars a uh, pretty good signature going to our scope, Todd, and we can see between oil trough and Diaz, we can see the colors changing right there. There, uh, just to the north of Knuckles, and uh, this storm is moving northeast. Uh, looks like the brunt of the storm is uh, moving through Diaz right now. We'll be approaching Tuckerman very, very quick. There's the latest volume scan that we have on it, and uh, still indicating uh, some uh, unidirectional flow within that storm system there. And uh, so uh, definitely we are also getting a report that a tornado on the ground, a, a wide tornado at uh, 415 just about five minutes ago. This was reported by law enforcement and also state police reporting a tornado just to the west of the Newport area on the ground. Um, and uh, we will, uh, let me zoom out just a little bit and we'll get a, a little better track. This storm here is moving at uh, about 40 to 50 miles per hour. So uh, we will put a storm track on this storm uh, from the uh, general area where the strongest circulation is and track it out about 40 miles per hour. Cover. So, uh, Tuckerman. Uh, Campbell Station, Elgin, Tuckerman, uh, Kenyon, Lockhart, and Centerville is in the path of that storm. And even if it was a little bit of a right moving storm at about 40 miles an hour, Diaz, Campbell Station, again, Tuckerman, and uh, Kenyon all in the path of that storm. So, that storm located now just to the northeast of Oil Trough, moving into Jackson County out of southeastern sections of Independence County. And I uh, will see whether uh, we are looking at a tornado signature with that. Um, Two inch size hail now in Newark. And we are. I'm getting uh I'm getting a good tornado signature right there as that storm is approaching Tuckerman. Uh, Todd, uh, let's see um, what we've got on that. Um, Newark. And we are looking at Diaz, Campbell Station, Tuckerman, Vance, and Grubbs just in the next 10 to 12 minutes with that storm. And on our attributes, we are looking at a uh, 
a good possibility, a at least 20 percent, that that storm right now is producing a tornado on the ground. Uh, and that is uh, right there, now moving directly in a path that could take it toward uh, Tuckerman, Arkansas. That is in the path of the location at 428. And uh, Vance on to Vance at about... Uh, 432, so that is the latest on that storm. We're getting good attributes and a definite uh, tornado vortex signature on that just south uh, west of the Tuckerman area, Todd. Been watching some of the storm chasers just to let you know they're getting on the storm. So if we get any live video, I'll pass that along to you. You can watch those, by the way, at KTV.com. Um, just analyzing the radar on my end, we're talking about some rotation uh, coming up in, uh, in Lone Oak County. Yeah. All right, no tornado warning yet, but this is not good. Um, it's south of Lone Oak in Carlisle. Um, there's a severe thunderstorm warning in effect, but uh, in western portions of Lone Oak County and north of Keogh, this is the area that could start to spin. There is some very broad rotation starting to develop. I want everybody in Lone Oak to Carlisle know that you are not under a tornado warning right now. You are not under a tornado warning. You are under a severe thunderstorm warning. That could change very, very quickly as we are seeing rotation develop. The National Weather Service is responsible for issuing warnings, uh, and they have not done so yet with that. Now uh, we have reports now of Independence County from that tornado up there to moving towards Tuckerman. The tornado is a half a mile wide. On our shear factor, uh, our shear uh, system here, Todd, I'm getting uh, uh, at least a seven right now is the highest that I was getting on it. So that means it's right on the threshold of the possible tornado. So it is giving us a real good indication and that is a seven right now that we're looking at, which is uh, the high end of the uh, movement toward the possible tornado. And we are getting reports two times from state police and uh, also Independence County uh, uh, state troopers that uh, large tornado still on the ground getting continued reports on that and Tuckerman is definitely in the path of that storm so Tuckerman uh, and anywhere in northern anywhere in northern Jackson County you need to move to a safe place immediately uh, we are on the high threshold of moving that into a tornado possible with that and we're already getting reports of damage and not only that but we are also getting reports of uh, very large hail uh, we're near one inch diameter hail with that storm uh, as it is approaching Tuckerman. Not quite an inch yet, but still, that's some very large hail that we're dealing with with that storm as it's moving toward Tuckerman. So people in Jackson County, uh, this, the uh, brunt of the storm is now moving out of Independence County into Jackson County. The northern sections of Jackson County is uh, where we need to tell everyone to move to a safe place immediately, especially in the vicinity of Tuckerman. And uh, from there, that storm is going to be moving toward north Northeastern Craighead County and possibly into sections of southeastern Lawrence County as it continues to track toward the northeast at about 45 miles an hour. So with the storm here tracking at about 45 miles an hour toward the northeast, again, Kenyon, Centerville, Vance, Swifton, yeah. Alicia, and Denton Island, and on into uh, sections of Lawrence County, Egypt at 558, just giving people in Craighead County a heads up in cash at uh, 453 and uh, also uh, Swifton at 432 also is in the path of that storm and that has a confirmed tornado on the ground getting reports continuing from that storm out of Independence County moving into Jackson County. All right. And uh Continue to look at these other thunderstorms again. We want to make sure everybody in, in um, Tuckerman is in their safe place. Uh, Diaz up towards Tuckerman, half mile wide tornado on the ground. Let's move closer to Little Rock and show you no tornado warnings have been issued yet for these thunderstorms. We are watching some rotation continuing. It's broad from Keogh up towards Lone Oak right now. Nothing very well concentrated or centered, but there is uh, uh, okay. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm pausing. I just want to let you know we have a radio station spotter east of Tuckerman saying they see a wall cloud and a rope tornado and cannot see the funnel now. So we don't know if it's rain wrapped, if there's a, a visibility has been obscured, uh, but a rope 
just to let you know meteorologically, a rope tornado means if that's the case, a lot of times that means that it's in the decaying stage uh, where they, they, they're very fat, these tornadoes, and sitting on the ground, they're very wide, and then once they shrink, that's, in the, that's past the mature stage into the, into the decay stage. Maybe that's what, we're not saying that's happening exactly, but that from just based on that report, that's what we're hoping is happening. We have a continuation now, that tornado warning, uh, the National Weather Service and trackers, storm spotters saying a large and extremely dangerous tornado, this is the wording from the National Weather Service, moving northeast at 50 miles per hour. It's located five miles west of Tuckerman, and uh, it's uh, the possibility of this also producing some uh, golf ball size hail. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you can see this, see this where these bright reds and these darker reds come together. That's where the tornado would be located. It's heading up along the 67 corridor between, right along Tuckerman to Swifton, which, by the way, the site of the only F5 tornado that has ever hit Arkansas was almost 100 years ago. We're not saying that that's what this is by any stretch of imagination. But it's definitely imagination. moving in the area yeah. that could take it just uh, near yeah. Tuckerman and on up towards Swifton, and the warnings remain in effect and the continuation of that. Several reports that we've had uh, of uh, funnel clouds and and also confirmation of tornadoes on the ground uh, with that storm just to the west of the Tuckerman area and that's where we are looking at our tornado signature right now we still we active tornado signature that we are looking at uh, and uh, that is just to the gotcha. west of Tuckerman as we mentioned so Tuckerman at 432 uh, Centerville Vance Lockhart uh, a good tornado signature and we have confirmation on the ground and uh, we are looking at a possible tornado with that. Uh, and uh, it's encouraging to think that the storm may be in the uh, rope stage, Todd, but uh, still, uh, this may not, uh, this may have spun up and touched down for a while. We just don't know. But you said you've got a storm spotter that was uh, kind of moving toward that storm, right? Right. Now. I'm watching sure. it right now. I've got a storm spotter. This is from the Woodford Storm Tracker uh, from our sister station, KAIT in Jonesboro. I'm watching, and they're, they're in position to watch this thing. Um, you can see, got it on my computer. On our VRAD computer. Yeah. You can see, um, we're watching this right now. This is from our sister station, KAIT uh, in Jonesboro. They're, they're streaming live video for us here, and this is where they're going to intercept the tornado, and there's several storm chasers pulled along here, but you cannot see anything. It just looks like a gray sky right there. It's because they're well ahead of this right now, but they are in the position right now for this to intercept them. We have got, uh, want to mention, Todd, that this area, there, that right now, Independence County, in, no reports of any damage. Uh, no one is in oil, oil trough. They've got crews en route, uh, but part of this area is in very, very heavy farmland up there, so there have been, right now, no reports of uh, of any damage that we're looking at there there could be damage but uh, the uh, spotters are there's just just not there yet and, uh, and again as I mentioned this is very heavy heavily uh, uh, in heavy farmland up there wide farmland up as you move into northeastern Arkansas but okay. again Tuckerman is definitely in the path of the storm it's moving into the Tuckerman area right now and then on into Kenyon Vance and Centerville uh, we have a brand new tornado warning that has uh, just been issued this is for Jackson, White, and uh, Prairie County, and Woodruff County. So this is for a storm a little farther to the south, uh, and we'll go there and get a track on this storm. Um, this storm is uh, located, a uh, possible uh, radar location, uh, five miles southwest of Pryor or 12 miles southeast of Searcy. Uh, about 12 miles southeast of Searcy uh, is where we're looking at with that storm yeah. there. And this is the new warning that has just come in. So uh, this storm, I am, as you can see, Todd, right between McRae and Georgetown, we are definitely seeing a uh, small hook with that storm right now. We have a brand new uh, tornado warning that is in issued and will remain in effect uh, for White County. Also, and I think Woodruff we got something Prairie here. County. I think I may have something here. Uh, let's go to our VRAD. I, that's on that storm. I think we have something down to the ground here. I'm not quite, I'm seeing, I'm not quite sure. The, uh, this, this is the part of the thunderstorm that is rotating. This is Bart Comstock, one of our storm chasers. Uh, and and I, I can't confirm this one way or the other, but he is in the position of where this storm is rotating. Um, and I'm, I see something up ahead. Do you guys see that? That's yeah, that yeah. looks like a, a funnel up ahead, Todd. It does. I, again, I cannot confirm. It's very tough to see with this video. Do you know his location right now? No. Um, 
Well, it's, <laughs> I don't think that's what that was, but he's on that part of the storm, and we're going to keep an eye on this as he's trying to get in place right now. I thought I saw a funnel with this, uh, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that. He is with that storm that they just put, uh, put out a new tornado warning for, uh, which is near Griffithville right, right now. Right, that storm is showing a, a pretty well-defined hook echo near Griffithville at the present time. This storm is moving northeast at about 50 miles an hour, so these storms are really starting to race quite a bit. Uh, this storm here uh, near Griffithville, with a hook on it over the Griffithville area is moving at about 50 miles per hour toward the northeast. So it is going to be moving toward Augusta, possibly moving into the Augusta area at 452. So persons in Augusta, Mitchell's Corner at 436, uh, Liberty Valley at 436, Warden at uh, 439, Rio Vista at 440 and beyond, Fitzhugh at 501, and Overcup just after 5 o'clock, and Pleasant Grove as well, all in the path of that storm. Uh, we'll zoom into this area and show you the uh, inflow notch that we're looking at or the possible funnel that has prompted uh, the uh, tornado warning that is in effect right now. And uh, that is in this area right there, as you can see, near Griffithville. And as we go to our scope, we'll get a... a look at that and uh, getting at least some weak rotation right in there Todd as we're looking at those uh, greens and reds right there the bright green and red coming together uh, near Griffithville um, so uh, prior again is in the path of that storm this is a brand new tornado warning and it is in effect for southeastern white also for Woodruff County in eastern Arkansas northeastern Prairie County southeastern Jackson County it's moving just in the same general direction that most all of them are this afternoon. Again, this storm is just to the southeast of the Searcy area in White County. I'll zoom out just a little bit and we will show you uh, the actual warning on that storm and kind of give you an example of where it's going. It's going to uh, Wyville and Augusta, all in the path of that storm, as well as extreme northern sections of uh, Woodruff County uh, and uh, into uh, eastern and southeastern sections of White County. Uh, uh, extreme northern sections of Prairie County and southeastern Jackson County. So right now, White and Jackson County, looking at the data, the radar data, are uh, more in line to feel the effects of that storm, uh, primarily into Woodruff County and then eventually on into uh, sections of Jackson County. And you can see near Tupelo also is in the path of that storm. Uh, I think it's going to be going through northern sections of Woodruff County, out of southeastern White County, and then eventually Jack uh, moving and tracking right into uh, southeastern Jackson County. Look at this picture we just got in, Ned. Uh, this is from Oil Trough. On our uh, com it's on the uh, live computer. On the weather graphics computer. And um, you see the tornado on the left that side That came into us from Oil Trough. Yeah, that's the just tornado a few minutes trough, ago. Just a so while. when they were talking about a wide tornado on the ground, they were absolutely accurate with that, weren't they? Yeah, there it um, is. And that could have been when it was going into a rope stage as it uh, is kind of in a decaying uh, yeah. But that's still a very strong tornado, and that came to us just a moment ago at photo at KETV.com. As I mentioned, about 4 o'clock, uh, the entire uh, area is under the influence of a very strong area of low pressure that's rotating. So any of these thunderstorms that we are looking at this afternoon have the capability of uh, uh, spinning up uh, a funnel cloud or a potential tornado. As we take a look at the movement on this one storm just going past the last hour, you can see how that storm moved from Griffithville and now moved through the Griffithville area and now is approaching Augusta. So persons in Augusta need to move to a safe place. It still has a very well-defined funnel uh, or a very well-defined mesocyclone, uh, a uh, inflow notch there that we are looking at as it is approaching Nemo. It looks like it will move just to the north of the Georgetown area. Uh, and let's see if I can get a... Uh, uh, let's see if I can get a uh, tornado signature on that right now and get you, yeah, we do definitely have a tornado vortex signature on that, Todd, and um, okay. we are going to look at that right in that uh, inflow notch. Did we you see that out there? We are looking at uh, Pryor, Enright, Nemo, Mitchell Corner, again, Augusta, right in the path of that storm in New Augusta. You need to move to a safe place anywhere out of eastern, southeastern sections of White County into Woodruff County right now. We are looking at that tornado, uh, possible tornado. Uh, 
We, on our attributes, not showing it on the ground yet, Todd, but there is still a probability, 37%, that one could develop in that area. But this is the general storm track that we are looking at. And uh, again, that is, we're, we're also getting another storm uh, signature, tornado signature, uh, and that is just uh, to the southwest of the Beadville area. And uh, so, but the uh, strongest circulation that we are seeing and that is right here near uh, moving toward uh, out of Griffithville toward Enright, Nemo, Mitchell Corner, Augusta, New Augusta, and Revel. Uh, and that storm continues to track toward the northeast. So it looks like it's going to move just to the uh, north of the uh, Georgetown area, Todd. But yeah. again, right in the path of that storm is Augusta. So uh, Augusta is pretty much uh, on the uh, White County, Woodruff County line, and you need to move to a safe place. We'll put it into motion and show you that it is moving moving at about 50 miles an hour right there near Georgetown is uh, where the center of circulation is with that storm. Still watching, yeah, that, that's a classic storm, and I'm sorry I'm jumping in here, Ned. I've been watching these storm chasers out there, but yeah, Georgetown towards Gregory, you're right on that thunderstorm, and uh, let's stay with the five live for just one second, because of what I'm going to do, uh, I'm, I'm looking at... Um, I'm pulling up some live streaming video right now, and we're about to have that for you in just one second. And I've been watching the storm chaser here. Now I've got it up and going. Still getting a good hook yeah. echo on that storm near Georgetown. This is moving from toward our, Augusta. People this, in Augusta need to move immediately to a safe place. You can see the proximity and the speed of that storm. So large hail also is a is a good bet with that storm. Go ahead, Todd. I'm just saying I've been watching this. I've got him up. Uh, Brett Adair, storm chaser. Uh, he's on that storm. We have reports that it is still on the ground to the northeast of Newport and so we're watching this uh, right now uh, he's getting into position right now we have two of our storm chasers on it and let me just show you that picture one more time this is uh, coming this is what we're following right now it's on our, our graphics computer you see that large tornado on the left side of your screen that's what started all this in that area of the state near oil trough and we have reports now by the way let me get back to these reports of the damage um, we have reports that there is damage uh, structures damaged between oil trough and thyda. So that's what that tornado caused that you see a picture of. Uh, caused quite a bit of damage. We have reports that it's still on the ground and may be getting awfully close to the Jonesboro area. Ned, you got more? I'm going to, what I'm going to do, Todd, right now, I'm turning on our uh, Memphis radar because we've been looking a lot of these from our uh, vantage point of our Little Rock radar. So I've just turned on our Memphis radar and our Little Rock radar as well. So we're still seeing that storm uh, just to the north, uh, uh, northwest of the Georgetown area and still tracking it very well. We can see the hook a little bit better right there. If you see, Todd, uh, that's, that's strictly right there. That is the uh, Little Rock radar. So we can see where that center of circulation is. When I turn on the Memphis radar, uh, it kind of adds a perspective to it, and it probably is going to show us that hail is going to be a real big problem with that storm. Uh, we'll go back down a little bit more to that storm as it's approaching uh, the Tuckerman area, uh, or not the Tuckerman, but Augusta area. We are looking at close to an inch diameter hail within that core structure right now, almost an inch diameter hail. Uh, as far as the uh, shear goes with that storm right now, um, not real impressive with this storm near Georgetown. Oh uh, I can find a fi five is the highest, so it's still saying a tornado on the ground is unlikely with that storm. Uh, but we're going to continue to uh, watch it. But anybody in Augusta right now needs to move to a very safe place. Go to our volumetric radar right now. There it is live. That's what you're... There it is. That's live right now. That looks uh, like a rotating wall cloud right sure there. It sure does. Uh, that's the storm you're tracking near Augusta. Uh, the picture just froze up, but it just froze up within just seconds ago. That's it right there. I don't see anything on the ground, uh, but you see... Um, a wall cloud and you see several what could be funnels now there could still be something on the ground that just hadn't formed a condensation funnel uh, but we can see right now we're, we're the, the video is a we're, we're relying on these storm chasers right now that you could watch at ktv.com uh, but this is what we're looking at there may be something do you see that right there there may be something right there trying to rotate I don't Come know. Down to the ground, but that's looks, a wall cloud right there. It looks like that, it looks like a rotating wall cloud. Yeah. I'm not sure whether. What's picture from Newport? Picture oh, from Newport on our graphics computer. Let's go to that. 
we're, we're, we're monitoring this these just pictures. came in from Newport at KETV.com. So as you can clearly see, this is an extremely active weather day, especially as we thought all along and for the last couple of days that the north, uh, central and northeastern sections would be the hardest hit area out of this. There are no warnings, tornado warnings anywhere in and around the Pulaski County central okay. metro area right now. I think it's on the ground. Let's go live to our volumetric radar. We have a, a definite funnel. It may be in contact with the ground. You see it there on the bottom of your screen. You're looking at live video right now. This is a can you get, where's that location where the, this would be just near Georgetown? Yes, and uh, it I've is got live it live on the ground. As a matter of fact, I've switched to our other radar, our level two radar, Todd, and we're still looking at an ex extremely further. impressive hook echo. Is this the one that he's on right now? The one that was at Griffithsville and now moving yes. toward Augusta. Yeah. At times, it looks like it. it the latest volume down. scan just lost a little bit of the hook echo, but still, don't let your guard down. It looks, Todd, like there is a funnel there, and yeah. it is trying to form in that wall cloud right now. Uh, so uh, I am going to continue to uh, zoom in on this area. And this is the storm that we are looking at right now. And uh, with that in mind, where the center of circulation is near Nemo right now. Uh, and uh, so we'll give you a... That is Arkansas Highway 33 running through Augusta. That is Shell Street near Augusta. And uh, Taylor Bay Road need to move anybody that lives in this area or in this vicinity, the center of circulation. That's County Road 509 running north through Augusta. And uh, just south of the dust. And uh, so we are looking at the center of circulation near Nemo right now, uh, just to the south, just just a couple of miles to the uh, southwest of okay, Augusta. That's County Road 401, and uh, that is County Road, as I mentioned, 401, and that's Railroad Road. And uh, again, this is running north through Augusta, Arkansas Highway 33. So that is a, a very strong storm. We do have, uh, you can see clearly from our storm spotter. And what's his name, Todd, the storm spotter? All, they, all they call themselves are warm sectors. Is warm nickname. sector, the, okay. He is in it, and uh, you can see it, it looks like it's lifted That's, off the ground. It's not in complete contact, but it did touch down, look like briefly. Um, but it, I'm, I'm still monitoring it, his location. He's right in that near Gregory looking into that storm, uh, which is just to the south of New Augusta. Did you put that out? So Augusta and New Augusta and Augusta need to move immediately to a safe place uh, with this storm. Storm's bearing down on you right now. Um, we can go back to... Uh our other uh, radar and look at it see uh, that's the uh, same one that we're looking at there and that is with our Memphis radar and the Little Rock radar turned on right now but still a very strong storm when I go back to our other radar and close in on New Augusta and Nemo uh, we are looking at a hook echo very very well defined still maybe not quite as defined as it was before but we are definitely seeing look at that wall cloud Todd yeah that is circulation that's getting tightly wound up right there and we are possibly friends seeing a uh, tornado forming right now it's, in that wall cloud first the funnel and then the possibly reaching the ground so anybody in the Augusta area there is your proof you need to move to a safe place this could touch the ground at any time and uh, that is uh, moving into Woodruff County let me just explain to you what you're looking at right now um, First of all, the tornado, if there is one, it's on the bottom right, and I know it's just out of your picture, uh, but ju that's just the way that I've got this set up, and I I'm, I'm looking at the ground, so just trust me on this one. Uh, what I'm seeing is rotation. I can't say 100% sure that this is on the ground. It looked like it did touch down just a little while ago and then lifted back up, but what you, you got to understand that when you're looking at this and you're saying it doesn't look like it's extending to the ground, sometimes when a tornado is in the developing stages, you don't see the full what's called condensation funnel extending from the cloud all the way to the ground. So there still could be something rotating on the ground, but it hasn't formed that full funnel that goes all the way to the base of the cloud. So we need to act. My, my point is we need to act as if this is on the ground right now, as it is just towards the south, just south of Augusta, moving towards the uh, east right now, east northeast. I think the speed on this was about 45 or 50 miles per hour. Uh, but I'm, we're just going to stay on this, this uh, live shot, and we want everybody to please put as many walls between you and the outside 
and uh, just stay away from windows. It's, it's uh, obviously a, a horrible day uh, uh, for northeastern Arkansas. And um, let's, if we can just put up maybe on the screen too for just a second, we got another picture in from Oil Trough. You can see the uh, on the weather graphics computer. Uh, there's, a, there's a picture of the other tornado that's moving into the Jonesboro area. Uh, that was earlier an oil trough with damage, but uh, I'm continuing to watch this on our volumetric radar um, on that computer. This is live video. Head back to that and, and do that split screen. Ned, you, you've got it on. It looks like McCrory may be in the path of this, right? Uh, McCrory, uh, it looks like the, uh, yeah, people in McCrory don't let your guard down, but it really looks, Todd, I'm, I've got a good Vortex signature, uh, and it looks like McCrory may escape this uh, tornado just to the uh, northwest of that area. As we take a look, we have a 41% that this tornado is on the ground or could become grounded in any moment. Uh, we are looking at uh, the uh, locations of this storm, Augusta, New Augusta. It's now 447. You need to be in your safe place. They've just, we've just taken another volume scan and they have changed the path. So McCrory now, yeah. it's a little bit of a right mover, Todd, and now McCrory is more in the path of this storm. And McCrory is uh, Carville and then on to McCrory. Uh, let's uh, move this over a little bit so we can see 502 at McCrory uh, with that storm. And and uh, so Augusta and McCrory definitely within uh, the path of that storm. We have a c confirmed report of tornado on the ground. And you can see Augusta is not very far from McCrory. So it looks like at the latest volume scan that this is a little bit of a right mover. And uh, we are uh, looking at even north of Augusta, Riverside. Uh, that is Highway 260 there that runs between Goodrich and Riverside and running northbound through uh, south of Riverside is U.S. Highway 64. And uh, just north of there, that is County Road 26. Uh, so anywhere in the vicinity of Augusta, uh, McC McCrory, Riverside, Goodrich, and even Fitzhugh, please move to a safe place right away with that storm as it continues to travel very, very rapidly uh, toward the northeast at about 50 miles an hour. So this is going to be moving very quickly on into uh, Jackson County, Todd, probably within the next 15, 20 minutes. So even areas like Beadville in Jackson County need to be aware that this storm has had a history of producing a tornado on the ground and you need to move immediately to a safe place. The storm is upon Augusta right now, so hopefully everybody is in a safe place. We've given uh, uh, plenty of warning and Hopefully, if you're watching, you've moved to a safe place. But now we want to tell people in Fitzhugh, uh, McCrory, and Goodrich that you need to also move to a safe place. The center of circulation with the storm or where the possible tornado is is going to be right in this area there. Uh, and... Uh, just to the uh, south or in the vicinity of Augusta. The storm really is uh, near Augusta right now. Um, so please move immediately to a safe place. Uh, let's uh, zoom out a little bit, Todd. We're going to give you again an overview of where all the warnings are in the state. We'll remove some of the radar data. And uh, that is uh, the storm right there that's moving toward Beadville, as I mentioned. And that's the warning area. And if you do have weather call, that will be, if you're signed up for weather call anywhere in that red area you're going to get your weather call warning uh, so again uh, if you can you can go to ketv.com and and uh, sign up for weather call if you'd like but again that's the latest oh on that warning and again that storm still showing a good heck uh, hook echo yeah. and the uh, tornado warning for uh, Jackson County uh, White County and Woodruff County continues the storm is uh, to the north of Prairie County right now. Now, you're, you're looking at this picture, Dan, and, you're, and it, it, it moves every now and then. It's in an area that does not have great cell phone coverage. Uh, so we're getting, a, uh, we're getting a frame about every five to eight seconds is what I'm counting. So it's tough to see the rotation, but what you're looking at, uh, it looks like things are spinning and going in up into this wall cloud, maybe some scud clouds with this too, but th he's in the part of the thunderstorm that did produce a tornado that we saw. Uh, and, and then a strong wall cloud, but it looks like it's not quite as organized as it was, and he's zoomed in uh, to this area, the storm chaser. So um, we're, we are still watching it very carefully like a hawk, uh, but it does not have that significant lowering uh, that it had a little while ago, and then it came down all of a sudden. You saw it on Channel 7 here where it, it came down. It looked like it touched down and then lifted back up, Ned. 
Uh, we're going to go back, let's see, to our uh, radar and show you the storm. Still a good hook echo on it, Todd. People in Beadville, southern sections of Jackson County, even on to Cross County, Poinsett County, northwestern Cross County, and southwestern Poinsett County need to be aware of this storm. That's the one thing we all like to do as we continue our coverage here is try to give enough advance warning on a dangerous or rotating storm. We have another picture on our graphics computer of the uh, tornado that touched down near oil, oil trough. And look at this one, Todd. That is a large tornado that touched down. And this oil trough storm, I think Barry was probably about uh, right about in, uh, 50 minutes or, or so ago, 45 to 55 minutes ago. So it's still, these are very recent pictures, and this is a, a rotating wall cloud and a, a small, looks like, rope tornado there at Diaz. Watching and, some rotation, by the way, um, just to let you know, I'm scanning the skies of South Arkansas. That looks like there's a storm that is beginning to rotate west of Pine Bluff. And we want everybody in Pine Bluff to know that we're watching this thunderstorm. It is not producing a, a tornado at this time, but I do see some rotation beginning just to the northwest of Grapevine, south of Sheridan, moving towards the Pine Bluff, Whitehall, Cheryl Tucker area in Jefferson County. There is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for this, but it does show some rotation. Uh, just let you know in South Arkansas, I know we're concentrating on this in, in northeast and east central areas of the state. We are keeping our eyes out on that storm for you. But again, of immediate concern is the storm that we saw produce a brief tornado south of Augusta uh, and then lift up and it's uh, now moving towards McCrory and Riverside. This is where the rotation uh, would be located, moving up towards uh, uh, Riverside right now and McCrory up towards Grays. And at some point, we'll cross Highway 17. Uh, we're 17 to 64. Uh, 17 uh, across the 64 out here in eastern Arkansas. Ned? The uh, Memphis office of the National Weather Service, Todd, on our five live Dopplers has put out a new tornado warning, and this is for northern Craighead, Green County, and southeastern Lawrence County. It's in this storm here just to the northwest of the Jonesboro area. This uh, storm was tracking uh, near Egypt, Arkansas, or about 11 miles west of Bono, Arkansas, or Bono, Arkansas. Uh, and it's moving uh, northeast at about 55 miles an hour. So as you can see, it's located near Egypt, center of circulation with that storm, and uh, it is tracking to the northeast at about 55 miles an hour. And with that in mind, Paragould could be in the path of that storm by about 520. So keep that in mind. Paragould, also Crowley at 515, Stanford at 513, and Laredo at 504, as well as Sterling Springs, Herndon, uh, 56, and Oak Ridge. So that's in extreme northern sections and northwestern sections of Craighead County. So northern Craighead, Greene County, uh, southeastern Lawrence County uh, are in the path of that storm. So that's a new tornado warning going on. I will zoom out a little bit, Todd, and we're going to uh, kind of show you uh, an overview of all of these storms in the state. As Todd mentioned, we are was looking at some strong storms down around the Pine Bluff area. Mo any one of these storms that you're looking at right now along this area, any one of these storms um, could be uh, a rotating storm today because of the amount of uh, rotation with that large area of low pressure that is now moving over southern Missouri. So any one of these individual storms could show signs of rotating at any time. However, the vast majority of the storms that are showing the tornadoes and the pictures that you've seen, the verification of tornado touchdowns, have been closer to the center of the low pressure area, which is in Missouri. So that's where we are seeing the uh, more active storms in uh, northeastern Arkansas right now. The storm in Pine Bluff, though, Todd, we will take a quick look at it. Uh, it is a strong storm. Uh, it looks like there could be a little bit of an inflow notch, a little bit of a a little bit of a uh, hook echo on that storm just to the west of Pine Bluff. Just lost. From KATV, this is Channel 7 News Live at 5. Hi everybody, I'm meteorologist Ned Permi along
Meteorologist Michelle Rupp and uh, Todd Jacobian and meteorologist Barry Brandt. We're all in the Weather Center watching a very dangerous set situation unfold this afternoon. We have a number of isolated supercells going on. They have shown signs of rotation. Not only that, but definite tornadoes on the ground. Uh, we don't have any significant amounts of damage. The good news is a lot of these have been touching down in uh, very rural areas. And of course, northeastern Arkansas has been uh, one of the primary areas and should have loaded with a lot of farmland up there. So if there's one thing that's good, uh, it's that they have been in a fairly isolated area at this present time. But Todd and I have also been tracking a storm that is in the vicinity and moving toward Augusta, out of Augusta and uh, McCrory right now on our five live Doppler radars. And as we zoom in, we can show you that this storm still has a good hook echo on it in this area right there for a possible tornado development. And uh, it is uh, with that storm right there that we are looking at possible tornado moving near McCrory. So people in McCrory, also Goodrich, you need to move to a safe place immediately. That storm is in your vicinity. And wind too. That's let's let's you know highlight wind down the road here. Uh, wind could be in the affected uh, area. Uh, no tornado warning yet, but uh, spotters are starting to see a wall cloud west of Pine Bluff beginning to rotate. No tornado warning yet, but just to let you know that uh, it may be trying to put something enough. Uh, uh, down that, that would warrant a tornado warning. It's a severe thunderstorm warning right now. But for all of our viewers in central Jefferson County, we know that you are watching this. We are too. No tornado warning at this time, but it is beginning to rotate the wall cloud. And if there's a warning issued, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get to This is the storm uh, Todd's talking yep. about, and it is in possibly in this area right in here that we are looking at uh, possible hook echo beginning to develop, and that is just to the southwest of the Whitehall area. It looks like the brunt of this storm will stay to the uh, north of the Pine Bluff area. Again, there is a severe thunderstorm warning for this storm right now. No tornado warning, but uh, we here, as well as the National Weather Service, continue to watch and monitor this storm. But again, it is located, or the center of circulation right there is just to the southwest of the Whitehall area. You can see Pine Bluff is right there. So the brunt of this storm moving northeast is going to be moving away from the Pine Bluff area. So again, Here's away from the Pine Bluff area. Big hail. White Hall. Yeah. Oh, that that just came to us from Whitehall just now. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, it just kind of justifies. Look at the hail. That's unbelievable. Softball size hail there with that storm in uh, the in Jefferson County area. Uh, let's see what we're looking at. But that just came to us at photo at KETV.com. And uh, we have our hail uh, signature on getting an ID on that storm just to the north of the Pine Bluff area. Over an inch diameter hail all along the core of that. And as you just saw proof of there, over a uh, softball size hail was reported uh, near Whitehall just a few moments ago. The brunt of that storm, as we take a look again, is uh, just to the north of the Pine Bluff area. It looks like with its movement, as we put it into motion, we can see that storm. The brunt of it has moved to the north of the Pine Bluff area. However, it is still showing some signs that it could be a rotating storm, but nothing uh, to the ground at this time. But we will continue to monitor it. Yeah, um, Weather Service is also getting reports of baseball size hail. We can verify that in Whitehall. Uh, I'm back on that thunderstorm that's affecting, going to be affecting McCrory. Uh, spotters continue, by the way, to see rotating wall cloud near I-530 near I-530, but I'm watching storm chasers right now. If we can go up to the McCrory storm and get an, uh, a check-in on that one. Uh, this is the one that you watched um, uh, live here on Channel 7. Uh, saw uh, what was a wall cloud funnel, and then it looked like it touched down briefly, but it's right on top of McCrory. And we got our storm chaser. He's, part, he's looking right into that thunderstorm where it would be rotating. If it, if it was rotating, uh, that's where it would be. And I'm keeping an eye on this right now for you folks in McCrory, but right now, this one's gonna be heading eventually towards what? wind. Uh, in Cross County, but I, I'm very worried about Pine Bluff right now. Um, there are getting, I'm just getting other reports of the of the hail that continues to come down in Whitehall as well. But I'm, I'm monitoring for any warnings right now. The National Weather Service is watching the situation uh, very carefully for Pine Bluff. Nothing has uh, showed enough to warrant a tornado warning. You are under a severe thunderstorm warning. But uh, we're just going to keep our eye on this as we just got this live feed up and going once again. Still reports of golf ball size hail, and that's in Jefferson County near right. Whitehall. Right. But this is the storm that uh, we have had pictures on of uh, tornado 
on the ground and this is now the storm is east uh, northeast of the Augusta area so it can be an all clear for Augusta right now as uh, that storm has passed through that area but areas like Beadville and as it moves into Cross County points at County uh, that storm still an active storm uh, tornado warnings are in effect as we take a look at the entire uh, width of that uh, tornado warning uh, that is in an effect right now we can see all the way from Augusta although the brunt of that storm has moved to the uh, northeast of the Augusta area but areas like Beadville Cherry Valley Harrisburg all in the path of that storm as it moves into points at County and uh, then uh, there is uh, another storm in po uh, just northern points at County just south of you know that has shown some signs of rotating so it's that entire storm core there that we're looking at we have a tornado warning now for Jefferson County yeah, there let's go is. back down to that storm Todd you can go there first I'll be right there after you all right I got it on our volumetric radar this is it it's heading towards Whitehall you saw it here on channel 7 the uh, baseball size hail that came out of this in Whitehall we want everybody in Pine Bluff to take your tornado precautions right now this is moving to the east at 50 miles per hour it is Doppler radar indicated we have reports from spotters of a rotating wall cloud just west of Pine Bluff you need to head to the interior of your home or your business put as many walls between you and the outside this is going to be heading up towards Alzheimer towards Cornerstone as well as it moves towards the east at 50 miles per hour let me back this up so you can see the whole movement of this thunderstorm it is moving east. It is wrapped up very, very strongly. I think Stuttgart, you're going to be all right out of this one. It's going to go just south of you. Hopefully, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, I know you're very storm weary after what's happened to you. Right now, times, though, Todd, it's... I will tell you that as we look at the uh, actual tornado warning that is going to be issued, it's not even on my computer yet because it just came out. Yeah. But uh, Stuttgart is in the path of that storm. It but is. it looks okay. like it will be on the northern side of that. Uh, the brunt of the storm is right there between Pine Bluff and Samples near Whitehall and. And, uh, we can see the uh, circulation around that storm right in there near Whitehall. That's where the hook echo is. There's a warning. This is a rotating wall cloud. The storm is moving at about 50 miles per hour. So even if we go just to the north of the Pine Bluff area over to Samples and take it northeast at about 50 miles an hour, which is going to take it into Arkansas County, uh, Pastoria, Sherrill, Haywood, Ellison, Alzheimer, Newton at about 518, and beyond that, Humphrey at about 536. And uh, again, uh, getting another track on that storm. Uh, it is moving at about 50 miles an hour. We'll move it over just a little bit to kind of get you an idea of where Stuttgart is in Arkansas County. Uh, it could be in the path of that storm because it is moving toward the northeast at about uh, 50 to 55 miles an hour. And with that in mind, at 50 miles an hour, uh, Stuttgart could be in the path of that storm within the next uh, 40 minutes or so. But Goldman, about 445 Humphrey at 4534 uh, Gethsemane at 515 Wabasika at 522 uh, and uh, Ellison at 509 uh, so and Cheryl and Haywood and Altime are all in the path of that storm so again in Whitehall we just showed you that they have also very large hail we have confirmed golf ball size hail and Barry pulled up some pictures just a moment ago showing you softball size hail in and around the uh, northern flank of that storm in the Whitehall area. We'll put it into motion for you and show you this is a real fast moving storm. It's moving actually, it looks like a little bit uh, east of due northeast right now, which could put Stuttgart a little bit more in the path of that storm within the next 45 minutes or um, in next 45 minutes or so. The storm, by the way, uh, new tornado warning for Cleveland, Dallas, Jefferson, and Lincoln. There's another storm rotating south there now. There it is. Heading towards Ryzen. We want everybody in Ryzen to take your tornado precautions right now. Uh, this is a new, they're, they're starting to rotate now in southern Arkansas. Uh, and I want everybody in Ryzen to take your tornado precautions right now. Uh, still rotating wall cloud in Jefferson County. No tornado has touched down as of yet. Uh, but this is showing some very large hail, which will go just to the north of Ryzen. This is the inflow. It's it looks like Ivan. It looks like most of that storm is going to remain north. Well, if it's a, a little bit of a right mover, let's put it into motion, Todd, that storm here. And uh, it looks like that storm may just move north of Ryzen. It's going to be awfully but don't, close. Yeah, it's going to be close. Don't get your guard down in Ryzen if you feel in the threatened area. Uh, definitely some large hail just to the north of the Ryzen area right now. Uh, we'll get a track on that storm. We do have the brand-new tornado 
warning and that's in effect uh, and will remain in effect now until 545 uh, for eastern sections of Dallas County, southern Jefferson, Lincoln and northern Cleveland County. It's moving also at about 55 miles an hour. So we will get a good track on that storm. We're going to go to the leading edge of that storm to just give you as much time as we can as we track this. So we take it just to the north of the Ryzen area all the way into uh, southern sections of uh, Grant County and track it uh, toward the northeast um, at about 55 miles per hour. Again, there is a possibility that Pine Bluff could be in the path of that storm. So areas like Star City, Woodville, Toledo, uh, immediately uh, Farrandale, Grapevine, uh, Kedron, and Roan at about 519. Beyond that, if the storm continues to hold together and moves in this direction, Pine Bluff possibly at 540. So persons in the Pine Bluff area, you've got a double problem in Jefferson County. You have a potential rotation storm and a tornado warning out for the Whitehall area moving into north central sections of Jefferson County toward Wabasica and then you need to be aware of this second storm right here uh, this storm right here we have a brand new tornado warning on it and you see this area in dark black right there that is going to show us or give us a very good indication on our radar screens that uh, that is going to be carrying with it hail possibly up to an inch or more in diameter diameter. As a matter of fact, we'll go right now to our hail display and uh, move just down to that storm just southwest of Pine Bluff and get an idea on that. Uh, we are looking at over an inch and a half uh, hail right now at uh, between Staves and Kendron. Kedron is in the path of that storm, but about an over an inch and a half hail is a good bet within that storm. It looks like most of it will remain north of Ryzen, but a tornado warning remains in effect for that area, which includes southern Jefferson County. And again, as I go back to the uh, radar with that storm, you can see two of them, one north of Pine Bluff, still showing a sign, good sign of a hook echo with it, uh, just north of the Whitehall area, right in that area there. And uh, also, we are looking at this storm here just to the north of Ryzen, and this will be moving into uh, southeastern sections of Grant County and across southern Jefferson County. Barry? Yeah, Dad, they've got a new tornado warning now. The National Weather Service is issued for Monroe, Prairie, and Woodruff County until 545. It's not quite up on our screen as of yet on our VRAD, but this is the storm that they're talking about. The one over along I-40, the southern extent of that would be where uh, there would be a tornado northeast of Hazen, uh, north of Duval's Bluff, and then points eastward and as that comes on the screen we're gonna uh, we'll go ahead and uh, there it is right there it's just now in it's this storm center right there north of Duval's Bluff right along I-40 that is going to cause some real traffic problems on I-40 eastbound as it parallels I-40 the whole way there the hail part of the storm is south of Desarc it's north of the interstate but uh, but uh, near Cotton Plant over toward Brinkley this is going to be a storm that you're going to have to watch as it continues to move off to the northeast. And there's Fredonia, there's Duval's Bluff, very near that area now. Please, please, with the history of these storms, go to the lowest floor of your house, the most interior part, wait it out, because it isn't going to be there very long. These are moving at 45 miles an hour. They're going to be there, and they're going to be gone very quickly, and then they're going to be out of your area. But this is a, another one of the storms, these supercells that are out by themselves, and, uh, and they're, moving in, they're moving into the richest environment right now at the worst time of day with the entire day heating up as yes. it is, which is just absolutely the worst time of day for the next two or three hours. So we're going to be watching it carefully. Our five live Dopplers, Barry, is showing uh, tornado vortex mm -hmm. signatures on them. Uh, so we'll get kind of an idea of where these are going. This is going to be a little bit of a right mover. This uh, storm track is going to take it just along I-40 uh, toward uh, Dagmar, Eden, Bayless, Brink by about 522. Persons in Brinkley, Arkansas, right now need to move to a safe place immediately. This storm is moving at about 55 miles per hour, so it's going to be on you in less than 10 minutes. So persons in Brinkley need to move to a safe place. Beyond Brinkley, Fargo at 528, Zent at 532, Blossom after that, and uh, Nash Corner also in the path of the storm. Uh, the uh, northern fringe of the storm possibly moving toward Bay Plain. Plantation, Little Dixie, Mayberry, Daggett, Cotton Plant, and Shady Grove all in the path of the storm. Bulltown at 526, and Hillman, um, Hilleman at 
528, and uh, Wyville at 522, and Howell at 523. As we're looking at the attributes on that storm, we have nearly a 40% probability that that storm could touch down at any time or is already on the ground at this form of our attributes. Uh, and uh, as we look at our other form of attributes, the southern part of that uh, not showing too much of a tornado threat right now. However, uh, regardless, as it is approaching the Brinkley area, you need to move immediately to a safe place. Sometimes, as we have seen before, Barry, these storms have a, have a tendency, at least in the initial stages, to begin to cycle up. They'll, they'll strengthen for a while, and then they, their rotation may weaken a little bit, only to get into a much more rich environment and uh, get kind of fueled once again. So uh, this tornado warning is in effect here for um, Prairie County, northwestern Monroe County, and Woodruff County until 545. Areas like Brinkley are in the path of the storm, as well as Bisco, Duvall's Bluff, uh, Mill Lake, and uh, Fargo, and Mayberry eventually. All right, there are several other warnings in addition to that one. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to our VRAD and uh, to the north of Pine Bluff, just around Whitehall there. You've had the large hail, and it looks like that is the tail end, a little rotation there, uh, very near Whitehall, just to the northwest of Pine Bluff, in that notched area there uh, between Jefferson and Pine Bluff in the Whitehall area. So uh, this is U.S. 79. Uh, State Highway 15 right there, and that's the one that's moving northeast. It will track, it looks like, on the north side of Pine Bluff, maybe just missing Pine Bluff, uh, barely there, and then moving over to Alzheimer, Cheryl, Humphrey, over to Stuttgart and Elmira and DeWitt eventually, and then on down to the south of there is the storm that we haven't forgotten about. It's headed toward Ryzen. By the way, Barry, did have a report a little while ago of a funnel cloud near the campus near Pine Bluff uh, yeah. that came into us from our, our uh, production, producing Yeah, just to the north here. side, of, you know, on the north right. side of town. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the one in Ryzen, a uh, storm will be heading north of Ryzen, uh, but it looks like a large, potentially large tornado. It's really getting into, as Ned said, the, the most favored time of the day. We're talking about the five o'clock hour if you had to say the pinpoint best bullseye time it's between four and six and here we are right at five five fifteen uh, unconfirmed reports now of two inch hail in Ryzen. it looks like it might be north of Ryzen. that best that best opportunity for hail right now and that is large hail and it looks like that is definitely a tornado uh, a possible tornado there so everybody in Kedron and Ryzen. Uh, all along uh, US 79 uh, there as this storm moves to the east. It is a large storm as all of these thunderstorms are large possible tornado producers. Any one of them uh, this afternoon, yeah, Barry, any everyone. one of these storms are definitely capable. I mean, look at all of the tornado warnings that we have going as Barry is moving up VRAD right now. This is uh, Hickory Ridge. Right there, a very pronounced notch with that storm too. Let me show you on our five live Doppler radars the active warnings that we've got going on right now. Uh, these are the two that are going to be now and will be affecting Jefferson County. So Jefferson County, you are actually under two tornado warnings. As we put the warnings on, I'll take the radar off, and you can see the one storm that is moving kind of toward the east out of the Ryzen area, moving north of Ryzen, uh, and that is could be moving toward or just north of the Star City area in Lincoln County, but don't get your guard down. Lincoln County, you are definitely under a tornado warning, and that's in 5 till 545. And also, uh, the uh, tornado warning that's in effect for Jefferson County continues to move in a direction that could take it towards Stuttgart. So those are two distinct warnings that we have going on for Jefferson County, and there are the two storms right now. Uh, one just north of the Pine Bluff area, and the other one that could be moving just south or near Pine Bluff. So person in Pine Bluff need to be very aware of changing weather conditions and also be aware of the possibility of some large hail with any one of these thunderstorms as they continue to move on toward the east. It looks like most of these, uh, Barry, are moving a little bit, uh, they're a little more right movers. They're moving to the uh, east, northeast, rather than northeast as they were earlier in the day. And that could be showing signs that the frontal boundary that's pushing in to uh, west central Arkansas may be picking up some speed and beginning to propel these systems a little more eastbound than northeastbound. Yeah, as, as these storms, and also a storm as it increases in rotation, it begins to move right of the path uh, that it's going. But you're right, the, the whole frontal boundary is moving down into central Arkansas. These are a little out in advance of it right now. But uh, nearing Ryzen, uh, that storm system, I'm going to go back in on that one. Uh, folks, this has really blown up here in the last uh, hour, hour and a half. 
It's just a sign that uh, what we feared would happen is, is actually happening. The possibility of large uh, storms with tornadoes moving toward Ryzen right now. And then on up uh, toward uh, Cheryl to the north of Pine Bluff, that little hook right there, uh, I would say that is a definite possibility of a tornado as it moves north of Pine Bluff, and that's Highway 79, State Route 15 right there, uh, US 79 as it moves over towards Stuttgart. Um, around Alzheimer, you're getting hail, Cheryl, hail, but the tail end of it, that little tail that's hanging down toward Pine Bluff, that's the area in question. So if you're along uh, Highway 79 there, please, please take cover with this storm. Now, it will continue to move off to the east, and that, uh, that tornado warning remains in effect over there. We haven't forgotten about the one to the east either as it moves into northern Monroe County. Uh, that that's one's out right of, over Brinkley right now, yeah, Barry. Yeah, and by really the way, that's, that tornado warning has been extended on into Cross and Lee in St. Francis County. So uh, the uh, storm that we're looking at right there, right along I-40, uh, that Barry was just showing you on VRAD, uh, has been extended, that tornado warning. That storm is right over Brinkley. We told people just about 10 minutes ago to begin to move in Brinkley. Now we want to tell everyone in Forest City to begin to move to a safe place immediately. The storm is located near Brinkley right now, possible tornado with that storm. And now until 6 o'clock, that storm has been extended and a brand new tornado warning has been issued on that storm. And we'll zoom out just a little bit to show you that uh, new warning that has been extended right into northern sections of Lee County and St. Francis County. And we can see clearly uh, that that warning uh, has been extended and remains in effect now until 6 o'clock. So all of these supercells in eastern Arkansas now are clearly showing signs of rotation and uh, we are looking at this storm here possibly moving pretty rapidly at about 55 miles an hour toward uh, the Forest City area. So I want to uh, again uh, get a track on that storm and uh, with that in mind it's moving the storm is moving east northeast generally right along interstate 40. Uh, so Forest City is definitely in the path of that storm. It shows you where the storm is near uh, Brinkley right now and uh, areas like uh, Casey, Wheatley in the path of the storm, uh, 521 at Posey on after that uh, into the Forest City area, uh, Refrain at 539. So again, uh, Ned, I think, I, I don't mean to interrupt, uh, but I think if you're in Brinkley, you've got to take cover right now. Apparently, there is a tornado there, uh, a, a very pronounced notch right there, and I think you're probably sh seeing it on your five live Dopplers, but here's the VRAD indication uh, near Fredonia and then on up into Brinkley. Uh, uh, kind of two little definite notches there, but uh, this, is a, this is a dangerous storm as it moves along I-40, and I, I, again, I, I think any of these storms you've got to be very, uh, very wary of. But uh, this one, it looks especially uh, dangerous right now, and the ones on down to the south. Uh, sorry to interrupt there. No, 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 no. You know, whenever this is happening. We're both looking at the same storm, Absolutely. so that was good. Yeah. yeah. And what we do uh, from time to time, we just look at the most dangerous storms and the most dangerous yeah. warnings that we have going sure. on. Uh, and not to uh, discount Pine Bluff or uh, in the uh, 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 Lincoln County area, but uh, we're going to be watching all of these storms because right now they are definitely showing signs of uh, rotating within this uh, area. And that's the storm that Barry was just talking about over Brinkley right now. Uh, and uh, we are showing a definite tornado signature with that storm near the Brinkley area. So Brinkley, Wheatley, Nash Corner, Hopper, Blossom, Brinkley, you need to take cover immediately within, within that storm. And this storm is eventually going to move on into northern Lee County and St. Francis County uh, within the next little bit. Looking at the attributes with that storm, there is a good chance that this is a tornado on the ground with that storm as it continues to track on toward the east or just just slightly north of due east I think Barry is mm -hmm. what we've got going on but again those are the locations that we have and then back a little bit farther to the west near Dagmar Allendale uh, Bayless Brinkley Edmonds so there may actually be a couple of areas within that storm that we are looking at rotation and uh, this one here back to the uh, western flank and not looking too too good as far as rotation but we're definitely getting tornado vortex signatures on, on all of uh, areas of that storm. Hey, uh, back to the VRAD we go. And this storm down in northern Cleveland County, just to the north, barely north of Ryzen. In fact, it may go across the northern part of Ryzen. Uh, really doesn't look good at all to me. It looks like this could be a large rotation right there. We're seeing reds and greens together in this area north of Ryzen. 
And, uh, and folks, please, please take cover along Highway 79 there as this crosses over and it moves across the northern part of Cleveland County. That's the reflex, that's the, uh, the uh, velocities inside the storm. You know, we can see these hooks, but until we see the wind profile inside them, we don't always know exactly if they are tornado producers. I'd say this one is. Please take cover if you're from Ryzen northward in Cleveland County, and it will be moving over into Lincoln County too. And then in uh, just to the north of Pine Bluff, this also is Highway 79, but north of Pine Bluff near Sherrill, the hail is going on just uh, down to the south of there. Uh, a very pronounced rotation uh, moving toward Alzheimer and Wabasica and Umphrey, and that is all under a tornado warning. So, folks, as you as you see the storm come uh, close, if there's large hail near you, it's a great sign as well. But inside the storm, there is rotation, and it's very near Alzheimer right now, and you've got to take cover with these storms. Please don't go looking for them. Don't endanger yourself to try to get a picture or video. We can do that uh, later, but the, the primary uh, primary focus of us right now is just to, to keep you safe. They're fast-moving storms. These are going to be out of Arkansas in, in just a, an hour or two or two and a half hours or so, but uh, for right now, they're just not out of the state. We've got to deal with them, and we've got to take uh, cover as we head uh, to the one up around Brinkley, just to the west of Brinkley now. Hail in Brinkley looks to be sizable with this storm, and um, uh, this is, again, a lot of spotters are over there. I think most of these storms yeah. at least have golf ball size hail with them. Yeah. At least every time we've looked at it, it's an inch, an inch and a half, so it's very dangerous hail. Yeah. I've got this storm. I want to show you the one that Barry was talking about down near Rise and sections of Cleveland County moving toward uh, uh, Lincoln County and southern sections of Jefferson County. I'm going to show you the area of circulation is just north of Ryzen right now near Kendron, and it can show you the, the uh, proximity to it from the Pine Bluff area. The storm is really moving east, barely north of due east, so it looks like the brunt of this circulation may escape the Pine Bluff area. But regardless, uh, as we zoom in a little bit more, we can show you that uh, between Faith and Kendron, that uh, Snyder Road there, and we are also looking at Arkansas Highway 3. 33. These are areas if you live near or on uh, Conifer Trail or possibly uh, Middle Warren Road or uh, again Arkansas Highway 54. Any of these areas uh, and even a little bit farther south that is U.S. Highway 63 that runs through Randall and uh, across Highway 63 is Rogers Road and just north of there is Gun Club Road north of Randall and from there uh, just east of of uh, Kedron, that again is Arkansas Highway 63. So these are just a few of the highways and recognizable areas between Roan, Faith, Pangburn, and Eunice that could be in the path of that storm. And eventually that storm could be moving on into Star City and affect, uh, affecting areas like Grady. It looks like the brunt of the storm will stay north of the Star City area and move into northern sections of Lincoln County. And from there, the uh, storm that's just north of the Pine Bluff area near Sherrill. Uh, we are showing still signs of rotation with that storm. Uh, again, this storm near Alzheimer in the path of that tornado could possibly be moving towards Stuttgart. It is moving at about uh, 55 miles per hour. So I'll zoom out just a little bit and try to get a little better track on that storm. Moving at about 55 miles per hour. That storm could be moving, of course, through the uh, Pine Bluff, I mean the uh, Stuttgart area, uh, and on into uh, Tumberland, Humphrey, Coy, Allport, Humnoke, Goldman at 533, possibly North Stuttgart at 538, so again at 537 at Stuttgart. So again, it's a very fast-moving storm. So we have two yeah. storms uh, two storms that we are looking at, this one in northern Jefferson County right here, and the other one just south of Pine Bluff. Looks like it's going to be moving more to the east and uh, could move right along southern Jefferson County line and into northern sections of uh, Lincoln County and just to the north of of the uh, Star City area. From this point, this very dangerous storm, and I want you to take a, another look at this one, Barry, on mm -hmm. the VRAD, and this is the one that's near Brinkley. This is the one that we've both been uh, kind of worried about, and uh, that's the storm right now that's moving toward New Salem and uh, just south of Cotton Plant in northern sections of Monroe County. Yeah, this one is, uh, that notch is moving toward Brinkley right now, hailed to the size of one inch around Brinkley. 
uh, one mile north of Brinkley there. Uh, we're, we're looking, uh, we have some spotters over in that area. Paul Comstock is over there, and uh, we're going to be looking at, at him, uh, or Bart Comstock, uh, rather, uh, looking at that video, and he is just... He, he, the cell phone service, I think the cell phone service is just uh, poor over there. But, yeah, we're, we're seeing over around Brinkley definitely an area that is of concern. That's where a lot of the uh, storm spotters are as it moves along I-40. And then also, uh, I, I just want to give you an overview. Sometimes we kind of lose perspective. But look at all the tornado warnings. They're east of the Little Rock area, east of Saline and Faulkner County, east of uh, White County right now, over into eastern Arkansas. And we really thought this would be the most likely area, and we thought it would be late afternoon and and lo and behold, this is all coming true, unfortunately, because all of these are supercell storms. When you see them out by themselves like that, it's never a good sign, folks. With 90 degrees out in front of it, lots of humidity, and uh, these storms then all out by themselves, it's, it's, uh, it's sad to see them. But we continue to watch them because they are such obvious, in some cases, uh, tornado producers. A lot of rotation there just to the northwest of Ryzen. If you're in Ryzen... Go ahead and get to that lowest spot in your house. If you have a storm cellar, I'd say go ahead and do that from just north of Ryzen along Highway 79 up to Kedron uh, and up into Faith, which is in southern Jefferson County. Then on up we go. Still Alzheimer. Uh, some rotation was reported around there. Or, yeah, around Alzheimer uh, earlier on. And uh, we'll put this one into motion. You can see the movement is just uh, you know, east-northeast, really. And Alzheimer, it is approaching you right now there it is right there and that little notch is right on top of you so take cover uh, even as we speak and Wabasika, go ahead and do that as well cheryl you're north of the rotation center but you're in the big hail center and it continues to to move off to the east at a rapid clip and then that storm that we're talking about over around brinkley fargo little community of fargo ned north of brinkley i'd say large hail right now that's a hail core and tremendous downpours of rainfall. And we'll go to the velocity mode on that, and you can definitely see rotation around that uh, as well. The small, around small amount. But uh, we are under the impression, most of these are now moving into far eastern Arkansas, and we'll be watching these all the way through eastern Arkansas yeah. until they move across the river and on into uh, Mississippi and Tennessee. Uh, however, they are going to get ready to drop part of the watch. The uh, sure. tornado watch is going to be dropped behind this line mm -hmm. very shortly. Uh, we do have a tornado warning warning that I want to mention to you about, and this is the one, again, for uh, southeastern Craighead and Poinsett County. It's moved north of Cross County right now, but still we are looking at that storm with the uh, center of rotation near Brushy Lake right now, and this could be affecting Harrisburg and Stewart. So we do have uh, southwest of the Harrisburg area by about 15 miles southwest of Harrisburg. Uh, we have a brand new tornado warning that's going to remain in effect until 6 o'clock. So this with this is the center of circulation near Brushy Lake and uh, this storm right here is moving uh, toward the uh, northeast and is only right now about 10 miles from Harrisburg. So again, people in Harrisburg, people in Stewart, uh, you need to move to a safe place. It's only about 12 miles from Stewart right now. And so we will go ahead and zoom out a little bit on this storm, but uh, air southeastern part of the state. Uh, back to the VRAD we go until that time and there is still that signature uh, if we can come in on our VRAD radar. Well, thanks, guys. And there we go. Uh, Terry down to Yorktown along Highway 425. If there is a tornado, it is right there. And Grady, it is moving right for you. And now is the time, not later, to go ahead and uh, get into that lowest spot in your house. Put the plan into action of where you would go. If you live in a mobile home, you might uh, want to move to a next-door neighbor or somebody that has a wood frame house. It, it might be a good idea, but don't put yourself in danger of going out if uh, the storm is uh, imminent in your area. So that is the area that is uh, very likely a tornado uh, on the ground. Uh, northern Lincoln County as it moves right across the northern part of Lincoln County. And we'll uh, back out just a little bit more. And there's the one that's near Almira, a little notch there, not quite as pronounced maybe as it was, and very near Forest City, Ned, uh, as you showed just a little bit earlier along 40, maybe just south. We have a brand new warning for that one too, Barry. It okay, extended. it's extended, it's yes. It's extended a little farther toward the east until 645. Um, that is a brand new tornado warning that's in effect. Now it covers western Crittenden County, so it's still coming across St. Francis 
Manassas County near Forest City right now. Very strong storm. It's going to continue into southeastern Cross and western Crittenden County, and uh, we'll be continuing to watch it. That storm has really been moving right along Interstate 40 uh, over the last several minutes. Uh, at this time, we are going to take just a short break to join our 6 o'clock newscast, but we are going to open our newscast, and we'll be right back with you. We have a number of uh, strong storms, rotating storms with history of tornado uh, tornado activity today, and we'll be right back. Uh, so join us in just a second. We'll be right back. From KATV, this is Channel 7 News at 6. Hi, everyone. I'm meteorologist Ned Permy, along with meteorologist Barry Brand, meteorologist uh, Michelle Rupp and meteorologist Todd Jacoby. We are all That's here right. this afternoon. We've been here for several hours. If you are just joining us, we have had a very uh, significant uh, severe weather day. We've expected it for a couple of days. Right. The same storm system that produced violent tornadoes in Oklahoma yesterday continue to uh, produce violent and large tornadoes in Arkansas. The only good news that we have right now is uh, we don't have any reports of any major damage or injuries. A lot of these tornadoes have right. been uh, touching down uh, and forming in in uh, relatively rural farmland areas of east and northeastern Arkansas. So that's something yeah. that's very good Yeah, right that's now. the one good thing, Ned. But uh, we're seeing in Lincoln County, the a Grady officer, Grady police officer, is told a tornado on the ground at Tamo. That is a public report. Uh, right now, everyone taking cover. That doesn't surprise me because Not we've been all. tracking that storm. And uh, let's go ahead and go down there. First of all, I uh, do want to reiterate what Barry was just talking about before the break. And this is the storm here at Forest City that we're looking at at our five live dollars radars. A brand new tornado warning has been extended for this storm. We'll show you the warning. It extends now all the way into Crittenden County. There is the storm structure that you can see, and we'll remove that just briefly to show you the storm near Forest City. It's going to be moving toward Earl and Topaz and across southeastern sections of Cross County. So there is the storm. Uh, we have uh, that thunderstorm has had a history of producing tornadoes as well as large and damaging hail with it. Uh, from that point, we're going to go down to this other very strong storm, and this is the one that is now moving across southeastern sections of Jefferson County. As Barry mentioned, we do have a report of a tornado on the ground. I guess that that came from law enforcement, Barry, um, near Grady, and uh, that storm is moving east, generally east-northeast, at about 50 miles per hour. Uh, so we will go ahead and put another track on that storm because it is going to be moving into uh, Arkansas County uh, very, very soon uh, at about 50 miles an hour. So we're going to track the leading edge of the core of that storm and right in through here all the way into southeastern Jefferson County, moving at about 50 to 55 miles per hour. Areas like Lake Farms, Cummins, Douglas, Beermack, and Langford all in the path of that storm. And as that storm gets into the southern sections of Arkansas County, Burks at 620, Mayview at 620, Gillette at 626. Uh, in the path of that storm and Arkansas Post at 626. So that actually over the last thir uh, 30 minutes, Barry, has been one of the strongest storms that we have seen mm -hmm. and now has a history of a confirmed tornado with it near Grady. Yeah, on, on VRAD, uh, there's, there are several spots along that storm line that I think there is an indication of a, of a uh, tornado. And we'll zoom in just a little bit closer. And there's one now north of Glendale. And uh, if we go into velocity mode, there is a, a strong wind coming toward the radar site there, a bright green color and wind flowing away. So north of Glendale, and that will be another area maybe just to the south of where that last potential tornado was, likely tornado was, between Terry and Yorktown and near Grady. But this is now another formation back on the, on the uh, tail end of that storm, uh, north of Glendale, that will move, it looks like, just to the north of Star City. So there are several areas along there, several notches within that uh, that storm that are very active right now and even one south of Kedron uh, where earlier that storm went along through it. Look at the look at the size of the area where there is likely hail and the heavy rain to the north of all those rotation centers but uh, this is unbelievable how much rotation there is in the atmosphere. I mean if there ever was a time that this atmosphere was was fueled and, and it was in eastern Arkansas with temperatures in the 90s and with dew points in the low 70s just a ton of moisture, a ton of wind up aloft and at the surface, and it's just a, well, it's just a, 
an unfortunate uh, set of circumstances that have all kind of come together there. We're seeing all up and down our line here, those thunderstorms. I'm going to back out a little bit and again show you that it is eastern Arkansas now that is under the gun, eastern and southeastern Arkansas, while Little Rock, Saline County, Faulkner County, uh, the storms are past you, and that is some good news. But, uh, Ned, the strongest stuff, again, coming uh, from Lincoln County, and it just seems to kind of be reforming and reforming. Uh, the uh, storm near Grady, I'm getting a 10 on that storm. Yeah. Uh, 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 that's a pretty, that's tornado likely, really. Uh, and, of course, we've just had a confirmation of the tornado on the ground. And that's from our shear system here, our tornado index shear system. You can see that storm in Grady or near Grady right there on your screen. We are looking at a 10 on that of our scale from 1 up to 11 or more. Uh, so we are right at the threshold of tornado likely with there with that storm system. Uh, again, as Barry mentioned, that's in a very elongated storm. And look at the uh, hail that we're looking at with that storm, almost mm -hmm. approaching two inches there near Grady, 1.7 inches all along that uh, storm's length. So we are looking at a possibility of a prolonged hail event in uh, that storm as well. Uh, so that is something to be very, very concerned about with that storm. From that storm just to the north, we do have another tornado warning, and this is the storm coming east of Stuttgart again, and uh, this storm is going to be moving toward Indian Bay, Lawrenceville, and again in toward Phillips County. So I want to give everybody, as we take a look at the warning on this storm, it's just up to the western border of Phillips County right now, and uh, that is the actual warning on the storm uh, near Olina, uh, Mount Adams, and St. Charles. And uh, you'll have to bear with us sometimes these small communities. We don't talk, we don't uh, get to pronounce them all that often, so we're hoping we pronounce them most of these right, but you can see where that storm is, and that is moving into Phillips County. So we do want to uh, tell everyone in Phillips County, including the Marvel area, and eventually all the way on into the Helena, West Helena area, that uh, you need to begin to take your safety precautions and begin to think about moving to a safe place. On our VRAD, I, I still want to show again uh, near Tamo near Terry and Yorktown, several uh, centers of circulation. It's very near Grady right now is that this latest scan now of a tornado. We've had reports of uh, a strong possibility of a tornado on the ground in that area. And it looks like there may be another circulation center back to the southwest of you near Yorktown, which is on Highway 425. All of these north of Star City right now. Earlier around Glendale, I saw another circulation center. It doesn't look as strong now, and that's good news. But don't let your guard down anywhere from Star City in Lincoln County northward. That isn't, these are areas that will be uh, uh, potential areas affected by tornadoes. I think the strongest inflow, Ned, is to that one northeast of Grady. And that's, and that's the one that continues to show those bright greens. And looking, uh, what you're seeing here is not precipitation. It's showing wind. It's showing velocity toward the radar scope and away from the radar scope, those bright reds, all within a very small area. We call that a couplet, and that just means that there's rotation there, and there's the notch that you see around that area. And we have with that a confirmation of tornado from law enforcement yes, anyway yes. with that. So it is in the area of Grady. So anywhere east of that area, as Barry's been talking about, need to move on into a safe place anywhere in uh, northern sections of Lincoln or southern sections of Arkansas County for sure. On our five live Doppler radars, want to talk again about this storm that is moving uh, in the air vicinity of Forest City in St. Francis County. The city, this uh, storm is going to be tracking at about 50 to 55 miles an hour. All of these storms have been moving very rapidly uh, throughout the day today, and uh, this storm near Forest City is going to be moving into southern sections of Crittenden County uh, and central sections of Crittenden County, as well as southern sections of Cross County uh, as it continues to move on toward the east. So we will get a uh, track on that storm. Uh, this is the one near Forest City. It's had a tornado history with it, so it's moving at about 50 to 55 miles an hour along Interstate 40. Uh, Hicks Station. Clark's Corner, uh, Blackfish, New Home, uh, 
Whitmore, and eventually it's going to be moving on to the West Memphis area. Uh, so again, that is a very strong system there. We are looking at some uh, large hail with that storm. Actually, a lot of these storms are showing large hail with it, but the, the strongest hail is with the strongest storm that we've got right now, and a tornado on the ground near Grady. As you can see, the storm up here in Forest City uh, has hail uh, that we're looking at about a little over two inches in diameter. Uh, that's the one near Forest City, 1.3 inches there. The storm out of Stuttgart in northern sections of Arkansas County, tracking to southern Monroe County, possibly near Clarendon, eventually moving toward Lexa, and northern sections of Phillips County near Marvel has about inch hail with it. But look at the storm in northern Lincoln County, almost two inch diameter hail with that one, Barry. Uh, so that is the strongest one, and you're seeing some of the strongest rotation with that storm at the present time. Yeah, uh, it, it continues to impress. And uh, the, on VRAD, if you look at that, north of Grady, it shows the most pronounced circulation going across. And we're getting reports from the Grady Police Department that, yes, a tornado went across the northern part of Grady. So just on the north side of, the, of that town, uh, in the north part of that city, no reports on damage or not right there, but they just reported it in. Also up in New uh, 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 Energy substa Entergy Substation fire in Newport, a quarter of a mile from downtown, still on fire. Probable lightning strike with that. Substation continues to function normally, though. Even with the fire burning, it has a backup system that allows it to function. So there's been a lightning, there's been hail, and then, of course, the reports of tornadoes there. Also, uh, just checking in, we've gotten a, a tweet here that says the correct pronunciation of T-A-M-O is TAMO. TAMO. TAMO down north of Grady there. So, uh, again, we don't uh, sometimes know, but thanks to our Twitter followers that uh, tell us about that. It is the storm in Lincoln County that is really a of concern. There is some uh, rotation around Yorktown, even a little around Glendale. Star City, don't let your guard down. You're still in the warning. But the one northeast of Grady now is the one that I think has been confirmed as one that has had a tornado on the ground. It's moving now into that corner of Jefferson County. It sticks way down there along the river and then heads to over toward uh, Gillette later on. But several places along this, this line in Lincoln County uh, getting those notches in there which indicates rotation in the storm. And any of those could be tornado producers right now. It's uh, north of 425, or north of Star City on 425, and then along Highway 65. Likely just east of Highway 65, on, of, uh, east of Grady there, as this storm continues to move off to the east. And there's the movement of it. There's the latest frame. And I think a number of these, as, as we start to see what has, uh, has happened, will have been tornado producers by, by the end of tonight, Ned, because there's just so much rotation in the atmosphere and heat and humidity. A good portion of these storms, we take a look at our five live Dopplers, are just going to kind of give you an overview of what we've got going on. This is uh, just over the last hour uh, that we have had uh, movement on these storms, um, and uh, they are moving uh, in a direction that should take them across the Mississippi River, I think, within the next uh, hour to 90 minutes. Mainly, uh, maybe the storms in southeastern Arkansas so it may take a little bit longer than that. But what I want to show you as we zoom in a little bit more here on these storms, uh, I want to show you the all of the tornado warnings that we've got going on on these storms right now. So these are the storms where they are. We'll put them, uh, stop the motion on them at the latest frame, and we will uh, take the uh, radar data off, and we'll show you all of those are tornado warnings, active tornado warnings that are going on right now, including the ones that are moving through Lincoln County into southern sections of Arkansas County, northern Arkansas, moving toward Phillips County. And again, with that Phillips County storm, I do want to uh, let you know that uh, that storm is going to be moving possibly toward Marvel and uh, also the Helena, West Helena area very shortly. Uh, so we will put uh, the radar data back on again. And you can see uh, one of the problems with all of these storms is they have been uh, individualized all day. They've had enough energy on their own, enough wind energy, enough heat and humidity uh, to keep going, plus the circulation of low pressure over southern Missouri has just brought a tremendous amount of vorticity or spin to the atmosphere. So each one of these uh, uh, supercells has been real problematic, and we've had numerous reports of damage and injuries uh, with all of these storms that's moved through. But we can see this one right here, uh, very strong storm there, another one with tornado warnings out for them. Uh, and uh, this one right here will be approaching the West Memphis area and in northeastern Arkansas. That one is moving 
moving toward Dyersburg, Tennessee. And uh, so it is pretty much out of the viewing area, as will a lot of these be, hopefully within the uh, next hour or so. And I'm going to take the warnings off right now. I just wanted to give you a perspective and put it back into motion just quickly and show you uh, that uh, these storms are pretty much right now moving due east or northeast at between 50 and 65 miles an hour. Most of them, as we zoom in, are getting pretty close to the Mississippi River. Uh, we can show you that uh, this storm here between Earl and Forest City is really only right now about 18 miles from the Memphis area. This storm here, I've been warning everyone in the Marvel and Helena area, this storm that is coming out of northern Lincoln County. And by the way, I'm joined right now by meteorologist Todd Jacobian, who is on our VRAD radar. And uh, this storm, Todd, uh, I, you've been kind of doing some behind the scenes work, but this storm here that we've been looking at uh, coming out of northern sections of Lincoln County has uh, been the strongest storm that we have been watching. And that's the storm that has had a tornado uh, reported by the uh, uh, by law enforcement near Grady. And we're also still seeing with that storm some very, very uh, large hail with that. But that storm there uh, is moving toward Gillette. It's this storm right here that's still in northern Lincoln County, moving at about 50 near Grady. And you see that dark area that we're looking at in this area right here. Uh, that there could be a possible tornado as well as this area right there in black. You can see near Grady could contain some very, very large hail. Last scan I had on the hail with that, Todd, was almost two inches in diameter. Yeah, and I'm watching that as well. I've been, I've been looking at this thunderstorm and we we're getting reports of a very, very large hail coming out of this, which, if you remember, the same place got hit just about a month ago with extremely large hail, destructive hail. Uh, but I got a new circulation center and uh, that it appears something, again, just to the south of Grady. We had one up here towards the northeast. It looks like some circulation is developing here uh, just to the east-northeast of Star City. In fact, we're now got a, a marker here right along Highway 11 as it moves between Gould and Grady, which is Highway 65. But there appears to be a strengthening area of circulation right now as that moves just south of Grady and up to, uh, between Grady and Gould again on 65. Put this, uh, again, look at that rotation beginning to Titan. This may be uh, cycling right here. We had one up here that's northeast, I've, but there's another one. I've got my scope on it too, Todd, and Take it's a look exactly at where you're talking about. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing the same thing on five live Doppler radars. We just take it quickly, and then I want to go back to VRAD, because uh, I just want to show you that we are both on our, both, both our radars are looking at the same thing. You can see how the reds and the greens are just very yeah. bright right there at Grady. Uh, that is showing where the center of the storm is and the possible tornado. So it's right there. It looks like just south of the Grady area is uh, where that uh, possible tornado is in this area right here near Grady. So it's going to continue to track into northern Lincoln County and eventually Gillette, Arkansas County is in the path of that storm, Todd. That's right. And, and, and again, large hail is a huge problem with this. We've had reports of tornadoes uh, and, and backing out just a little bit. We want to keep everybody warned in Arkansas County uh, in areas towards the east towards Crockett's Bluff. Uh, this again, a, do a Doppler radar indicated tornado, and this will be moving towards Marvel uh, over the next hour, less, less than an hour. And then you got the other uh, thunderstorm that's uh, possibly producing a tornado. I've been watching some storm chasers, haven't seen anything dropping out of the clouds there. Uh, but east of Forest City, and that's riding up Interstate 40, that's going to be affecting Memphis and out of the Channel 7 viewing area. But boy, it's a southern storm that just don't, doesn't want to quit, Ned. It's it's so strong, and it continues to, um, to put in, uh, show strong, uh, rotation and it's moving on towards Gould. We, we're going to urge everybody again. This is the, this is uh, the Channel 7 viewing area. We want you to take your tornado precautions right now. Play this safe and put as many walls between you and the outside. Uh, I also want to do, Todd. I want you to keep an eye on these storms south of southwest of the Star City storm, because we have some development that has oh, yeah. not been with us earlier. But down around Camden, uh, northern sections of Calhoun County, yep. uh, we are seeing some strong storms developing down there, and we are watching them for you. Uh, as a matter of fact, we do have severe thunderstorm warnings on that storm in northern Calhoun County coming out of northeastern Washita County. It is not tornadic at the present time. However, it is going to, like all of them, move into an environment that could be very conducive for that storm there in northern Calhoun County to move into Cleveland County and uh, begin to uh, become a rotating storm. It's not right now. However, the storm that we are looking at in Star City definitely is, or north of Star 
Star City near Grady. Tornado on the ground in the vicinity of Grady, Arkansas, moving into northern Lincoln County. This storm is approaching Gillette. We want to remind everyone in Gillette to move to a safe place as soon as you can. That storm is moving your way and uh, moving at about 50 miles an hour into northern sections or southern sections of uh, of Arkansas County. So Gillette by about 6.30, it's now 5.17. You've only got about 10 minutes or so to get to a safe place, and that storm will continue to track into southern Phillips County as well. But people in Farley Lake, Douglas, Gillette, Manor View, and Tishner, Arkansas at 6.38 need to move to a safe place. Shepherd Point at 6.44. Jacks Bay Landing, Tishner, as I mentioned, at 6.38. And uh, Prairie Landing at 6.44 with that storm. From there, we can go continually on on up into the storm that has moved through the Stuttgart area. Stuttgart, I'm happy to say right now, you are pretty much in the clear as far as uh, um, uh, that, that thunderstorm. It's moved east of you. Uh, we do have a uh, brand new severe thunderstorm warning for Lee and Northern Phillips County. So uh, Todd, there's a possibility uh, that uh, that storm in Lee, uh, that is in St. Francis County right now, that's moving through Lee and Phillips County, may be showing signs of weakening, but I don't know right now. It's between Forest City and Earl, and it continues to move on toward the east. There still is an oh. active uh, severe thunderstorm warning in effect yeah. for this storm. However, as it continues its eastward movement, the Memphis Office of the National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for that storm uh, located uh, west of Watkins Corner or south of Holly Grove, moving northeast at about 50 miles per hour. Let me give you some more reports. We're just now getting in. Funnel cloud reported one mile north of Elmira in, in Arkansas County. Uh, one and a three-quarter inch size hail in Terry and Lincoln County. And I've got other areas, Ned, on the radar here that's showing signs of rotation with no tornado warnings in effect right now. But I think, you know, Fordyce, I see rotation just south of town. So New Edinburgh, uh, uh, that's on Highway 8, New Edinburgh, I want you to go ahead and get to your safe place. You're not under a tornado warning right now, but I see something trying to spin up just south of Fordyce, and I want you to get to your safe place immediately. Uh, further towards, uh, let me go back up here, towards Ryzen, I'm now starting to see significant rotation just east of Ryzen. No tornado warning on this right now, but I'm afraid that there may be one. So I want everybody in Glendale to just be just be cautious with this. Let's get you to your safe place. But it looks like something may be trying to spin up just to the east of Ryzen, and we want you to go ahead and take your tornado precautions immediately. Further towards the east, where we do have rotation, it is now crossing over Highway 65. Tornado warning in effect. This is going to pass just a couple of miles to the southeast of the community of uh, Grady, but stay north of Gould. But this is showing significant significant rotation, and if it continues, it will cross Highway 165 in and around Gillette in Arkansas County. Gillette, you are not under a tornado warning, as well as Tishner, but I would fully expect you to be put under one as it continues to show signs of regaining its strength. But again, two more areas of rotation, one just east of Ryzen, another one just south of Fordyce. Uh, no tornado warnings in effect. There are severe thunderstorm warnings in effect, but uh, and apparently it is not enough at this point in time for the National Weather Service to put a, a tornado warning in effect, but I just want well, to what, what happens also is they're looking at the volume scans, and they may see some rotation aloft, but uh, possibly not transferring far enough south to the surface to warrant a, uh, a tornado warning, although that, there's that a, may be it. So a we'll, tornado warning so now for Cleveland, Jefferson, and Lincoln County, and I think that's just a... That's just with the one, we'll get the particulars on that. That's with the one that we're tracking that's going uh, in and around the uh, Grady uh, area at south of Gould. Uh, but I, I, yeah, there's 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 rotation definitely in and around Fordyce right now and Ryzen. And, and I, you know, if you're under severe thunderstorm warnings, let's just play this safe and sorry. There doesn't need to be an official warning to say, get to your safe place, and there's no harm done in doing that. Well, that's the storm yeah. that you yeah. kind of had a hint on, and it uh, has did, okay, produced did. a tornado warning. There it is, tornado and, warning. Yeah, that is the storm. It's uh, looking at the radar. It is about... Uh, 
two miles east of Ryzen, Todd, and that's uh, the one that you've got the track yep. on, and that is the uh, tornado warning that's in effect. So this is a brand new tornado warning. These storms seem to be propagating a little bit farther into south central Arkansas right now. We're even getting some beginning to fire up southeast of El Dorado at this time on our five live Doppler radars. Uh, this storm here located just to the south of Ryzen uh, by about two miles south of Ryzen or two miles north of Toledo. Uh, that storm in Cleveland County. So south central Jefferson County, west central Lincoln and northeastern Cleveland County under a uh, tornado warning for this storm here located just to the south of the Ryzen area. Uh, and we'll get a track on that storm as it continues. This one moving east at about 45 miles an hour. So this storm right here moving east at about 45 miles an hour will be tracking on into Lincoln County. So that's been a very active area down there from Grady and uh, uh, north of Star City and into Lincoln County. Uh, it looks like another possible tornado is moving your way. Calmer, uh, Glendale, Palmyra, Star City and Nebo with that storm, all in the path of that storm. It's located just to the uh, south of the Ryzen area, and it's going to continue to track on toward the uh, east at about 45 miles an hour. So right here, just south of uh, uh, Ryzen, brand new tornado warning, eastward tracking at about 45. So again, uh, Calmer at 635, Herbine and Glendale at 641. And beyond that, we are looking at Star City, possibly feeling the effects of this brand new storm moving in your way by about 706. It's now 623. So you have time to move to a safe place immediately. Palmyra at 642, Cornerville at 650. They just issued that tornado warning on that other cell I was watching heading towards south of Fordyce, heading towards New Edinburgh. Okay. And that does include portions of Drew County. All right, that's the one uh, right here near Fordyce. Yeah, if you see it on VRAD, that new one, it's, it's right along, right just right. north, they just issued that new tornado warning. Okay, and here it is, let's see. Yeah. Uh, it's south of Fordyce, heading towards New Edinburgh. New Edinburgh, take your tornado precautions now. Yeah, areas like Big Hill, it looks like it's going to pass north of Hampton in Calhoun County, uh, but possibly Fordyce, Mount Elba, Orlando, all in the path of that storm. This is in effect until 715. This is what Todd is looking at on his VRAD radar right now, showing a good sign of circulation there. I'm going to see if we can get, uh, if it has a... Uh tornado vortex signature on that storm, not yet uh, on that storm on my computer system, but uh, we will definitely keep a close eye on that. Uh, but we will put a track on that storm on our five live Doppler radars right now. It's this storm here just south of, of Fordyce. It's located uh, near Tri-County Lake or about five miles southeast of the uh, Fordyce area. And uh, again, uh, let's see, we'll get a track on this storm right in this area here. Um, and uh, track this storm out of Dallas County and move it eastbound at about 40 miles per hour. So it's going to be moving toward Kingsland, uh, New Edinburgh, uh, Hebron, and Mount Elba, as well as uh, um, Rye at 710 and Pansy at 653. So that again is another storm. These, uh, Todd, this whole area is look like these storms are not quite as isolated as they were. Uh, they're looking to be a little bit more hooked together as in, in the form of a line, but we definitely have a rotation within that line. And again, the strongest one that I'm still looking at is this one here in northeastern sections of Lincoln County. We're moving toward Gillette, yeah. and we've been telling people for the last several minutes in Gillette to move to a safe place. Uh, but we do have tornado warnings all along this line right now, and you can see the active warnings that are going on, and we'll move the radar picture there. And uh, so those storms, the one Todd mentioned that was started uh, to develop in northeastern sections of Calhoun County, southeastern uh, Dallas County near uh, Fordyce is now going to be on track to move into northern sections or southern sections of Cleveland County and possibly sco scooting right through uh, northern sections of uh, the uh, Bradley County area. Let me show you here on our, my radar over here, Ned. The circulation, the rotation is very strong heading towards Gillette. I, I cannot urge you enough right now, as this is past over 165, it's going into southern Arkansas County. Gillette and Tishner, you need, please, we urge you to get to your safe place. When we see this type of couplet on radar, 
we know that there's uh, more than likely a wall cloud. There's, there's a wall cloud. There could be a funnel or a tornado with this. Again, that is a tornado heading, a possible tornado heading towards Gillette. And again, east of Ryzen, heading towards Glendale, Yorktown, and Terry, you just got pounded by enormous hail. You're about to get the, uh, another storm. You've already got one coming in, and it's another supercell thunderstorm that has rotation and a tornado warning on it. New Edinburgh, you need to be in your safe place immediately with yet another supercell. Ford ice, heavy rain, hail just to the east of town, moving up towards Kingsland. But there's rotation significant just on the southeast side of Fordyce. And this is going to pass very close to New Edinburgh as it crosses over Highway 8, kind of parallels it and then crosses over it between Kingsland and New Edinburgh and moves on off towards the east. So those are three uh, supercells. I'll put them all into motion, and you can see their eastward movement, and there's more building towards the south that are not tornadic right now. However, they could be, and they would affect areas of uh, Bradley County and maybe even to Drew County as these thunderstorms develop and push on off towards the east. So Monticello, these storms to the north will not affect you. It's the ones a little bit west of you towards Bearden, Fordyce, and Hampton that are going to sweep across. We're just trying to give people in and around the Gillette Mayview area uh, uh, kind of an indication of where we're looking at. Pipkin Road right there, a little farther north along U.S. Highway 65 up to Mayview. That is Lester Road, and a little bit farther north and south is Gardner Road, and south of that is uh, Gardner Street Road. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I do, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to show you this on, on our volumetric radar on that computer. We have a, a very, uh, you're not going to be able to see it there, and I'm trying to get this all the way to the top. I, um, I'm not sure. It's a very significant lowering, and it, it's possibly producing a tornado. This is near, four, just east of Forest City near Hughes. I'm not going to be able to get it all the way to the top. It's just not going to, this computer's not going to allow me to do it. But I'm watching it, and uh, it appears that there's a, a funnel on this, and uh, just to let, if you know anybody in Hughes, you need to tell them to take their tornado precaution up towards West Memphis because I'm looking live right now at a storm with a significant wall cloud and a possible tornado. We're getting some unconfirmed reports of a tornado out of this, Ned. Uh, we have a new warning in effect for southeastern Jefferson County. Uh, that storm uh, for southeastern Jefferson, uh, southeastern Arkansas County. Um, and that is, again, this storm here that we're looking at. Uh, that is tracking through, uh, it's located actually about 18 miles northeast of Star City right now. So it's this storm, we have it's had a history of producing tornado, and uh, we have a brand new warning on this storm. It's the one approaching uh, Gillette. Uh, it is located uh, two miles uh, southwest of Douglas, 18 miles northeast of Star City. That's the storm moving out of Grady. So we have a brand new tornado warning for this storm. Uh, in addition to the tornado, this storm here, as we can see on our uh, tr tracking device here, we've got large hail up to baseball size uh, with that. You see that black area on the five live Doppler radars that we're looking at just to the northeast of Grady approaching Gillette. That is some extremely large hail that we're looking at with that storm. And uh, look at this here. Uh, we'll get an ID on this. That's the same storm that we're looking at. Two and a half inch hail with that storm. Uh, and uh, that's the storm that's approaching the uh, Grady area. And so we have a brand new tornado warning until 715 uh, with that storm. Uh, so areas like uh, Stimson, Michelville, Lorraine, Langford, Gould, all in the path of that storm. We'll zoom out just a little bit because the storm is moving pretty fast at, uh, well, it's actually sh slowed a little bit of the forward speed. We're now looking at about 35 miles an hour, but uh, on a track with that storm moving due east at about 35 miles an hour, it's going to be moving quickly into southern sections of um, uh, Phillips County as well. Uh, so Gillette at about 639, you just have a few more minutes to get to a safe place. We've been warning you for about 20, 30 minutes, it seems, as that storm has been moving through northern sections of Lincoln County. Mayview, uh, Prairie Union, and Tishner by about 649. So we have a brand new warning with that storm until about 715. Uh, I've noticed that with the thunderstorm now that is situated just to the east of Ryzen, I've noticed an increase, unfortunately, uh, in the circulation with this. See these greens and these reds? You know we've done so much tornado coverage. Most of everybody watching us is a meteorologist by now because you know that when you have the reds and the greens together like that, we call it a couplet, and that's where the winds are changing direction rapidly, and it's just west of Glendale, and I see that, and it's heading right towards Yorktown. It'll go over 425, so I want you to take get down Glendale, 
take cover Yorktown and any small community in between in southeastern Arkansas. There's significant rotation. You see an update. It doesn't quite have the strong uh, rotation that it just had, but it was it's still there. Trust me, and I want you to get into your safe place now. New Edinburgh, I hope you're there now as it goes over Highway 8 south of Kingsland. There is rotation within this thunderstorm. It's crossing over again Highway 8 in and around New Edinburgh, especially on the north side of town. I think, Rye, you're in the path of this up towards Cornerville. This is going to cross the highway of 15, uh, the intersection of 15 and 35. At some point within the next 30 minutes, it's going to cross that intersection. This right here, that's where we're seeing the spin on our Doppler radar pushing off towards the east. I think these are moving at about 35 or 40 miles per hour They've right now. slowed their forward speed. Todd, I'm getting a 12 on that storm yeah. southwest of Gillette. Tornado likely on our five live Doppler radars again. We're showing, this This is a system that we use to show shear within the storm. Uh, winds rotating uh, different altitudes from different directions. And uh, it gives us an indication by using our tornado index. And we are now looking at a 12 and that storm is approaching Gillette. Uh, so Gillette is definitely in the path of that storm. A 12 indicates tornado is likely uh, with that storm as we just looked at it. Anywhere between a 10 to a 12 is what we're looking at. And you just saw with that storm, two and a half inch hail is definitely possible within that storm uh, that, that we are looking at. And there's the storm, a bigger overview of it. Now, uh, this storm will also be tracking uh, not only across southern sections of uh, uh, Arkansas County, but this will be rapidly moving into uh, the uh, southern Phillips County area uh, and possibly uh, be approaching uh, the West Memphis area. Already in West Memphis, we do have a storm. This is a tornado producing thunderstorm already approaching the Helena, West Helena area. Uh, they have a, well, it's been downgraded that storm, Todd, to a severe thunderstorm warning there good from news. Marvel. So that is some very good news there. It's approaching Helena, West Helena. And uh, I will hopefully be, I'll be in Helena tomorrow, by the way. So I want to say hello to the my friends in Helena. We're going to be there for our Civil War series. and uh, But uh, from Marvel, that's the uh, strongest area within that storm structure, and uh, that is going to be moving uh, toward Helena, uh, West Helena, probably within the next few minutes. We will get a track on it. But the good news is it has decreased somewhat, and there is not a tornado warning on that storm right now. Uh, elsewhere, the storm that was really affecting Forest City has moved east along uh, I-40 and is now moving Moving into uh, the Memphis area or West Memphis area between Earl and West Memphis right now in Crittenden County. Uh, and that storm still, uh, as we look, uh, has a tornado warning on that storm. Uh, we can show you that that is at least uh, through Earl and Edmondson, and uh, that still has an active warning, and that from the National Weather Service office in the Memphis area. And uh, so that's the warning that we have. And then right now, I think, Todd, for the next probably hour or so, we're really going to have to be dealing with these storms here that are kind of hanging back over uh, southeastern Arkansas from Hampton and Calhoun County all the way up uh, to DeWitt in Arkansas County along that line. And that is looking much more like a line uh, rather than isolated uh, severe or supercells or segments. I think it's becoming a little bit more of a line, but we do have those active tornado warnings that are in effect uh, all the way into sections of uh, Ar southern Arkansas and Phillips County. Um, and uh, probably approaching uh, northern sections of Drew County, the warning is in effect. Hey, um, I just want, let's go to my radar here. I'm just, I'm watching very carefully. You know, the storm that's in southern Arkansas County is just about to be intercepted by one of our storm chasers. Bart Comstock uh, is uh, on that storm. So we're going to have live video here soon, and we'll be able to tell you uh, whether or not there is a tornado for sure in southern Arkansas County. But uh, the, the two cells here that we're really keeping an eye on as well, besides the one moving, looks like a, a south, uh, along Gillette, near Gillette and just south. There's another one that's just north of New Edinburgh uh, that's moving up towards Cornersville. It's going to affect, uh, looks very, very, very close to Drew County, I think is where it's go going to go. Drew County, then uh, maybe even just south of Star City. And, and if it holds together, Dumas, uh, I want you to start thinking about your tornado safe place. Even though you're not under a tornado warning right now, I think that there's a possibility at least that if this holds together, uh, you're going to be affected by this thunderstorm. But very, very strong rotation east of Fordyce moving to the due east. This is a right moving thunderstorm. Further towards the south, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on these thunderstorms. They do have warnings on them, severe thunderstorm warnings back towards Camden. If history serves as a tool, these will begin to rotate. 
Uh, hopefully, the further south you go, the, the what we call shear decreases, but and that'll be the case. But we're um, definitely going to watch for the possibility for tornadoes across south uh, central and southeast Arkansas. I think this storm near Gillette is beginning to cycle again and, and maybe even strengthen. Gillette up towards Tishner, you need to take your uh, tornado precautions immediately. Gould, with this thunderstorm, you're in the clear, but you got another one. Uh, and this is heading up towards Star City, Yorktown, and uh, Terry. So this is the rotation near, just along and north of Glendale, Yorktown. I want you to be in your safe places. You just got pounded by heavy hail, hail not too long ago. And you're getting some more heavy hail uh, near Glendale towards Terry. And you've got now a Doppler radar indicated tornado just passing to the east and north of Glendale now. And it should be closing in on Yorktown probably within the next 10 minutes at the very most. So you need to be uh, taking your tornado precautions. And that will go up towards Grady. Uh, and you'll more than likely get put under a new tornado warning at that time. We now have a report now that um, West Memphis Airport Road, there's a funnel. So that again, that storm continues to put down, that's moving into the Memphis viewing area, but again, they continue to put down funnels and tornadoes as it crosses now into Tennessee. This is again, uh, a very dangerous situation that we're gonna stay with you. Southeastern Arkansas, we're gonna stay with you on this. Um, we're not going to leave you uh, high and dry here, that's for sure, with these uh, uh, tornadoes that are, are um, we're just, I'm trying to just look here at the latest information that these Doppler radar indicated tornadoes. I know you're very on, much on edge from Monticello towards Dumas. We're going to stay with you on this. Um, yeah, we're uh, watching that on Five Live Doppler's Todd. Five Live. And uh, over around uh, Memphis and West Memphis, there's certainly a large storm over there, and there's a tornado warning. And it's going to be moving across the Mississippi River in short order. And, uh, you know, not a moment too soon. Other strong storms over in eastern Arkansas, kind of all along that line, as Todd has been mentioning, in northern Phillips County, a severe thunderstorm warning as this storm moves toward uh, from Hicks over across the northern part of Phillips County towards West Helena. And then uh, around Gillette, there is that strong hail core right now. I mean, this is some, uh, yeah. some large hail. And the tornado warning is in effect for uh, that part of the world, too. Uh, near Grady, uh, another storm moving through your area. And all along that line that Todd talked about, from Star City and Plantersville and Yorktown, all the way down into southern Cleveland County, uh, along that storm line, uh, we are really worried about the storms as well. You can see the, the focus of the storms now, southeast Arkansas, east central Arkansas, you're going to be done with the storms very quickly. Up in northwest Arkansas, there are actually a few thunder, thunderstorms. Those are rotating around the main upper level low, which is now just up to the north of the state. Uh, but that storm uh, continues to uh, move. Uh, those storms move into northwest Arkansas. Those are not severe thunderstorms right now at all. We'll continue to watch them, but they'll be moving across the northern part of our state uh, later on tonight. But for right now, <clears throat> our attention, pardon me, uh, just continues to be uh, down in the southern part of Cleveland County from Fordyce, uh, south of Risen this time, headed over to Plantersville. And then up into Star City, the Star City area. Looks like a little bit of a notch there, Todd. What's that showing on our VRAD uh, it's, uh, around? It's moving up towards Yorktown, it's still there, but that rotation there, Barry, is significant, but it's not as strong as what's to the just, just to the southwest as it's now. Yeah. Uh, getting ready to close, for, like I, I have told you, I think it's going to cross right over where 15 and 35 come, to uh, come together, uh, right along that intersection, move up towards Cornerville, maybe even up towards Star City. I'm sorry, South Arkansas, uh, Southeast Arkansas. I really wish we'd get these out of here, but it, it just seems like these are uh, these are these are continue to want to spin. Just getting good news. The tornado watch is now going to be canceled even further uh, in north and west. So Little Rock, I think we can pretty much sound the all clear. It's just the southeastern corner of the state uh, that, that's under the gun and continues to be so. Uh, near Gillette, very large hail with a possible tornado just to the south of town. Uh, Doppel radar indicated tornado and it's moving up towards Tishner. So this is some broad rotation. And there it is. It's 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 uh, on the south side of Gillette, heading up towards Tishner. Be in your safe place right now. Mm -hmm. We have no reports that there's anything on the ground. And um, if you, uh, this is not going to look pretty on television, I'll tell you that. But I'm going to look right now. We got Bart Comstock, our storm chaser. There it is. Yeah, he's on that storm right now, and he's driving down the road. I'm keeping an eye on his speed, but um, he's just in some very heavy rainfall. But he's probably within about uh, 10 miles or so, and I'm going to continue to follow that for you folks in southern Arkansas County. Um, 
We, uh, again, have no confirmation that anything is on the ground with any of these tornado warnings. Uh, but at any given moment, these could produce tornadoes. And that's why we're going to stay with you. And uh, we're not going to leave you southeast Arkansas. Yeah, the hail is unbelievable with these. On our five live Doppler radars, we'll go back. But look at that right there along the... Uh, along the White River down in southern Arkansas County, uh, kind of where uh, Lincoln, where Jefferson and uh, uh, Arkansas County all come together. Two and a half inch diameter hail. We've seen just tremendous hail with these storms today. Uh, on the to the north of the circulation centers and down to the south of there is where you would uh, generally expect to see the rotation but just some unbelievable hail moving toward Gillette if you don't have your car in already you need to get it in there very quickly but don't endanger yourself doing so and then around Star City also some tremendous hail uh, uh, inch and seven tenths in diameter so coming up on golf ball size hail there and down into southern Cleveland County also 1.6 inch in diameter hail uh, there. So these storms are large. They're supercell uh, possible tornado producers, but supercell thunderstorms, and they go very high in the atmosphere, and it's very cold in those northern reaches of the atmosphere, or those upper reaches, rather, of the atmosphere, and that's why the hail is so easily formed there, and uh, there's just such a, a inflow into these storms. There's upward motion that lifts these hailstones up there and causes them to get so large. So that is the area that we're looking at and on our five live Dopplers. You can also see the, uh, the tremendous uh, notches there, the possible areas of rotation all along that line. And we're going to continue to monitor those until about 7.15. Most of those warnings are in effect. But uh, for a while anyway, uh, we're just going to go in a little bit tighter. Places like Star City, it's a little bit too tight. And Lincoln County continues to get hit over and over and over by these very, very strong storms. <coughs> Let's go to that right now. And uh, okay. we're, again, near Gillette is where the heaviest of that of that hail uh, is going on right now. Just getting some uh, video. We'll break away for just a second, show you some video uh, that we're just now getting in. Um, we've showed you tons of pictures of the tornado and funnel cloud near Newport. Uh, I think we have some video that we're just about to put up for you in just a little bit. Uh, anytime you want to. There it is. This is, uh, again, earlier we know that there was some damage near oil trough with this. Um, this again was um, near Newport. We showed you those pictures, the damage, and that moved up towards Jonesboro, and I believe it weakened, but you can see it just behind mm -hmm. those trees. You can see that what we were described to as a, a rope tornado, and that's, that's exactly what that was, uh, at least in this video that you see, uh, just off in the distance. And uh, again, we never want you to put yourself in harm's way at all, ever. Uh, never do that for television. Uh, photo at KTV.com if you ever have pictures after the fact of damage, um, after the hail falls, after anything like this passes you by. We don't. We want you in your safe place. So, uh, but that's some video. If you ever want to send us video or pictures, it's photo at KTV.com. Barry's got some new information now. I think uh, uh, on our um, five live Doppler radars, you got a, a very high probability of a tornado now. Yeah, it's south of Ryzen in Cleveland County, and that storm down there, uh, the probability is now nine, so it's certainly a possible tornado. Uh, and that is uh, down yeah. in the in the south part of that county, north of Orlando. It'll be headed toward Pansy uh, as it moves off to the east. And I'll go in tight on just our reflectivity product, just wh where it's raining and where it's hailing right now. And there is that indication between Ryzen and Orlando. But our shear indicator indicates that there is plenty of rotation within that storm as it moves in an, into an area that just hasn't seen rainfall yet. And you, you're just in a very, very hot steamy uh, atmosphere and a tornado warning is in effect there for southern Cleveland County headed over into southwestern Lincoln and northwestern Drew County later on and then we'll go on down to the southwest of that just a little bit it's still a severe thunderstorm warning on down into Calhoun County uh, too you know South Arkansas you need some rainfall still you need some rainfall and maybe this is going to fill that bill in at least a few spots like around Warren and Banks and Hampton but uh, at sometimes it comes at the expense of uh, sure. large thunderstorms as well. So we'll continue to watch this area for the possibility of rotation, but certainly there is some rain and some hail, and the hail is prolific in southern Arkansas County now near Gillette and Tishner. And a tornado warning is still in effect there. The hail part of that storm is going to move across southern Arkansas County to southern Phillips County, and Elaine will get some, um, some thunderstorm activity uh, as well over there. And there's the hail still showing up in southern Arkansas County at an inch and a half in diameter. Maybe if there's any good news, it's not quite as large as it was earlier, but it's still uh, uh, quite large. And then on up toward West Helena, 
uh, a thunderstorm there with some hail being produced. And now around Memphis and West Memphis, some pretty large hail as uh, as it moves over into the kind of the northern part of that city uh, from the pyramid on up onto the north side of the loop there around Memphis. In our state though, and so that, that one is leaving Arkansas. In our state, we still have some within the state and that's the southern part of Arkansas County and uh, on down uh, to the south. So Lincoln County, Cleveland County, and on to the south, large thunderstorms continue to roll along and I'm afraid that's gonna be the case for a while. Those in eastern Arkansas, Todd, are going to be across the river pretty soon, even the ones in southern Arkansas County. The ones that are trailing back, it's going to take a while for them to get in there. But here's the, here's the thing I'm going to, I'm going to say. Uh, as those start to lay out in a more east-west trajectory, they're going to go over areas that maybe have had rain already. You're going to lay over on the side there. It's not going to be coming in at kind of a steep angle into, into air that's very right. unstable. So hopefully that will lessen the intensity of those in south Arkansas. And unfortunately, may heighten the flooding threat, too. With some it might. They rain. could train. Yes. They could train for a little while. Um, just get uh, my thoughts together here and just show you that yeah. uh, the, the hail, again, the huge problem, as you've been saying, but the rotation now uh, is still very, very strong and has increased as it heads towards the intersection of 15 and uh, 35. I'm heading towards Cornerville. This is just north of Rye. And it's going to get awfully close to the Star City area once again. So, uh, again, I'm continuing to watch that. Further towards the west, north of Hampton, no rotation with this thunderstorm yet, but it does show signs that this may start to rotate and move into northern areas of Bradley County towards Warren. No tornado yet right now, right. but there's a little knot starting to develop. And like I said, that's what happened with the storms to the north and east. That's something that could happen with this as it moves on off uh, into northern sections of uh, Bradley and eventually into Drew County. To our graphics computer, we can go ahead and officially sound the all clear for the Little Rock area, Pulaski, Saline, Faulkner, White County, well, White County still in it, but um, the tornado watch has been cleared for much of the northwestern half of Arkansas, but remains for the southeastern half, but that does not include Little Rock. So uh, everybody in central Arkansas, you know, it's it's a deadly day, uh, possibly, for portions of the country, hopefully not here in Arkansas. We haven't heard of any fatalities. We're going to stay with you on this. Um, Arkansas, so far this year, Barry, 60 tornadoes officially. Mm -hmm. Average is 26. Yeah. And it's May. And, and we'll have more today, obviously. And yeah, that's not counting what we had today. Yeah. Uh, if you remember the, the horrible year of 08, mm -hmm. uh, we had 81, I believe, tornadoes across the yeah. state. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, when it's not even halfway through, we have tropical season to get through and then a secondary severe weather right. season. Uh, Let's just hope we can get through this and, and uh, get some nicer weather in here. But it's been violent, and we're going to stay with you. Yeah, yeah, we will until those tornado warnings are out of the state there, until the rotation uh, lessens somewhat. Hey, good news in the extended forecast, though. I see a long, prolonged period of more summer-like weather, less spring-like, less severe weather type uh, of weather coming in. So that's the good news in the extended forecast. But we've got to get through the next hour, hour and a half or so uh, down in southeast Arkansas. And the hail continues to fall there and the prospect of a few uh, tornadoes as well. Uh, I'd look and see that there are just a couple of uh, tornado warnings still in effect. Southern Cleveland County over into southeast or southwestern Lincoln County, northwestern Drew, and then from uh, southern Arkansas County where those storms are ongoing right now off to the east into southern Phillips County, northern Deshea County. Looks like most of that activity then is going to be moving across the uh, Mississippi River over around West Memphis and just a tiny bit of Mississippi County up there. So really, uh, two, three storms perhaps that are classified as rotators, but we'll watch the others uh, as well. And I'd say even east of Little Rock there, Lone Oak County, Grant County, White County, I'd say you're probably in the clear as well uh, because the, the storm uh, has cooled that area appreciably and uh, I don't think there's anything there that will cause a refiring of thunderstorms yeah. around our area. Yeah, they issued severe thunderstorm warnings, by the way, for those cells back here, oh, I'm sorry, back mm -hmm. here towards the uh, south. So not only that, but we now have severe thunderstorm warnings for stuff coming out ahead of this and uh, out of northern Louisiana and the southern Arkansas. But uh, again, this continues to build towards the south. At some point tonight is going to merge into one line, but now I am indicating some weak rotation west of Hampton. Uh, this is probably the very beginning of a tornado warning, which could be issued here not too long from now. It's not in effect now, but if this gets issued, warn in northern portions of Bradley County and eventually into Monticello. You're gonna need to pay very close attention if this starts to develop even further. Uh, tremendous amounts of rotation still being seen moving. Uh, this is uh, just about to cross over 15 and 35 uh, up towards Cornerville and coming up towards Star City. 
Uh, we have rotation that is now more broad, is more broad-based, uh, northeast of uh, Star City. And the circulation now east of Grady, uh, heading to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that's another area of, of broad circulation. And then also in Tishner, there's another area that's rotating just mm -hmm. to the south. Tishner's getting some big hail. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just to the south there, that's where we see some broad rotation right in this area. And that's moving off towards the north and east. And that's going up towards E-Lane, as you said, uh, as, as time wears on. And that'll cross over the Mississippi <laughs> River. But uh, tornado warnings do continue there. Uh, and that does include Watson just north of Dumas. You're not under a tornado warning in Dumas yet, but uh, Dumas, if you're going to have any type of tornado warnings, it's going to be from this cell just towards your west that is now southeast of Ryzen. Yeah, that, that's strong rotation right there. Yeah, it is. Uh, just down to the south of Tishner, uh, a lot of these areas, timberland, farmland, we hope that there are no farm houses or small communities that are affected, but we can't rule that out, folks. And so that's why we stay on. We want to make sure all of you are covered, not just the large cities, not just central Arkansas. We uh, we cover a good portion of the state, and so we're going to be on with you till these tornado warnings are over uh, as they head through southeastern Arkansas right now. Southern Cleveland County and then uh, into Lincoln County and Southern Arkansas County, the, the areas most affected. Been uh, talking about the storm that is moving over from West Memphis into Memphis, and then there's a new tornado warning for a broad bit of the uh, metro, me Memphis metro area uh, there. Looks like moving just maybe on the north side of the town as well, but all that is moving across the river uh, into Tennessee. Boy, that's good news for us, not so good news for the folks to the east of us. And on up to the north as well, there are um, a number of thunderstorm warnings and uh, tornado warnings even that are going on. In the northwestern part of our state, there are actually a few thunderstorms wrapping around the main area of low pressure, uh, which is over uh, northwestern Missouri now. Uh, those don't look severe at all, but we'll keep an eye on them. The, through the north central part of the state, we'll let you know that you do have a chance for a few thunder showers for tonight. But obviously, our area of concern is down to the south. And for about 20 more minutes, those areas in southern Lincoln County will be under a tornado warning. Also, northern Deshay, southern Arkansas, and back into southern Phillips County, that tornado warning uh, will go on there again for another 20 minutes as we uh, keep an eye on these storms. And, you know, they're possible rotators still. Uh, we're talking about... Um, uh, Weber, uh, Jacks Bay Landing, Stimson will be uh, affected by these storms. Very small communities, but nonetheless, these are the areas that are being affected. And then on back to the uh, to the west we go in southern Lincoln County there too. It's all past your Pine Bluff, it looks like, on down to the south, and that's good news there. He's on it right now, Bart Comstock. Let's go to my computer. He is in that uh, circulation. I think it's the one near Tishner. There's the lowering right there, so you see it live. Uh, I can't tell or not that there's a tornado, but uh, there does appear to be a lowering, and uh, he was in some very, very strong winds just a second ago, but uh, there's the lowering right in there, and he's right where that uh, possible tornado is located. So we're going to continue to monitor his live feed right now. Uh, if you're wondering what that is on the, uh, on the on, you'll see maybe in just a little bit, uh, part of his glass has been shattered by uh, hail. Uh, don't know if that happened today. I know Bart was in Oklahoma yesterday, um, but he's now trying to get in a position, I guess, to get a better vantage point of this, but this is in Arkansas County. Uh, you're looking at live video here of this, and uh, this is the, the circulation is not quite as strong as it was just a little while ago, but it is still apparent, and so we want to keep everybody advised the latest information. You know, we look at the Doppler radar all day long. You can see where there could be uh, thunderstorms producing tornadoes uh, structurally and with the velocities, but nothing, absolutely nothing will ever beat having a pair of eyes on the ground with trained professionals who do this uh, for a living. And that's what uh, Bart does here. Uh, and he's trying to give us some eyes on the ground, a pair of eyes to let us know uh, what's happening there in southeast Arkansas. Um, he, he is, uh, again, continuing to move on the storm. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, pull up our um, volumetric radar. Well, I was going to pull up volumetric radar and show you uh, where he is right now. This is Tishner, uh, and he is just to the south there where this, uh, there's some broad rotation moving off towards the east, and we'll be eventually heading into southern areas of Phillip County and uh, north of Snow Lake is where that is. But the, the, again, this is not as wound up as it was earlier, so this is some very good news, but I want everybody there to take your tornado precautions. What is winding up and is fairly significant now, north of Star City, you got another uh, possible tornado uh, that will cross Highway 65 between Grady and Gould, just south of Yorktown. That's the uh, 
some area that our Doppler radar shows that could be starting to spin and get a little bit stronger. And there's still significant rotation just to the west of Cornersville as that moves up towards the northeast and could affect areas from Star City southward. Back into south central Arkansas, I continue to monitor just severe thunderstorm warnings, but I continue to monitor uh, for any issuance of tornado warnings. And at this time, there aren't any, but there is some rotation starting to show up just to the west of Hampton. And if this continues to develop like the other storms have, it would affect the northern portions of uh, the northern portions of Bradley County. And Monticello, you're not out of the woods. You still have to get through this line. So there's one storm that's spinning that uh, Bart's on and here's another one we now have um, this is just a continuation of uh, that you hear all the, the motion in the background uh, Bradley Cleveland Drew and Lincoln County a National Weather Service top radar continues to indicate a possible tornado near Herbine or 30 miles southeast of uh, Ryzen so this is where we're seeing very significant rotation on the Doppler radar. This is going to pass over 15 north of Rye, you know, the two-lane highway there that goes uh, down towards Warren from Pine Bluff. It is crossing over that highway right now and will be going towards Cornerville and possibly just stay south of Star City. But I want Star City to think about your taking your, your uh, tornado safe place, uh, your tornado precautions right now. Uh, that's very ominous looking northeast of New Edinburgh. It came through there. But the good news right now, uh, we're in constant communication again with the National Weather Service, and we have had absolutely no reports at all of a tornado uh, on the ground within this area of southeast Arkansas. But we again want you to uh, take your safe, uh, uh, your tornado precautions right now as it moves towards the east at about 45 miles per hour. Hail again, a huge threat. This is uh, a hail that is moving uh, along Highway 167 north of Hampton and northeast of New Edinburgh, these areas in purple, and it seems like it has decreased some across uh, northern portions of, or southern portions of Arkansas County. Joining me right now is uh, Chief Meteorologist Ned Permy, joining me back here at the desk. Ned, we're eventually gonna get all these thunderstorms through here. Yeah, we are, and I, and I think uh, the, uh, the thunderstorms have become more isolated, the warnings anyway. We only have two tornado warnings in effect right now, but uh, they are in southeastern Arkansas, and uh, we are gonna stay on with these warnings mm -hmm. until uh, we feel that that the threat for these the tornado threat has diminished somewhat so we still have a little while to go and we want to uh, be sure that everybody in southeastern Arkansas knows that we're watching these thunderstorms carefully however if they continue to show signs of weakening or kind of uh, they're they're uh, not showing tornado potential as much as they were then we're going to be able to go back to regular programming the vast majority of these warnings from earlier today have moved along the Mississippi River and they're out of the viewing area uh, but we still have two active warnings in South southeastern Arkansas and we are looking at uh, the southeastern quadrant of the state. We have uh, around the uh, Helena, West Helena area, some strong thunderstorms there, uh, but they are not tornadic. Uh, and uh, the only uh, tornado warnings that we've got in effect, and they're in effect, uh, I think for about another 15 minutes, Todd, are these storms in southeastern Arkansas that you have been uh, talking about. Uh, primarily uh, the storms that are moving east of the Fordyce area out of Dallas County across southern sections of uh, uh, Cleveland County. And that one strong storm that is really held together, although it's looking like it's becoming a little bit more absorbed by the line, and that's the storm that has been moving through northern sections of Lincoln County and then the one right behind it. Uh, so these are the storms that have been affecting areas north of Star City and Gillette. I think those are some of the uh, stronger storms that we have been watching right now. Still an active uh, tornado warning in effect for uh, northeastern sections of Lincoln County and across southern sections of Arkansas County and again the one near Fordyce so these are becoming more and more isolated uh, we hope that they might show signs of uh, you know weakening enough so that they're not strong rotating storms uh, but it has been a very long day I believe we began broadcasting about three o'clock this afternoon and uh, but we want to tell everyone in southeastern Arkansas that again we're still here we're watching these storms for you uh, north of the Monticello area north of Warren uh, as I put, uh, I'm going to take the warnings off right now, and we're going to kind of show you uh, the direction that these storms have been taking. We're going to kind of put it into motion over the last hour or so, and they're moving pretty much toward the east. Uh, there have been a little development down around El Dorado and Huddig and uh, Union County, but they are not severe at the present time. Um, 
These storms here uh, will continue uh, to the east, uh, but the vast majority of all of these storms have already gone on and crossed the river. But uh, we are talking to people right now that are in southern sections of uh, Arkansas County, uh, northern sections of uh, Drew County, northern sections of uh, Bradley County and across to Shea County and uh, Chico County. These this, these four or five counties in extreme southeastern Arkansas will be affected by these storms over the next hour. Whether they remain tornadic thunderstorms uh, is still rather questionable at this time. You know, it's 7 o'clock at night now, and some of the instability may be waning now. And I've looked here at our volumetric radar. The, the one thunderstorm that has really been going, uh, that is now moving uh, in, uh, moving towards uh, Cornerville, we've been talking about, the rotation within that was very tightly wound up and is now more broad. That's a very good sign right there. I think that that may be trying to loose some of this rotation. Do not let your guard down uh, as this moves into, into that section of the state there into portions of, uh, of uh, out of Cleveland and into Lincoln County. As it moves there, I want you to go ahead and keep your tornado precautions and, and extreme northern areas of Drew County. Uh, but this... this um, thunderstorm here, which is going to be passing the, the circulation between Grady and Gould. Again, broad rotation, tornado warning remains, but it's not as wound up as it was earlier. Again, tornado warning continues there, uh, but there's just, just these two storms, some hail building back here towards Hampton on the north side of, uh, of the county there. But um, I, I think, Ned, as we go on tonight, I think that the tornado potential will start to come down. Uh, well, as we, we're losing the heating of the day. And another thing, these, these, the southern edge of this line of thunderstorms are kind of uh, farther away right. from the doesn't main the, dynamic support or the low pressure area. Doesn't have the spin. Doesn't have the spin. The farther south right. you go. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're hoping that these thunderstorms uh, will show signs of losing their rotating characteristics and uh, stop the potential for uh, severe, uh, or I should say, tornadic thunderstorms. Uh, on our five live Dopplers, this is the storm that uh, Todd was talking about. Uh, this is the one that has been really kind of problematic over the last several hours, the one near Grady and between Grady and Gould. It continues to move on toward the east at about 40 to 45 miles per hour. So areas like Farley Lake, Gould, Gillette, again, in the vicinity. Uh, that storm, this area has been uh, hit twice today by very strong storms. Um, and uh, they will continue to move on toward the east, toward Gillette, and through southern sections of Arkansas County. From there, we have the uh, another storm in Lincoln County near Star City, and this storm will be moving toward Deshea County near Dumas. It's moving eastbound, and we can get a track on that storm for you. Uh, this storm here from Star City through Lincoln County moving east at about 40 miles an hour. We'll be moving toward Craigler, Refs Bluff, Garnet, uh, Tyro and Fresno, and eventually on toward the Dumas area by about 7:46 tonight. Um, we have a uh, new tornado warning, Todd, that has just been issued, and this is for southeastern Lee County. This is from the Memphis office, southeastern Lee County, uh, and uh, sections of uh, northeastern Phillips County. So this storm is showing signs of rotation, but it's just about to cross the river uh, in northern sections, south uh, northern sections of Phillips County, uh, pri primarily north of the Helena area, uh, and that, it's that storm right there. We have a brand new tornado warning on it uh, and this is going to be moving on into uh, uh, Tate County in Mississippi and Tunica County in northwestern Mississippi very very soon but for persons in northeastern sections of Phillips County and extreme southeastern sections of Lee County uh, this storm is moving northeast at about 50 miles an hour uh, there's a possibility that this storm could be affecting the Helena West Helena area so we want to remind everyone and tell everyone in that area of Helena West Helena uh, to move Move to a safe place immediately uh, and uh, take your tornado precautions. We'll put a track on that storm uh, in this area right here, southeastern sections of Lee County, northeastern sections of Phillips County, moving to the east at about east-northeast at about uh, 50 miles per hour. 
So uh, it'll be moving into uh, some areas uh, like Austin and Fox Island and Clayton at about 420 before it moves, uh, uh, 720, excuse me, before it moves across the river uh, and on toward the Tunica area. So that is in uh, Helena, West Helena. We need to remind everybody there. Uh, if you haven't already moved to a safe place, please do so immediately because that storm is in your vicinity and it has been uh, showing a history of uh, a rotation and potential potential tornado development. We don't know at this time whether a tornado is actually on the ground, but regardless, people in Helena and West Helena need to move to a safe place immediately. We do have a report that just came in that law enforcement reports a brief tornado touchdown uh, about 20 minutes ago near the community of Tishner. Power lines down, deputies are en route to assess the damage. That's via the National Weather Service. So there has been a brief tornado touchdown 20 minutes ago in Tishner. Uh, but that storm, again, has weakened since then and has moved off towards the east. So, uh, again, there may have been yet another Arkansas tornado here in this deadly uh, deadly year, Ned. The thing that's uh, puzzling to me, or not puzzling, but I'm very grateful for, is that with all the tornado activity today and all the tornadoes that we have seen, all of the pictures and all of the video that has been sent to us from across the state. It's been a very, very active tornado day in Arkansas, but we have not had any significant damage that we have heard right. at this point, or no, not even any injuries. No injuries. And I, I, you know, and I, I, I monitor uh, tweets from friends of mine, and one of them is Ryan Vaughn. He's a meteorologist at our sister station at KAIT in Jonesboro, and he just brought up the, the point, wow, what a day in Arkansas, yet he has not heard of one single injury. Even in northeast Not Arkansas. even in our, northeast that, Arkansas. That was really the hit. concentrated area. That's where the high risk was for most of the day. Right. And they had that known tornado on the ground that we showed you, and, and we showed you that live tornado, and things got very, very scary there for quite some time, uh, especially up towards the oil trough. And I know that there is some damage, um, but you can always fix things. You can't replace people. And uh, again, so far, as to the best of our knowledge, uh, no fatalities and no injuries so far today. And I think that uh, once we get through this this evening, our threat for severe weather will be non-existent uh, for quite some, well, I wouldn't say non-existent, but will not be there for quite some time. We got a new tornado warning uh, for Deshay, Drew, and Lincoln counties that have just come down until eight o'clock. Um, again, a new tornado warning. Uh, this is for Deshay, Drew, and Lincoln County. So uh, we'll show you this with our, uh, with my radar here that this is moving uh, just to the north of Monticello, this, uh, this Doppler radar indicated tornado. Uh, nine miles south of Star City. Yep. So Lincoln County has really been hit with a lot of severe weather over the last couple of hours, haven't they, Todd? They really have been. And numerous reports of uh, funnel clouds with that uh, and also tornadoes on the ground. Um, this and now we have a brand new tornado warning out for that area. Yeah, and at this, the, again, the circulation with this is not as strong as it was earlier. That's not to say we can't have a brief tornado touchdown, but um, it, it's, it's just not quite as strong as it was. If it continues on its course, this does include the Dumas area, this new tornado warning, by the way. It does include Dumas. Uh, we want you to go ahead and take your tornado precautions right now. Put as many walls between you and the outside and uh, stay away from windows, obviously. Don't try to go out and see this thing, but it is, uh, it is there. It is uh, broad rotation, and we're shooting far away from the radar. We're shooting at about uh, 6,500 feet in elevation. So this, of course, as you know, tornadoes occur on the ground, so we're shooting above where the tornado would be, but aloft there does appear to be broad rotation. We want to play this safe and sorry and get everybody in Dumas into your safe place in southern Lincoln County, near Tyro, and in the northern portions of uh, Drew County, near Florence. Get to your safe place right now. And this uh, tornado warning, uh, as we go to our five live Doppler radars, I want to point this the area of concern with this. You can see I kind of get took the radar and gave you kind of an overview of southeastern Arkansas. So to give you an idea, there's Pine Bluff right there, there's Monticello, and there's Dumas. And the storm that we are watching uh, is this storm right here. Uh, so we have a brand new tornado warning in effect, and this warning stays until effect, in effect until 8 o'clock tonight. Um, with this warning there. It's approaching the Dumas area. So we have a brand new tornado warning that is in effect now until 8 o'clock. We'll put a track on this storm for you. This is moving at about 35 miles an hour toward the east. So from anywhere from northern sections of Drew County into southern sections of uh, Lincoln County all the way into Deshaies County uh, at about 35 miles per hour, that storm will be moving toward the Dumas area. So Arkansas Post at 558. 
Blackgate at 553, Omega at 536. Uh, we are looking at Gord at 726 and the Dumas area at 731. So it's now 713 and uh, we are looking at Dumas at 731 with that storm and Gord at 726. Again, on the immediate uh, portion of that storm, we're looking at Coleman at 719 and Flynn right after that. So uh, that is one, again, rotating storm. It's located uh, just south of the Star City area. Once again, some of the most active weather in southeastern Arkansas has been in through uh, the Star City uh, area, but now moving into uh, Deshaies County and uh, the Dumas area. And from there, we have uh, that area of thunderstorms that are continuing all the way down into Calhoun County. We will show you the actual warning on that storm uh, that has just been issued uh, that continues for the, uh, the area of... Uh, Lincoln County and uh, sections of northern Drew County and all the way into Deshaies County with that storm. You know, that one that's in uh, uh, going into Arkansas County out of uh, Lincoln County, I don't think it's quite as strong as it was. It's east of Gould now. Take your tornado precautions anyway, but that's moving into southern Arkansas County. Just not quite as strong the rotation. By the way, we just got a report of a wall cloud near the Walmart at Helena and West Helena. By the time we got that report, though, it's crossed on over into uh, Mississippi there, towards Lula, Mississippi. But uh, again, south of Star City, this rotation is not all that strong. It really isn't. It's more broad. Uh, but it's there, and it could produce a tornado. Again, we're shooting up high in the atmosphere right now because it's far away from the radar site we use here in central Arkansas, so it's best to warn everybody and get you into a... Um, uh, get you into your safe place as this moves on off towards the east. Uh, what are these? The, these are moving about 35 or 40 miles. 35. Per hour. 35. The forward movement has slowed down. Earlier today, these storms were moving between 50 and 60 miles an hour. I can remember tracking one storm. I think it was the one that moved uh, into the Truman area into Jackson County. Up in that area, it was moving at one time about 60 miles an hour. But yeah. the uh, they have Which slowed is... their forward speed because the uh, main propellant for these thunderstorms is the circulation around the low in Missouri, and so the southern portion of this uh, area is beginning to slow down. I find bit. it very, very odd that, you, you know, you get this deep into May to have thunderstorms move that fast. The jet stream is so energized and displaced to the south uh, that that's not that common to get thunderstorms moving that fast this time of the year. Usually things are slowing down, and we're getting out of our severe weather season, um, but this has been the type of instability you get in late May with lots of warmth and humidity with the jet stream you might get in April. So it's all kind of come together for another severe weather outbreak this far south, because normally by this time we're getting on the very tail end of our severe weather season. The uh, southeastern sections of Arkansas are still under the gun for a little longer uh, with these thunderstorms uh, as they continue to track on toward the uh, east primarily. We'll put a, uh, I'm gonna show you a little longer movement on these storms going back over the last three or four hours and show you how fast they've moved through as we zoom out a little bit more we can show you how a lot of these thunderstorms just kind of tracked all the way through central and into eastern Arkansas I think we're going back now about three hours Todd and just kind of giving everybody an overview that's still with us right now the vast majority of these storms have already crossed over the river we just have a few counties in southeastern Arkansas that we're continuing to watch a brand new warning has just been issued for sections of Lincoln County uh, southern Lincoln County primarily uh, west central Deshaies County and northern Drew County we remain in effect until eight o'clock or until the rotation begins to decrease and they drop the warning on that. But areas like Lake Monticello and Rosie Hill and Pickens and Gar uh, Garrett Ridge, Dumas, Rock Springs, Garnet or Garnett, uh, Mitchellville, Brandon, uh, Gord, uh, all in the path of that storm as well as Dumas. We only have one tornado warning in effect right now in Arkansas. Um, that's, we're, we're, all, we're on the very tail end of this event. Uh, it's the one that just came out here, Southern Lincoln, Northern Drew, extreme western areas of Deshaies County, including, uh, including Dumas. But I'll show you the velocity signatures. It continues to weaken. I think we're on the tail end of this. It's still there, and that's why the tornado warning is issued. Normally, if there's a tornado, you'd see bright reds and bright greens right next to each other, but notice how it's more broad. So this is, um, again, a... Uh, this is a Doppler radar indicated tornado, and it's the last one that we have in the Channel 7 viewing area uh, for this evening. Other than that, a line of thunderstorms continues uh, to stretch across southeastern Arkansas, 
And uh, I think by the time that you get to the 10 o'clock newscast, this will be across the Mississippi River, and then we'll be able to actually give you a seven-day forecast. Todd, I'm... Um I'm not. Oh, those are the active warnings that we have. I'll get the last scan here. My for computer you. is not showing any right now, but this we may have an anomaly going on. Showing, not even showing any severe thunderstorm warnings. Are you showing severe they thunderstorm now, warnings? Yeah, the, well, I'm still got that one for southern portions of Lincoln County. Let me just double check and make sure that all the systems are fully operational here. But yeah, it's, it still continues. Now that's the only that's the only game in town right now. Yep, that's it. Uh, there's there's one that's going over Mississippi, uh, northern Phillips County. That's going that has gone and crossed over the Mississippi River now, uh, and you can see here, Ned. That's the only warning right there in southeast Arkansas. Only tornado warning. And uh, again, we're watching the hail. Star City is about to get pounded by very very large hail, um, probably at least golf ball size. But the, the instability is probably beginning to come down at this point in time. And, and even here at the special algorithms we use, the rotation within this thunderstorm is very broad uh, and is now uh, over Highway 425, which runs between Monticello and, and Star City. It's just east of that by now. Our instant messaging hasn't come back yet. It has. It is. Uh, expires warning for Arkansas to shed yeah, Jefferson. Just, okay. That was that another expired. one. That, that, that's over with. And uh, again, we're just waiting for this one thunderstorm morning. We may be able to break away from this period. <laughs> may be able break to break away, away from, from this microphone. microphone. I'm sorry about that. Uh, maybe it'll break away from this shortly because uh, we don't want to cover up programming that uh, we have to. Uh, that's We want to get you back to, to regular programming as soon as possible. But uh, I, I tell you what, Ned, that rotation does just not look all that strong right now. Well, the one thing, to be honest with you, I, we, we really want to uh, continue to watch these storms in southeastern Arkansas. But uh, people in southeastern Arkansas need to, I mean, we, we get a lot of this. We really do. And, and uh, when warnings are no longer in effect, tornado warnings, we go on the air for live programming for tornado warnings. And uh, other than that, for severe thunderstorm warnings, we rely on our other systems, mm -hmm. our bugs and our crawls, the little displays on TV uh, to get the warnings that way. But when we go on the air uh, for live, uh, nonstop, preemptive programming, it's for tornado warnings. Tornado warnings and when the tornado warnings are decreasing and we uh, don't see any more tornado warnings, uh, then we are uh, allowed to go off the air, and that's that's our policy, and that's what we do. And it doesn't mean that we're not here, we're not watching the storms in southeastern Arkansas, but the storms have weakened, and right. we are expecting them to stay that way. So I would be shocked if we were still on the air by 8 o'clock tonight, so that I, I would be, but you know Mother Nature has her own way of telling us what we're going to do. Uh, but, you know, this is staying south of Star City right now, and and uh, it's the only tornado warning in the state, and the latest scan that I'm looking at now even shows less rotation with this. Uh, and again, I, I, I want everybody in Dumas to Florence to Tyro, I want you to take your tornado precautions. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to completely downplay this. There is a, a tornado warning which has been issued by the National Weather Service. We see where the rotation is on the Doppler radar, and we're not trying to minimize uh, your area of the state at all, but we just don't, we just don't see right now uh, a huge tornado threat, nothing, nothing like what we were seeing earlier across uh, east central and the northeast Arkansas, where the spin in the atmosphere was the absolute highest. Uh, let me show you again where the uh, severe thunderstorm warnings are in the yellow boxes and the tornado warnings in the red boxes. And this is now moving across the southeastern corners. We're also worth showing on our weather graphics I'm computer. Getting, I, I'm getting one tornado, only one tornado vortex signature in the yeah. state, Todd, right now. And uh, we can zoom into that area on our five live Dopplers. And that is the uh, one that is still um, southeast of uh, Lincoln County, in southeastern Lincoln County, southeast of Star City. And that is the uh, only one that I'm seeing right now. And it's this storm that's going to be moving a little bit to the east, southeast, toward northern sections of Drew County, where the warning remains in effect, all the way into Shea County. It'll be affecting the Dumas area, and this is the last one that we tracked for you. Uh, but uh, Tyro, Warrenton, Florence, Gord, Pickens, and Omega, and uh, the attributes is showing there is possible rotation 
vegetation there, but the chance of it is only about 17 percent of a tornado uh, actually touching the ground there uh, with that storm. But again, this is the latest uh, track that we have and the only the last uh, tornado vortex signature that we have in the state. Our systems are not picking up anymore. And of course, most of the storms have already crossed the river. Uh, and even the one in the Helena, West Helena area that was a rotating storm has now moved on into the Tunica area. Uh, so again, this is the last one that we are watching right now. We'll see what happens as far as them uh, spinning up again. But, uh, you know, uh, southeastern Arkansas still under the gun uh, as we take a look now at um, the uh, hail core within some of these thunderstorms here. Uh, and the one that we have been watching there southeast of uh, Star City is this one right here in Lincoln County. And even the hail, Todd, has uh, diminished uh, with that storm. Um, we are looking at a uh, little over an inch diameter hail, still pretty pretty strong, severe hail between Platters, B Plattersville and Star City, about an inch uh, point two to an inch point three with that storm. As far as shear is concerned, uh, let's find that storm again on our shear system here, and we will... Uh, On that? No, no, no. Okay, I don't clear so. that off. I'm trying to clear that off. There we go. And we will look at that one storm. Um, it looks to be right in here. And uh, that storm just north of Monticello, between Monticello and Star City. Um, that storm right there between Plantersville and Florence. And we are looking at a nine on that storm, uh, Todd. So there's definitely some rotation there within that storm mm -hmm. between Plantersville and Florence. Uh, so we are looking at a nine, which is uh, on the high end of a tornado possible uh, with that storm. In the, in the center of the circulation. So we do have a nine that we're looking at on our shear value index. And uh, so we still have to wait this out a little bit in through northern sections of Drew County. Uh, and uh, we'll show you again that storm right there, uh, just to the north of the Star City area. I'll change to another radar display that we have and uh, go down into this area and uh, where the rotation is looking at Little Garnet and Gord is where we're looking at there. Uh, so Garrett Bridge, this is a pretty rural community down here in this area. Uh, a lot of farmland as well down in southeastern Arkansas, as you know. But south of Garrett Bridge, we're looking at County Road 36 and into northern sections of uh, northern sections of Drew County. That's Arkansas Highway 277. And running into Drew County is Har uh, Arkansas 290, Arkansas 83 and uh, that is Arkansas Highway 54. So these are some of the roads in northern Drew County and southern sections of Lincoln County that will be uh, under the gun for that storm as it continues to track on toward the uh, the east southeast. This one's going just a little bit of little south of due east. So we'll put another track on that storm. I'll zoom out just a little bit more. Again, Gould uh, looks like that storm may be moving just to the north or actually just south of the Gould area. Dumas definitely in the path of that storm and we will uh, put another track on it from Coleman up to near Star City and track it just a little bit to the south at about 35 miles per hour and with that in mind uh, Garrett Bridge which I pointed out just a moment ago Avery Florence Gord Dumas at about 748 and uh, Mitchell Mitchellville also at about 748 beyond that into southeastern Deshea County uh, Yukon at 801 Winchester at 802 Omega at 8.02 and um, Winchester in northeastern sections of uh, Drew County at 8.02 as that storm continues to track. But that's the only one we've got going in the state. Yeah. I asked the Weather Service just now of where that uh, we have that uh, ability to communicate with them directly via chat room and just asked them if they're going to continue this tornado warning. I haven't heard back from them. But, uh, you know, Ned was here last night. He stayed until about 2 a.m. tracking thunderstorms, at least 2 a.m. I think Yeah, we had the, the storms that right. touched down near yeah. um, Denning. Denning. Denning was the yeah, name Denning of the community. And just, also some damage in Clarksville last night storms that came out of Oklahoma. Yeah, we just got word that they just raided that an EF3 tornado. Oh, they did. They just, I haven't, yeah, we've been so busy today, I haven't even had any uh, 
I haven't had a chance to even see any of the uh, video that was shot by our crews. I know uh, we moved our crews out last right. night uh, to Clarksville and Denning, but yeah. I haven't had a chance to see anything today because we've been well, kind of busy gearing up for this afternoon's event. It was a, a deadly tornado. It was one that wiped out the small community. Our thoughts and prayers with them, but just to let you know that that tornado uh, that happened, I'm not quite sure what time that happened. It was shortly after 11 o'clock, I think, in the evening. Uh, that did produce a tornado is rated EF3 once again and we will of course have more coverage on that on Channel 7 News and coming up uh, Michelle you may also want to uh, correct me if I'm wrong we had storm chasers from all over the country in Arkansas you talked to Reed Timber that's at 10 tonight that, from, uh, that's right it at, should, at, should be at 10, 10 o'clock tonight uh, you'll see a story about Reed Timmer uh, from the Discovery Channel chasing in Arkansas but let's uh, talk about this tornado warning again uh, I'm still waiting to hear I do not see the rotation being the, all that strong, Ned. Uh, it is, it's weakened even further. Uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just not quite sure why there's still a tornado warning in effect for this uh, thunderstorm, but we're going to continue to watch it. I want you to take your tornado safety precautions right now. I'm not telling you to get out of your, your safe place. I'm not saying that at all. I want you to stay there, but just to let you know, I'm monitoring the trends on the radar, and at this point in time, I don't see it being a huge threat, but I want you to stay in your safe place, Ned. All right, we are looking at the movement of the storm. We're taking it now over the last two hours, and you can see steadily moving toward Dumas. Dumas is in the path of this, of the latest storm that we have. Let me change uh, that to, and uh, just make it go. I'm just kind of changing the settings to make to make our loop go a little bit quicker, so you get a little bit of idea. This is going back two hours, and you can see how this has all been steadily moving at between 35 and 40 miles an hour. So persons in Monticello and Dumas uh, are in the path of some pretty strong storms, still containing some small to moderate size hail that we're looking at. Uh, and uh, of course, as it tracks continuing into uh, Deshea County and eventually into uh, Chico County and across Ashley County over the next uh, couple of hours, uh, intense cloud to ground lightning, gusty winds are still possible with this storm. But overall, we have uh, seen a definite decrease in our severe weather event for the day today and uh, should be in good shape over the next couple of days. The only thing if you're looking for because you missed uh, the forecast uh, between 5 and 6 o'clock. We are looking for a much better forecast coming in in the days to come. Uh, we are looking for a little bit of a cool down tomorrow, some drier air in, but then a warm front comes back on Friday and brings with it a small chance of showers Friday night and then much, much warmer air as we move into um, Saturday and Sunday with temperatures approaching 90 degrees by Sunday and Monday. As a matter of fact, my forecast had the temperature on Memorial Day, I think, at 92. It'll feel like Riverfest weekend, won't it? Oh, that's right. It is Riverfest <laughs> weekend. That's right. I think is. I'm going to be with Michelle at Riverfest on Saturday afternoon. So Which is, we'll we're usually sweating. Meeting and greeting. So. That's right. And meet us at Riverfest. But we, let's talk... Uh, more about this uh, severe thunder. I'm still trying to get word whether or not we're going to... Okay, good news. They're canceling the warning. Okay. We can send it back to regular programming. That's what we've been waiting for. The tornado warning has been canceled for Lincoln, Drew, Deshea County. We want to thank you very much for trusting us at Channel 7 today and every day uh, for this severe weather. And I want to thank uh, meteorologists. I don't know what time we went on today, 3? Something Somewhere like around that. there. Uh, but also want to thank uh, meteorologist Barry Brandt for being here. It's been a very long day for him. His day starts at about 3.30 yeah, in, the, sure in the morning. And of course, meteorologist Michelle Rupp has been instrumental in handling a lot of our uh, behind the scenes work and also our social network working. But right now, our friends in southeastern Arkansas, we are not abandoning you. We just are seeing these storms weakening. They are not tornado producers. We're going to continue to be here, and if a tornado warning is issued, you'll definitely get it. But uh, uh, there are no tornado warnings in the state of Arkansas right now. We only stay on for programming and uh, block out programming for active and long-term severe storms and tornadoes. And uh, that has been occurring most of the day, but I'm glad to say that everything is winding down. Sure so is. at this time, we're going to take you back to regular programming, but uh, Todd and I will continue to be here, and I will see you tonight at 10 o'clock, or you'll get your uh, warnings for sure as they come in, if they come in. Thank you. See you. Nice person. Easy, honey. Hey, Haley. Oh, hey, Uncle Mitchell. Hey, is your mom home? No, she had to take Alex to the oncologist. Oh, my God, what's wrong? 
She need a new glasses? Did you mean optometrist? Whatever. So should I give her a message? Yes, yes. Could you ask her if she could possibly babysit Lily on Saturday night? We'd really, really appreciate it. Saturday night, we're having dinner with Pepper, Longinus, and Crispin. They're our gay friends. I think that was clear. I've been spending a lot of time with a lot of straight people lately, and darling, I need a night with my homies. You mean homos. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Maybe you should stay in a babysit. Yeah, our babysitter bailed, and we're kind of in a bind, so. I can do it. I can watch Lily. I'm really good. I'm babysitting Luke right now. Oh, yeah? You want you want to babysit Lily? Oh, well, that's very sweet, honey, but you're, you're a very popular girl. I'm sure you have better things to do, so. Oh, seriously, I'm totally free. Being grounded is so much worse than it was in the olden days. My friends text and Facebook all the fun stuff they're doing while I'm stuck at home playing Jenga with my dad. <laughs> Are you serious? You don't even have to pay me. I promise I'll take super good care of her. Okay, well, that would be great. Thank you. Yes, well, we'll see you on Saturday night. Bye, sweetie. Bye. Luke? Luke! What are you thinking? Haley is a very sweet and fashionable girl, but seems hardly a responsible caregiver. Well, you know what? We needed a sitter. She's family. I say we give her a shot. A shot. Oh, with our only child? Sure, why not? If something goes wrong, we'll just pop over to the Orient, grab another one. What? My name is Luke Dunphy. I live next door. What do you want? I want to get our ball from your yard. I don't want you messing around back there. Just go home. Are you going scuba diving? Hmm? Why do you have that tank? Being smart? You mean in school? Well, I do okay. My teacher says I get distracted. Why do you have that tube in your nose? For fun. Really? Can I dry? It's oxygen. We have that in our house, but we don't need tanks. Oh, for God's sake, just get your ball. Okay. <gasps> If you don't have an iPhone, you don't have the retina display, the highest resolution screen on any phone. So movies aren't this dramatic. Maps aren't this clear. Emails aren't this detailed. And memories aren't this memorable. Yep, if you don't have an iPhone, well, you don't have an iPhone. All graphic keys and swims starting at six bucks at Old Navy. What do you drive? Is it inspiring? Or is it built by a behemoth car maker? Or insightful craftsmen obsessing over the details, building better cars for a discerning few? Are you one of the few who care about what you drive and how it drives? We're with you because we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. We build Mazdas. What do you drive? For me, your favorite toy? You're going to want Mr. Fuzzy Man even more now that we've discovered Beneful Playful Life with extra protein so you're ready for anything. Beneful Playful Life. Another healthful, flavorful Beneful. Tonight, the season finale of Cougar Town is a road trip to Hawaii to rescue a runaway son. He sits on the beach all day and parties all night. What kind of life is that? An awesome one? The season finale of Cougar Town. All new tonight, 9.30, 8.30 Central on ABC. <laughs> Modern Family's Jesse Tyler Ferguson. All new Kimmel, late night tonight on ABC. Oh my God. I was watching the news and another flock of birds fell out of the sky. Dead. What is happening? Sweetie, you gotta stop watching the news. That's your big solution? Embrace ignorance? What are you two arguing about? Never mind, I don't wanna know. Be back in a couple hours. Whoa, 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 where are you going? To my friend Walt's house to watch High Noon. Ooh, I love westerns. The bloodier the better. That's my favorite type of movie. That and anything set against the backdrop of competitive cheerleading. Is Walt the one who's always skateboarding? No. Where do he put his oxygen tank? Okay, now I'm really confused. <laughs> you sound like Walt. He gets confused a lot. It's hilarious. Wait, are we talking about Mr. Klezak? Yeah. I went over to his house to get my ball, and we've been hanging out. 
You were in Mr. Klezak's house? Luke, that is not okay. Why not? He's really nice and funny. Listen to this joke. Okay, two crowds walk into a bar. Phil, this is not good. Honey, don't jump to conclusions. Let him finish the joke. And one of them has a limp. Uh -huh. You may not go back to that man's house. Why not? Because he's weird. And not very nice. Yeah. That's what she said about my friend Oliver. Oliver. Oliver, who almost burned down our garage. He likes to melt stuff. Like, you're so perfect. Luke, I'm sorry, but your mother and I just aren't comfortable with this. That's so unfair. You don't even know him because you're too afraid to talk to him. But Hi, everyone. I'm meteorologist Ned Permy in the Channel 7 Future Cast Center, along with meteorologist Todd Jacoby. And I told you we'd be back if we needed to. And we have a brand new tornado warning. And this is for extreme southeastern Arkansas. We're going to go ahead and track this storm. It's in effect for about 20 minutes as it moves toward the uh, Mississippi River. Looking at our five live Doppler radars, the storm uh, that we are looking at here producing rotation is about nine miles southwest of the White River National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, and uh, that is uh, in this area right here, and it's northeast of Dumas. So it's northeast uh, of Dumas and just to the northwest of the Rosedale area. This storm right here is tracking at about 50 miles an hour, so it's going to be crossing the, the river very, very soon. And it's tracking at about a 50 mile an hour uh, range. And so it's going to be moving towards Stimson, Snow Lake, uh, Ferguson, Crumford and Deerfield. Uh, there's Deerfield, there's Stimson, and right along uh, the uh, river there is Snow Lake. Uh, and uh, then beyond that, it's uh, toward Clarksdale, Mississippi. So again, this is a new tornado warning uh, in effect and remains in effect till 8 o'clock or about 20 more minutes. And this is going to be in effect uh, near the White River Wildlife uh, Refuge and areas like uh, Yankopin, if I'm pronouncing that right, and also Smith Lake, Owens, uh, Watson, Mozark, Sandy Bayou, and uh, a Swan Deer Lake are all in the path of that storm as it moves on toward Mississippi. So again, uh, rotating, uh, small rotation has been detected with that storm, possibly capable of producing a tornado. But overall, uh, the southeastern part of the state is showing signs of these thunderstorms not rotating, not being tornado producers. But we did want to come on and tell you again that extreme southeastern Arkansas County and central Deshaies County uh, until 8 o'clock, tornado warning remains in effect. Stay, to, uh, stay tuned to Channel 7 for further developments.